ました。
Welcome everyone to the Kia Tilt Proof Challenge. We're here to see if four gamers can stand up to the test. Well, this oh! Dios mío de mi vida! I think I lost. I'm so happy that I didn't eat before. Red Bull gives you wings. Done? Done. There we go. Break? Break. <laughs> Even the biggest champ needs a break. I'm tired. Me too. So, uh, what'd you think? On to the next one? Let's go. Come on.
formula behind TFW. When I picked yellow, I was like yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow. Uh, wonder does uh, anyway, can something have to be yellow? I don't know, blue, red, I don't know. I, I block, I push Ari out. This, 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 nice, Q. Nice. Ari, yes, please. Charlie. I'll get the card off my face! I'm nice. flash Ari, guys! Nice. Test. Okay. test. Don't test, Peter. Don't test yeah, us. Don't test, well, I test us, Peter! <laughs> wow. Oh, oh, I, dropped, I dropped the thing on the floor. So. Can I have Jayan Kos mute it for me? <laughs> oh my oh, god! Wait, 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 what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, they're special. What? Wow. Wait, who are you talking to right now? Wait. Are you on our side? Yeah. Today is the last day of spring regular season and with no team up for elimination just yet, playoff spots are up for grabs. Welcome back to the LEC live from the Riot Games Arena in Berlin, Germany. And you know what? I hope you guys didn't miss us too much yesterday because today we'll be making up for it with some banger games. As we said, no team is up for elimination just yet, which means today is going to be extra spicy. I'm Ginny, joined with GB and Aragon. Hi, Ginny. It's a good day to be an LEC fan. Yeah, it's really good, especially since we know how much is on the line today for all the teams. There's one thing we have here at the LEC. Uh, it's competition. It is nerve-wracking gameplay. And it, most importantly, it is unexpected upsets. Welcome to the best league in the world. And uh, what? what you, don't, you don't agree? Yeah, it's an interesting take. Yeah, I sure. mean, that's, that's what we're all about, right? I mean, we have some entertainment. We might have lost to NA, okay? last time in international stage. We haven't touched the finals of an international stage since you've had a hairline. But either way, we, so do <laughs> we do provide entertainment and great content. So let's have a look at some of the best scenarios of the regular spring split and rate them. One out of 10, what do you guys think? Starting off with, uh, thank you so much for thank the whiteboards. Really. Starting off with Fnatic, winning up against G2, that's peak competition right there. Mm. Interesting. I mean, it's the best we've probably seen from the 2v2 with Humanoid and Rasog again. We've seen it so many times where we often say how good they are and they're really carrying Fnatic, but all of Fnatic's Ooh, really nice. coming well together. But them two together, specifically against G2, was beautiful. Yeah, I, I gotta say, it's pretty impressive. Fnatic have looked pretty good, so considering that the, the level of play there, what do I rate it? It's quite an interesting one. I don't know, I'm not gonna try and influence your decisions here. All I wanna say is the last time that Fnatic actually won a uh, best of one series against G2 was in spring 2023. That was a whole year ago, man. That's crazy. So I don't wanna influence your decision too much, but what's the rating? Uh, GB is 
I, I can go first. Okay, this is my artistic ahead, ability. So I, it's a 10 for me. It's not so much because of Fnatic. It's more so I really enjoy when G2 starts losing. Okay. And it's not to do with them being G2. It has had to do with them being the number one team. Okay. So for me to finally see a team get contested, uh, less towards us being a one team region, but more towards the others actually catching up to them and learning from them, bettering the region. That's what I like seeing. That's the 10 in my I opinion. can see it at the very least. Not with the first play though, especially since uh, I think G2 kind of ran it down there. So I'm going to go with a, a Kek W out of 10. Okay. I think, no, uh, I, that's great. Absolutely. That's crazy, mate. <laughs> so I, do, I will say I think Caps flashing forward and almost getting lethal is a bit of a test of uh, limits. So this is my rating. Maybe it's like Kek L or Kek Kek L, probably Kek Kek out of 10. Kek Kek yeah, because yeah, yeah. it did kind of get caught. But either way, we also have nerve wracking gameplay. And uh, you can really say that from the emotions of the coaches. Swift for particularly taking the cake in this one, because honestly, I hope he's okay. I aged 10 years, He he's aged 20. GB, yeah, I don't want to go there, but. Damn, that's crazy. But honestly, I pretty much feel like for Swiffer here as well from the gameplay we've been watching in this. Yeah. I think Swiffer is uh, very much a great picture of how us fans feels like when we've been watching some of the SK games or maybe some of the other games too. So I do totally get it. Uh, what do I rate it? I was too busy talking. Yeah. Aragon, take over. You're yapping. I mean, yeah. I think... Oh, I'll show mine first then. I think honestly that just has to be a 10 out of 10. Be Not bad. Because it sort of established a meta with coach reacts. I think that reaction or Swiffer's reactions in general alongside pads with the flap, flap, flap kind of takes the cake. Do you want to do the flap, flap, flap? Do you want to give I mean, your impression? Like this? Yeah, yeah that's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I'll give you that. We're still waiting on GB with his artistic Sorry, I'm very ability. Slow. I, can you not multitask? I'm actually is that... horrible at that. Oh, Don't talk to me while I'm doing this right now because I'm not listening. Your brain just got Anyways, explored. five out of seven. I thought it was really good. I think that obviously mm. not all we want to see uh, has to come from the coaches when they're messing up. You want to see some happy coach camps out there too when the teams are playing good. Uh, unfortunately, it haven't always been the case. So, I mean, Swift is still in that regard pretty much made a meta of coach camp coming into this one because we've seen yeah. more and more coaches be more reactive whenever something <laughs> happens on the ref now. It's a claim to fame. That's all I'm going to say, but we also have unexpected upsets here at the LEC, particularly when a team who's the bottom of the table can beat G2, who's sitting at top. That was that was crazy. It was super impressive, right? Managing to be out in small, the compositions continuously finding huge team fight wins with these. Oh, I've got to do my reaction, don't I? Uh, but with these huge wombo combos with the Oriana and the Volley Bear, I thought they played phenomenally. It's so hard to close out games with a smolder if you're not too clean. So what are you saying? Are they inting here as well, G2? Like you said, Caps were in the beginning, or what do you, what do you feel like in terms of uh, G2 you taking could, over here? You could go the way of, you know, G2 are inting, but I think Rogue played well, so I'm going to go with a Pog out of 10. Oh, I, can't say Rogue. I like that. I mean, it's not a Kek L, it's a Pog. A Pog is a great emote to spam in chat every now and then. Yeah. I, we don't get it too often. I can already see them, to be honest, the Pogs in the chat right now. I, I don't know about that. I mean, I can see they are making some other comparisons, but it's there's no rating. Are you I okay? I know, it's, it, it's like priceless, but unrateable mm. in terms of how lovely it was seeing. And also, my mind lazy. completely blanketed at what I wanted to draw. So <laughs> you, you get a whiteboard, double whiteboard, on wow. priceless, priceless. Can't put a price on it, can't put a rating on it. Thank you so much. I always wanted the whiteboard. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Dude. Yeah, no worries. Not good. Uh, I'm also sure that a lot of teams want to make it to the playoffs. So let's have a look at the teams who are still fighting for a spot to be there. Because no team, as we said earlier today, is eliminated just yet. And we have five PO1s coming your way as usual. Looking at the standings, though, particularly, I really want to cast my eyes towards SK Gaming and below because these are the teams that are on the chopping block. Aragon, particularly Rogue. Yeah, I mean... Tough task ahead of them. I think they've got one of the hardest routes that they have to take with a bunch of different wins that need to come on the table. But they managed to pull it off uh, two days ago. So, interesting to see how they continue. If they can do it once, they might be able to do it again. We're going to be starting off with Heretics up against Giant X, but I want to start off looking at Broke because we were talking about them and how they have, at the bottom of that league table, the hardest spot to be in, the most difficult one. They win against G2, which against everybody's odds, but it does mean that they would actually need to not only get a win today, but there's a lot of faith that's involved. I mean, yeah, there's the win, but you can also just see it behind me, right? Yeah. With a win, either you need Team Eretics, MDK and KC to win, or you need Team Eretics, G2 and KC to win as well. And with a loss, you're straight out locked out. So there's a lot of things here that's not really in your own hands in terms of that destiny. So it's like getting a win, potentially even hoping for a tiebreaker. This is without a tiebreaker, but I'm pretty sure no matter what, Rogue is guaranteed a tiebreaker if they do win. So there's still some... Uh, it's brutal, games. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. You need to get a win or you're out. It's pretty much it. Yikes. That's a yeah. t 
tough spot to be in, but we have the matchup of the week, and that is going to be Mad Lions going up against Fnatic. Mad Lions, again, one of those teams that last time during winter, they managed to go to the finals of playoffs, and now they're sitting towards the bottom of that league table, and you're wondering, what exactly is not working out? Yeah, I think it's really surprising, isn't it? Seeing them down all the way there, especially since winter. With a win, they're locked in, but with a loss, their fate lies in other people's hands. Other teams have to pick up wins. You need BDS to win, or you need GX, Rogue, and KC to win, so... Really praying for that win as well. Yeah, Appreciate the squat see. so that yeah, we can actually see say, the graphic. I realized I'm kind of blocking the picture here, so you can see it up there, okay? So with a win, job, you're locked TV. in quite easy. Without a win, well, you get all these circumstances. But let's be real, for the, all the teams today, it's really just about wrapping that win. Yeah. Because if yeah. you do get it, well, you don't have to wait for all these scenarios to happen. Just win, forehead. Just win, five head, four head, whatever you want to say. I mean, a win is a win, and that's what a lot of these teams are looking to get today. But we have KC going up against BDS as well. Unfortunately, KC is a team that we didn't even get to see in play in winter and it would be heartbreaking to <laughs> once again not have that here in spring because even if they win Aragon there is still the faith in other teams hands yeah a real struggle honestly another trial you need to win and then you also need other conditions <laughs> are you raising your hand to make a point you yeah no I was just like look up it's up there okay full screen <laughs> thank you production but you're right it's tired in a situation like this yeah. because even with a win it you're not even secured you need exactly. these circumstances to happen too yeah, locked out is really, really brutal with a loss, I've got to say. Yeah, but it felt like when we're looking at KC particularly, we've seen them come to life. We've seen glimpses of what they're able to do. We've seen instances where they're actually playing together as a team. That's not always been the case. It's not always the case, and I think this team fight highlights it really well. Often, the players on different pages with engages. I think just before this clip started, Targamus made an engage with Rakan, Rakan, used all his spells, and then Bow engaged afterwards. So it's just a bit disjointed. And I feel like that's the story of the entire the team, the entire split long as well as last bit. It just feels like they're lacking a main voice. Yeah, and you know, it. <sighs> It really is disappointing for a team with a fan base this large to find themselves in a position such as this against where there's a very real chance where they won't be making it to playoffs. Even if you take into regard after Winter that the only change they wanted to make was getting Yamato out and then staying with the five players. But some of the issues that they had back in Winter is still there. And even though at the beginning of Spring it looked like they were ironing out these issues, going further into our weeks now, we're kind of seeing them again. And it's very likely that they won't be making it again. So really for Casey, you have to get a win. And even then, it might not be enough without, if other circumstances are not met. And when I think of Casey's gameplay in particular, I feel like it's hit or miss individual players that I see the most. Sometimes you'll see Seiken absolutely pop off on something of the Yari, but then the next day on Hui, it's just misposition City. The same with Targamas. Sometimes you'll do really well, find engages with Bo, but then you'll play his Rakan game and it just, will, it just won't be there. So individual gameplay as well as synergy has to be on point today. Yeah, and today is, uh, and not just that, it also, all the stars have to align for a team like KC. Not the only one, because a lot of other teams are dependent, as we've highlighted. But let's look at the first game that we have today, because it's going to be Giant X. And when we're looking at Giant X, we were counting them out, being completely honest here. Starting off, we're thinking, okay, there are a couple things that are going wrong, but now they are on the hunt for a spot in the playoffs. They have already won two games back to back this week. We weren't live yesterday, just a reminder. But today, it's that do or die. Yeah, I, I have to say, I think Giant X is really fascinating. The way they're reinventing themselves uh, consistently, pulling out champions like the Neela, managing to play uh, really good dives. But like this clip, it just highlights what their struggles were in the past, right? They would play these really hard compositions to play, uh, ones where Patrick would have to get a lead and then snowball it all the way to a Nexus explosion. But they would just get constantly um, lost on the map all the time. The fights they would pick at objectives felt like they weren't that decisive on whether or not they actually wanted to. I think you highlighted before generic cinema mode. But I oh, no, I said cameraman POV. Cameraman POV. That's but what it felt like when there are objectives. I even feel like you're being generous here because yeah. it, like you, you're putting it very well, but it also just feels like they just rocked up at an objective and hoping they were yeah. going to magically win it. It didn't feel like there was any planning going into it. It felt like no one was on the same page. They had uh, so many different TP plays where it just lost them things when they went for it. The, it just felt like you were watching a team, five players loaded into solo queue. They wanted to make it work. At first, I was even... I didn't even know if they were winning scrims from the gameplay I saw on the stage as well, but the GX that started coming into this week instead. Yeah. I mean, wow, that does not look like the same team. Yeah, and it's the way they're playing too. They're not only playing slower compositions, but they're still playing that fast style with uh, Callistas into Smolder. And it takes a lot of skill to be able to close out a game versus Smolder when you're on that, you know, that Drake win, uh, Soul win condition where before Smolder gets his stacks. And it was also this really nice flank, which I wanted to highlight here because it shows a level of cohesiveness we haven't seen in terms of the team fights. Ignar finding a huge flank in the bot side uh, in that pocket of vision there, managing to beat out uh, our second place, I believe, 
believe, last time they were playing Vitality. Exactly, and I also just think there's multiple members stepping up for GX now. It's not just the entire team, but I also think a guy like Jackie's on the Talia was absolutely phenomenal. I don't think he was missing a single knockback in this entire game, and there's multiple times where it was a priority target he was finding. I mean, he completely outclassed Vito in this, where I thought with the Syndra, he was going to have an issue from a 2v2 with a setup, but it was the other way around with Jackie's continuously um, having Vito's number in this one. Yeah, and consistently from Jackie's is something that we're going to need to see from the entire team today, particularly because getting a win here, Aragon, means that they're locked in. Yeah, locked in with a win and with a loss, it's out of their hands again. Another case where we need BDS to win to help a couple of teams out uh, in case they do lose. So it's a rough one, but with the momentum that they have, I'm sure they can do it. No, I'm good. That, no? Those are good points to me. I would uh, copy paste them and uh, sling. Oh, you like I absolutely agree. No, yeah. You guys don't want to like have a bring little bit. Bring back the whiteboard. <laughs> bring, okay, we're not bringing back the whiteboard because you didn't even write anything on it. But what I we're bringing back you. instead is going to be an interview because Oramne is experienced in making these miracle runs. So let's see what he has to say because we had the lovely trouble check in. Please take it away. Thank you very much, Jeannie. And thank you, Otto. Quenching uh, nice. your thirst right there. A uh, nice thank little you for sip me. of Red Bull. Really gives me wings. All right. Okay. I'm going to start you with that one. Since you got wings right now, talk to me a little bit about your upcoming game versus Team Heretics because you're going to need the wings. You guys are on a two win streak right now, but Team Heretics have also been doing pretty well recently. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, they're top of the table. Maybe they're mm -hmm. top three or top two even right now. I'm not They're uh, right at the top. They're, yeah. play they're playing for first, basically. Oh, okay. So it's like high stakes game. I guess Stream B won't uh, make a little donation for me, but. Yeah, very important game because right now, uh, right now the boys at the bottom were having a little party. Um, there's a lot of us over there, so I think if we lose, it's most likely tiebreakers. I don't think we can be out, but I think it's gonna be for sure tiebreaker uh, scenarios. So we we really want to dodge that because we're gonna have to wait here for like eight hours at the studio, so it's gonna be not fun. Um, but yeah, I think we're coming in confident. Uh, last two games have been quite good for us. Um, tripled our wins uh, this week. Um, so yeah, excited to get another showing on stage and hopefully, you know, it's a, it's a dub for us. Absolutely. You talked a little bit about Trimby making a donation over to you, so you guys don't have to wait around. That's all it is, right? How is it going into the Reef playing against Trimby or any other player that you've played with before that you have won the league with before? Um, I mean, a couple of days ago, it was bittersweet against uh, against Larsen and Comp. You know, I love them, I love the boys. Um, but at the same time, ever since I left, I kind of I've been kind of having their number. You know, so it's nothing new. It's business, right? Yeah, it's just it's, it's, it's like you know, nothing personal, kid. Um, and now Trimby, I guess he's the next one. Uh, I think last year he kicked me out of Worlds uh, with Fnatic. So. I mean, I can't kick him out of anything right now, you know, but uh, he can... You can I, deny the first. I can deny the first and also punch our ticket into into playoffs. So I guess uh, it's a little payback over there, yeah. All right, putting the glasses on. It's business time yet again. Yeah. Now, Otto, I want to focus a little bit on your career as a whole because it's been a struggle for the past few seasons, but you have been so open-minded about everything, about coming back. And we have sat together, us two, we've had loser interviews, winner interviews, all of it. And you've talked me through every single step of the way. How important is this particular game for your career? Because you said it, it could be playoffs, could also mean nothing. Yeah, um, you know, still looking to to kind of bounce back to, to the rogue days, you know, where we were just winning a lot. Um, obviously, it's been a little bit hard with, uh, with the new environment, but, you know, comparing to, to the previous year, we've been having improvements, you know, maybe our issues have been similar or my issues have been similar. But yeah, every game is very, very important when you're looking to return to form or to the, you know, to the glory days. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's do or die every game, you know, even at the beginning of the season when you're 0-0, it feels like, you know, you come in with something to prove, um, especially when you've been on a team that is, is struggling um, for like, you know, recent history <laughs> for the last year and this year. So, yeah, um, it's difficult, but it's also like, you know, very, very rewarding when you, when you clutch out some wins. So, yeah, for me, for my own personal growth, I would be really happy to, you know, smash it today. Hopefully you clutch out another win today because making playoffs potentially could get you to that MSI, the glory days that you were talking about. Yeah. Thank you for joining me so much, Otto. And Medi Vedi, over to you guys. Thank you very much, Trouble. We are Medi and Vedi joining you guys on the final day of the regular season here in spring. We do have a short delay before we get on into the game, just so that everyone is aware. 
we will likely waffle for a few minutes. I'm afraid so. We could pancake as well. Eggs Benedict is on the menu. Maybe some French toast, yeah. perhaps. You'll have to wait and see. But yes, there is a slight delay on stage, so you're going to be looking at our pretty faces for a little while. But we are getting ready for Heretics versus Giant X. I've actually been told we can say what the delay was. Right, well, let us share the news. The order queue. Members of Team Heretics arrived approximately 60 minutes late to the studio today, resulting in a delay to studio operations that additionally impacted their opponents. League officials have penalized Team Heretics with one missed ban. This ban will be the last ban within the second ban phase. Teams are still preparing for the game ahead, and we'll get into picks and bans, obviously, as soon as they're ready. I was actually scrolling on Instagram earlier, and I don't know if you uh, saw, Vetti, what Yankos posted. You didn't? I did not. Well, I think we're going to bring it up here. Uh, so, 45 yeah. minutes before LEC stuck in traffic. Hopefully, they can find another jungler for today. We play at 5 p.m., and it's 6.40. And yeah. they're, uh, yeah, so photo evidence. Is that three kilometers away or 30? I think that was 13 kilometers That's away. That's 13 kilometers. Yeah. Well, you're unfortunately for the average, memes, if you're traveling Yankos on average at zero arrive. kilometers per hour. That's a long time to get to Infinite the time, you might say. Yeah. So you know, there are um, different types of infinity. There are bigger dude, infinities. Why and would you go infinities. here first? There's so many other things well, that we we've talked like about. Five minutes yes, I too have game. seen both the Instagram reel, the TikTok, and the YouTube video that all talk about the hotel with an infinite number of rooms and the infinite number of buses with an infinite number of passengers. I've seen it. Oh, I just studied it in university. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. The pre recorded draft has been completed, by the way. So we will be doing picks and bans now. And then we'll spend the time that we have to delay before we get into the game to talk about the picks and bans. So ah, so they don't want us to talk about infinity. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, understandable. <laughs> so we're going to have the picks and bans, then we'll have a delay after picks and bans. But let's get those picks and bans up as soon as possible. So they give us something to talk about. Important stakes for this game, obviously, are Giant X. If they win, they are locked into our playoffs. Four wins seems to be the cutoff for a guaranteed playoff spot. If Seems Giant X... Be, it is. It is. Yeah. Okay, sure. Betty, I didn't do all of the maths beforehand, okay? I was busy contemplating infinity. All right, true. Uh, Fair enough. Yes, if if uh, Giant X do lose and Heretics win, Giant X can still go through without tiebreakers if BDS win in game five, but obviously that eventuality is a full four hours away or so. So Heretics on the blue side have got rid of Ash, Callista, and they rumble. Giant X have removed Oriana, Nico, and Talia. I have to imagine that Varus becomes the insta-lock here for Giant X, Patrick's most played. Obviously still a very strong champion on the current patch. The question is, what do they want to pair alongside it? Are they interested in something flexible like the Rail, which we've seen so many times before, being moved in both jungle and support? Um, or perhaps they want to lock in a powerful mid laner. We look at all of these three mids taken away by Giant X, trying to pinch the pool of Zvyro. I wonder, Orianna, Nico, and Talia, those are the champions that Zvyro has played. Perhaps their game plan here is actually just pick the Karma and deny him any of his champions, force him onto something that he hasn't played on stage just yet. I mean, it's very possible from Giant X. They are looking at that Rel first pick. The Varus was the other one you mentioned. Wouldn't be surprised by that at all. As you say, Patrick's most played. There it is, locked in. So where do Heretics go? Do they try and get the Karma for themselves? They need an AD carry, otherwise they'll get into the Maybe second they. band phase. Maybe they just respond with the Zeri. We look at Flack, yeah. it's most played. Varus and uh, Zeri sit at the top. Smolder is open. The question is, do they value it? Uh, into the virus. I do not value Smolder at all. I know that. I would sell him for pennies. I will say I there's been an bit. interesting debate recently, which is irrelevant right now because it's not been locked in, but uh, pros seem to be valuing the Smolder less and less the more they play with and against it as the Zeri is locked in for Flackard. The question is, will they lock in their mid laner now? Do they want to grab themselves the Karma against Fire? Only four champions played so far this split. Nico, Oriana, Karma and Talia. With three of those banned away, perhaps he wants to lock a mid laner in now. I mean, if you have something like the Annie, you have such good pick potential. Annie alongside Vi, CC set up for days, good burst damage in the early game as well. We talk a lot about the mid jungle 2v2. I like Heretic's side of it right now, especially if Giant X do go for that Karma because Blind? Rel Karma just doesn't have that much damage comparatively. Blind Annie, I think, is always a bit dangerous, though, just because I think that traditionally it's used as a counter pick into Ari. Um, really good at shutting down that high mobility. Naturally, she does have a huge amount of burst. Great setup for junglers as well, just because her flash tibbers is such a fast initiation tool. But in laning phase, her wave clear isn't the strongest until you've got more points in your W. So when playing into a Karma, which is exactly what Jackie's is going to run, sometimes you lose a lot of control over that mid wave 
And uh, shielding, really good at mitigating the burst, assuming you can react to it in time. Yep, 100% agree with you. We expect to see Jackie's getting the push in the mid game. How Giant X utilize that, though, is the big question. Often we see them pathing down towards the bottom side. They will get rid of the Gragas as their first ban. Remember, Heretics have lost one of these two bans. It will be the second one because of their delays in Berlin traffic. Uh, then we'll see what their first ban is. Still haven't seen top laners or likely supports locked in. Obviously, that rail can be flexed down towards the bottom lane, but I wonder if we'll see something else there for Giant X. I'm wondering what they choose to ban away. Do you just target Odoamne's top port? It looks like that they're interested in removing that twisted fate. I mean, the Karma can always flex support as well. We don't see it as much. Can or flex top. top. True. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot of flexibility on Giant X's composition right now. I am just making assumptions that this Karma is mid, just because of where I mean, we've that's seen where it we so see it often. The most, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Rel jungle, though. I mean, Varus Rel bot. We've seen Varus Rel. Well, jungle Rel is something I would is what I meant. Is we've seen a lot. Rel Karma as a mid jungle duo, not the strongest. Yeah. Typically, uh, especially into more, Annie vibe. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a lot more farm oriented. But it looks like Giant X are focused on that top side of the map. They want to try and pinch Wonder's pool a little bit. The question is, what direction is he going to go for? We look at his pool so far. This, but he's had a pretty uh, big, diverse. That's the word. Diverse champion pool so far. And spraying a lot of Aatrox, but Wukong, Cassante, Gragas, TF, the Nar. I think he's a little cautious about blind picking Nar because he knows that there are some powerful picks that can cause some problems. You've always got to remember the potential. Uh, well, I was going to say of the Rumble, but of course that's already banned away from the side of Heretics. So what do they want to blind pick? And as a reminder, this ban has been lost by Heretics due to them arriving late at the studio today. They could so. have put one of those um, NFC tags on it. So, they, you know, the find your phone ones, they could find it <laughs> as they were searching around. <laughs> no, but yeah, they arrived late, so they weren't able to get that ban off. Giant X might show their hand here. Obviously, you want that last pick either counter for mid or top. But you already know the Annie's going mid, so I think we can assume the Karma's mid. Leave R5 for a top lane counter, show either a jungler or a support here. And it looks like... Ignar back on the Rakan. has played it twice so far this split. Very strong on it, was always very good at engaged champions, but does lose you a little bit of lane pressure. The Rakan and Varus kind of have to wait for a bit to have that full burst What do you combo. hate more as a Rakan enthusiast yourself? Nautilus or Renata playing into that match? I hate Renata. I despise Renata. I think Nautilus, uh, the thing with Nautilus is he's so good at so many things. It's true. He has great point and click engage late game. You have good engage in the early game, but you also have great peel. Because if people ever get on top of you, you just auto attack them and they're stuck still. I just like the follow-up that he has with yeah. Vi, right? The, you have a lot of dive on the side of Heretics. Mm -hmm. Annie ideally wants to flash, ult in. Yeah. The Vi wants to ult in. Nautilus CC can either set up that target for his team, or it can just be great follow-up yeah. once that initial CC has been landed. And Minata doesn't work well unless the enemy team's really engaging into you, right? That's and true. there's not that much engaged. A you have the Rail and the Rakan, and they, the have, side, they can yeah. flank, right? So it's a lot easier for Giant Dex to navigate it. Oh. Wonder. Following in BB's footsteps, going to bring out the Rek'Sai top here. We are seeing a lot of this. Grasp of the Undying into tank Rek'Sai. Does a lot of work and is very safe when we expect Giant X to focus down towards the bottom side. Truth it makes sense. I wasn't expecting Rek'Sai to just be so blind pickable, mm -hmm. but with the sheer amount of sustain that the champion gets, the fact that it is just such an effective front line, and them reintroducing that multi-man knockup, I think has just... Um, reinvigorated the strength of this champion. The response from Odo is going to be his Jace. Uh, he's a player that has a very long history behind him, uh, alongside Wonder, of course. Uh, and Jace used to be one of his go-to top lane champions. I remember back to 2016 Worlds when H2K did make that impressive run all the way to the semifinals. It was Odo Amne's Jace that was so terrifying to play against up towards the top side of the map. So excited to see him back on the champion. A lot of poke on the side of Giant X. Patient play is going to be required from them. They're going to leverage the fact that Lethality Varus, the uh, Jace EQ combo, is going to be doing a lot of damage from range. And we kind of look at Heretic's composition. They do have good engage, but Annie, not the longest of range. Zeri, of course, does have decent range, but Heretic's very reliant on closing that gap against Giant X. So a lot of these fights are going to come down to can Heretic find that engage, or will Giant X be able to successfully set up that poke in advance to be able to chip down the members of Heretics before the fight starts? And can they disengage if the engage does come out? from Heretics, right? Can they use the Karma and the Rail to just distract Heretics for long enough to step back, use that chain of corruption and make sure you are a little bit safer just to get that poke in? Uh, Odo Amne's last win on Jace in the LEC was in Spring Playoffs 2022, Vedius. So a full two years ago. He did only play it twice since then, uh, once against G2 on Rogue and once on XL against G2 as well.
So he doesn't win against G2, but Fnatic. he did win against Fnatic the last time that he... But uh, was Wonder on that G2 roster? Uh, the 2022 20, spring? I mean, want to say... I want to say yes. yes. Uh, oh, uh, it was BB. It BB was, was BB. already in, in 2022. Yeah, yeah. Well, we should listen to you, Vedi. We are into the game. Thankfully able to navigate through some of the delays that happened with uh, Heretics arriving I mean, late. Obviously out of their control. To but our production yeah, team and everyone working today. I was expecting a few more delays, but we're able to jump straight into game after the draft. So you're looking at the runes and masteries on your screens right now. Nothing too surprising. There's that grass Brexite that you were talking about, the tank Brexite. It's crazy to me that um, the way I learned about this was someone just linked me a YouTube video. Was it Low Dobby? It, it was, was low dobby. Yeah. yeah. That's how everyone learns about everything. It's <laughs> how like BB learns about it. It's, it's how every European and uh, American player learns what they should be one tricking. Because all he does is he takes the best LCK uh, um, Korean challenger accounts that are playing ran random stuff and puts out a YouTube video about it. And everyone's like, oh my God, but the, Rex I top with grass? The, the, we funniest, can do this? the funniest thing about it was the video starts with this was a Diamond 4 top lane main mm -hmm. that went to Masters 400 LP yep. in like a week. And, then, and so and it's not even like this, like, this is uh, Keen on his Smurf account. Nope. You know, it's just, <laughs> this is just some guy. He was just winning Rex a lot of games. <laughs> and apparently this Jeremy has a really good win rate. And this is what he does. And all the pros are like, hmm. I will uh, give that yes, a go. Yes. <laughs> and here we are. So good job, random person who found this interesting build. Uh, you may have made other top laners' lives miserable because I've heard <laughs> there's people calling this, this is like Cassante when he was broken. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the healing and the safety, right? You put Truthfully, a couple of tunnels it back. is that healing that yeah. I think that makes the champion so strong. When you see it in the fights, it's crazy. And, and uh, we, we had Dag to talking about it the first day it arrived, but if you are new to the champion, basically what happens is you walk up, you, you unburrow, you hit them once or twice, you see that little meter that's building up underneath the bar, and then you go underground, and look! How much health did he get back there? I, I, I need to go have a closer look at that, but like, it's just so much passive sustain. Look, 28, 36, 36. it's just, just like 50 HP back. Yep. And so when you combine that with Grasp, and you have the door and shield as well. It just gives you so much sustain in the lane that even in range matchups where you typically expect you'd be having a rough time, uh, you can just uh, you can you can tank and, and survive a lot. I imagine it's going to get nerfed at some point. Yeah, I think so. I haven't looked at 14.6 uh, patch notes completely, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's some uh, Rek'Sai love taps in there at least. Oda Wamne though is out to a slight CS lead. The way building up towards Wonder though means that he should be able to catch it back. And we see Odo using that range advantage to be able to chip away at Rek'Sai's health. Now we didn't talk about jungle paths, but obviously very important. Both doing a full clear from top side towards bot. You'll notice that Yankos now making his way onto the red as Peach doing the exact same thing on his blue. Both clear speeds very similar, but we look at the bot lane. Flacken and Trimby already have the push. Looking to go for a bit of a cheat to recall hit, but expecting that they wouldn't be able to contest this two versus two. Ignat and Patrick dropped these early wards down to see if there was any contest for the enemy jungle. And it looks like for the time being that there will not be. So a very passive start to the game. Both sides just prioritizing farming, scaling up, and uh, not looking for any early action. I mean, Yanko is already going for a quick base. He realizes that Peach is on the bot side of the map. He knows that his bot lane has also gone back. So he says, you know what? I can't contest this bot crab. So I'm going to reset and actually go for the top crab, which works out for me because that's what my top camps are respawning anyway. Interesting little bit of tech there from Ignar on the Rakan. Walks and catches the minion's aggro, then paths down into the bush, meaning that the blue minions will actually ta focus target often one of the red minions that meant Flackett loses one CS. And it doesn't seem like a huge amount, but if you can deny one CS from the enemy, that's 20 gold that you're denying from the enemy, and can help you out sometimes in lanes like this. It's min-maxing, man. It's min-maxing. Uh, just uh, makes it a little bit easier. You can also do it if you're first in lane at the level one. Just deny them a CS if your enemy laners are going to leash. Helps you out just a little bit. Wonder going in with the Furious Bite, doing a bit of damage to Odawamne, who Kind of needs some cover from his jungler here to step up. He does have that ward in the pixel bush, the but wave should be pushing be towards here. him though. So yeah, he can play well. a little defensively. The thing he has to be cautious of is the dive, because this wave is definitely going to be stacking. Wonder's likely to have a level advantage. And you look at the amount of mana that Oduamne has right now. It's not in the best of spots. So we'll keep track of Yankos doing his wolves. Odo does have double biscuits though, so can True. regenerate some of Gets that. Gets level five as well, which is crucial. I think he has to be cautious right now of that dive. Yeah, so the ward is going to go over the wall because he is a little bit worried about it. Peach did, of course, just go back to base. But he's going to catch the wave just before it hits the tower as well. So, and a pretty comfortable spot for the time being. Oh, nice knockout from Wonder as Odo 
tried to bring the hammer down and take out those minions. Still manages to get most of them as they do crash into his tower. Yankos going for an early grub where Peach went for the reset. So Yankos a little bit behind in terms of gold spent, but is going to be able to get these grubs early on. I mean, so far, a very restrained and passive back and forth early game. Nothing too crazy to write home about. Peach level four, going to be able to steal the Raptors here, knowing that he does have Pryo in the mid lane. Jackie's into this Annie. We did talk about it. There's a bit of a range difference in the mid matchup, and Annie doesn't have the greatest wave clear, so she kind of gets bullied by Karma in the laning phase. And uh, unless the Karma oversteps, there's not really much you can do about it. But at the cost of his Raptors, he will be able to secure those early grubs. Does potentially unlock the Dragon. We've got to be a little bit cautious about trying to force that because while Yankos has only just cleared them, you know that this bot side is resetting and making their way back out onto the map. There is a possibility of a contest from Heretics, but as you say, with Jackie's always being able to gain mid prior whenever he wants it, the tippers can be used to try and negate that. Jackie's goes back in, focus resolve with the mantra applied. We'll heal him up a little bit as Trimby misses the flash cue. No flash burnt from Jackie's. Ignar's going to keep Trimby away from the river as Peach crashes down onto the dragon. And this should be Drake secured, although Yankos is in the vicinity. They have a ward on it as well. Don't really want to try and smite fight Arel. He goes in. Peach doesn't get it, but Ignar does somehow. Yankos burnt his smite. Peach did not. Ignar took the Drake. And uh, in the end, Giants get what they wanted out of it. But uh, it was very close for me. I mean, Patrick realized that he had to catch this wave, so he moves back towards the lane, which means that the damage being thrown onto the dragon is relatively low. This provides enough time for Yankos to be able to respond, and uh, this might was just a little too early. Miscalculated yeah. the damage. I think it's also one of those, you're expecting Peach to smite. Correct. So you smite at like 800, right? I mean, I've, I've heard the combo is you just do Q smite yeah. on the rail, and it's actually pretty effective uh, at, at securing those objectives. So you're definitely right. He, he expected Peach to go for this burst. Yeah. And I don't know if Peach saw him and then held, yeah. or, or, or if, if he uh, just didn't have the Shadowing Strike because he'd used it already, clearing it out. We, uh, we didn't see... Or he got lucky. Sometimes that happens too. It does, and for Giant X, they'll be happy that they got lucky. Remember, if they win this, they are locked into our top eight, into our playoffs. Hook's going to land from Trimby, puts the Ignite down on Patrick. Lightning Crash as well from Flacker. Ignar flashes, Battle Dances away. Level six for Flacker, though, means that he's very willing to flash forward further as Patrick falls low. Ignar can block these, but he decides against it. And now Ignar's hooked under the tower. There's two for Flackhead. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Wonder was looking for the dive with Yankos. There's the Shadowing Strike, and Wonder will fall. Odo takes the kill. Okay, so a lot of action happening across the map. A straight up 2v2 kill for Flackhead and Trimby in the bot lane. I mean, that just goes to show the strength of Nautilus as a champion, right? Just does so much in the early laning phase. Yankos, you need to calm yeah, down, sir. So Yankos doesn't have flash here. A couple of autos will be enough as Peach takes it. Okay, so... <sighs> Questionable play. Yeah, that was poor. I mean, hopefully we get a replay so I can understand the decision behind that, because Yankos, I don't think he needed to make that. Maybe he was trying to hold the wave to give time for Wonder to come back, but we'll look back at the play in a second. This is the top lane play that just happened. Wonder goes in with the burrow. Flash knockup, easy setup. Nice Good. flash from Odoamne to avoid. They don't quite have the damage. Odoamne knocks Wonder back underneath the tower. I mean, Odoamne plays that about as well as he can. Sets up for Peach to arrive. Flash stun. And then we double speed here. Yeah, I think he really wave, is just right? trying to hold the wave. He sees that the Q is used by Peach. No, that was. <laughs> I guess he thinks that Odo doesn't have the mana. But you just transform an auto attack, right? But yeah, I, I, maybe he believes the TP is coming in a bit quicker. Maybe yeah. he thinks Wonder's going to arrive there. Inherently, <laughs> that was a mistake from Yankos. Cost him his life. Ends up being two for two in kills. While Heretic's bot side gain an advantage, the top side goes favorably for Giant X. And the problem for the Giant X bot side was they weren't level six. Flacker had hit six, probably off Trimby roaming around. So Flacker had been able to get a little bit more solo XP. And he could just chase them down with a lightning crash as soon as they start dancing away. I think it's very easy for Azeri in that situation to chase you down. It's why it's so imperative for Giant X to land poke before they look for fights as this game goes on, because if Zeri is healthy and the engage lands, she's just going to dance her way all the way through you uh, with the cleanse as well to get rid of some of that initial CC. Uh-oh, Yankos lacks crucial information here. He's he skeptical. He believes that Peach is in his jungle, and here he's spotted. Blacker dances the wall. Oh. Storm. Yeah, that was... Uh... I mean, I, I love the idea there from Peach because the goal is he uses his ultimate to intercept Flackett's first part of the wall yeah. jump, 
and then he can drag him back over before he can get over. Uh, I think he was just a little too late, or perhaps Rail's just too slow yeah. to actually catch the, the Zeri off guards, but uh, I've definitely seen it before with, like, canes when you try to go yeah, through a wall, and if you back. just hit them early enough, it'll just interrupt and they'll just immediately yeah. come back. Same with Smolder if he's trying to fly exactly. through a wall or something. So that's a bit of an interesting interaction afterwards with the dredge line hooking on to Peach, but he was able to get himself out. Yankos up on the top side of the map now. Remember, they took three grubs earlier. The exchange for Giant X was they were able to take the Drake. That's up in a minute. I wonder if Giant X will want to contest any of these grubs, because six is very strong, especially if you start to have pressure in side lanes. Sorry, you said Kuz 6 is very strong, yeah. and in my head I said Kha'Zix is very strong, and I'm like, not sure why he's relevant in this game, Medic. <laughs> very good solo coup jungler right now. Uh, but yeah, it looks like it is going to be 6. Grubs over to Heretics and to Yankos. The reset from the Giant X bot lane with Ignar now opening through mid. He'll path down towards the bottom side to get some vision around this dragon, most likely. Now, the good news for Heretics is that they should still be able to contest this Dragon spawning yeah. in about 20 seconds. Wonder going to secure himself his second play to the game. He doesn't have TP, Odo Omne will. So I believe that Odo Omne deliberately held on to his TP to be available for this Dragon fight. And what he can do is he can create a nice situation where he can just keep the pressure going in top lane. Wonder might be forced back here so that he can actually move down to contest this next objective. Whereas Odo can create this dual point of pressure where if Wanda doesn't respond... Oh, Patrick. Crash. Patrick puts the chain of corruption. There's the cleanse away. And Patrick has to use the heal to escape. Almost doomed there as Trimby and Flacker did close in. The depth charge still available for Trimby as well. Patrick's flash up in about 10 seconds time. Problem for Giant X was as they came back out towards this dragon, their, their reset timers were a little bit mismatched. Ignar came out first, then Peach reset. So even though Ignar was in position to get Vision deeper into the Heretic's jungle, he didn't have the backup to do so. He could be warded off by just Trimby. Now with Ignar and Peach together, they have a little bit more security if they want to step into the jungle. Trimpy coming across. No lightning crash on Flak and no flash on him either. The dredge line rip tide combination. There's the quickness though, as Trimby is locked up. Does still have the flash. Depth charge on the back line as Jackie's gets knocked up, but Trimby falls first. Flak dances away across the wall. The chase comes in from Odo Amne as he TP in behind. And there goes the kill. Jackie's taking out Flakard. And Giant X proactive in calling for that TP. Great utilization of the TP advantage that Odo has in that top lane. There was little that this bot lane from Heretics could do. Trimby trying to get vision control of the river, I think without his team, leaves him open for being caught out of position. And then Flacker just was not expecting this flank to come through. Wonder being given an opportunity to push in top lane, but look at the lane assignments here from Giant X. They've had Jackie's reset earlier to TP to top to catch that wave. Wonder now gets to go bot, secure himself a plate or two. And now all of a sudden, Giant X find themselves with a gold lead. Jackie is slightly just to push out this wave and then let Odo Omne go up back towards the top side. We'll see Trimby getting caught out here again. And after Trimby uses the dredge line, like, you can burn Flash in this situation, but you're pretty much dead anyway. And look at that TP. It, it feels like that out of nowhere, because you look on the replay and it comes in so quickly that Flackett is focused on trying to help his support out, looking for a potential fight, that he doesn't see Odo Omne coming in from the flank. Very well played by him. And overall, by Giant X, nice play, secures them the second dragon. Coaching staff naturally should be very happy about that. And then, crucially, the response afterwards. The lane assignments following was very, very good. Overall, great stuff, but Heretics, just like that, have closed the gold cap. They've secured a bunch of plates on the map. Flacken, with his reset, moved into bot immediately. Six grubs helps you get all of these plates as well. And it does. 10 seconds before those plates fall off. Flacken with a 1.6k gold lead. Remember, he did get that double kill in the 2v2. Now he backs off. Patrick able to hold mid lane by himself. It's power of the lethality virus. Very easy for you to clear out a wave with the uh, piercing arrow and the hail of arrows afterwards. I will say just Giant X have a lot of wave clear with that comp. And I think one of the big things about that bot river fight as well was Jackie's constantly has mid push. You can see that he's about a 1k gold up over Zviro. Part of that is thanks to the kill and assist that he's been able to find so far in this game. But also just the sheer amount of wave clear that this karma does have. Now we approach the Herald. Yankos has gotten it pretty low, but Giant X is here to contest. Analyst just said they didn't like the fact that Giant X were just being cameramen. Well, here, the cameramen want a piece of the action. It's like the office all over again as the hook does go down onto Peach. There's a chain of corruption as well. Peach stunned up. Feromancy tries to dash away. Chased down by Wonder. There's a CC from Ignar, but Peach will be forfeit. They steal away the Rift Herald, but they do lose their jungler for it. The extended fight. Heretics is always going to have that advantage. 
Odo Omne wasn't quite there yet, but we've talked so much about the poke the Giant Nexus comp has. The second Heretics find that engage is when Heretics is at their scariest with this composition. This area is not going to stop hitting you in the fight, and Varus just doesn't quite have the tools when you're going for Lethality to be able to match that. So Heretics find themselves a kill. They do lose the Herald. Giant X likely to use this to unlock that mid lane tower. And we know how valuable that can be in terms of getting control of the enemy jungle and then also translating that pressure into these side lane out of towers. Have another look at it. You talked about the Q Smite combination from Peach. Hits the eye, Q Smite. There was a tiny window where he, yeah. of course, could have got that. But then the chase comes in from Heretics. Nice hook connects from Trimby. The knock up as well. You'll see the quickness tries to go on to Wonder, throws the ultimate out to be able to dodge away from that one. Good knock up from Ignar, but Giant X is just forced to retreat. You look at the mini map, you can see that Odo Omne is nowhere near. And uh, overall, a pretty even trade kill for Harold. I think the Giant X is still fine with that. The gold largely remains even. And again, ultimately, I think that Heretics, if they can find the fight, I do favor their comp just because they do have so much more sustained damage. It's easier for them to play out these 5v5s. But if they can't close that gap and Giant X can leverage their range, then I think that there's a very real way for them to be able to win out on these team fights. They have so much poke that's very difficult and oppressive to deal with. And as long as it's not going onto the Rek'Sai, that poke should stick. First tower of the game going over to Giant X. They have about a thousand gold lead right now. The advantage mostly in the mid lane and a bit in the jungle as well, but Peach building tank. He didn't go Knight's Vow Rush, went Locket instead, which I do actually quite like into an Annie Zeri because it just gives your whole team that shielding and Annie obviously coming in with the Tibbers can do quite a bit of burst damage, but Flacket at two items in that bot lane, whereas Patrick's only sitting on the Yumu's Ghost Blade right now. He is very deep in the hole and if Flacket is left untouched in a fight, it'll be very hard for Giant X to actually win out that battle. And what an important battle is to win for them, Fetty. They win this game, they are into our playoffs. They lose this game, they are reliant on other teams winning. Specifically, if BDS win their last game, Giant X would automatically go to playoffs. I think Giant X are guaranteed a tiebreaker no matter what, because they're at three wins and we have two teams at two. So even if uh, Carmine Core and Rogue win later in the day, they would be tied. And Heretics are uh, fighting for first, yep. ultimately. They're, there's a clump of teams sitting at the top of the table, Fnatic, Heretics, and G2. And the biggest advantage is that you get to be on the opposite side of the bracket to the other strong teams. Yep. So if Heretics were to finish first and G2 second, they likely wouldn't meet until much later on. Yeah, but imagine if Heretics finished first and G2 finished third. Then... They wouldn't be as happy. <laughs> Well, no, because two and three would then both still be on oh, the yeah, side, Oh, yeah, two and three, right? it's one and four, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, you're right. So uh, being <laughs> first would be nice. Yeah, being <laughs> first would be very nice. Because uh, then, uh, yeah, but ultimately, a lot of that is still pending the results of the day. Mm -hmm. So before we get to that, let's look at this dragon fight. Yankos off on the flank has been spotted by that red ward. A lot of darkness, though. Giant X, this is where their poke is crucial. Mm -hmm. Wonder being the front line is important for Heretics because of the tankiness that he has. The Heretics have found a way in. They've actually started off the dragon themselves. Patrick gets the push in mid, and here we go. Yanko's trying to sneak his way all the way around here. Wonder will catch that mid wave, making sure that Giant X don't get free priority. Yanko's just waiting. Giant X aware of it. Odo on they marking that flank. They really want more poke damage before they go for this. Look at Wonder as well. He's going to get a, a pincer movement here as Yankos and Wonder, like the claws of a crab, will begin to descend. Very powerful force. As Zyru now sets forward, Yankos gets onto the back line. There's the sun, there's the CC, and Jackie's is the leader. Magnusorm coming out as well as Yankos falls. But this is where Flacker can really open up. He's only got 300 health left, though, as Odo Omne snipes out Trimby. Ignar, Patrick, and Odo Omne now on the, the dragon with Peach. Wonder tries to do what he can. The Void Rush, not enough to escape the clutches of Odo. And even though Heretics found a pretty good engage, Giant X survived it. I mean, what a great fight from Giant X. They responded perfectly. It looked bad because Jackie's pretty much got eviscerated, but I think Jackie's got out everything that he needed to. And crucially, Flacker took a lot of damage on the back line. Nice interrupt there from Odo Wame, but look, you see the Mantra Q on the backside. Zeri gets way too close. The Peach ultimate connects, the Swiftness connects. And then look at this damage from Patrick. Q hits onto both Trimby and Flacker. He's left completely untouched on the back line. And so sure, you take out the Karma, but two damage threats are still alive. Odo and Patrick are still alive and well. And I think, honestly, that was just a bit of a misplay from Flack. And I think yeah. he overcommitted that. He wanted to make this big wombo combo happen. Dived in, gets the multi-man ultimate. Just needed to wait. Just needed to wait for the re-engage from, uh, from Giant X and then pop the lightning crash or even dance to the side and pop it, just getting it on a couple of people. Obviously, you want that big multi-man ultimate. But when you are the carry, when you are fed like that, Trust Zvairu, Jack, uh, Jankos, and Wonder to kill the first person. 
and then you follow up afterwards after you have that initial opening frag. Peach here fighting Yankos away from the Scuttle Crab. Now the gold lead extends. It's a, you know 1.4, 1.5k for Giant X. They get that third dragon of the game. It is a chem soul. I'm sure they would have been wanting something slightly more impactful, but still very powerful in these fights if they do go longer. Peach and Igna trying to get away from this. Yankos unable to hit the, the Vault Breaker, and Odo Omne is using this time to push in the bot lane and take Giant X's second tower of the match. Giant X playing a patient game. This weekend has looked great for this team. I was going to comment coming into this series, the series, this game, I should say, Heretics have the opportunity to get their first 3-0 weekend mm -hmm. of the year. Giant X, the same. <laughs> uh, I thought it was going to be way more likely for Heretics, but Giant X have shown a lot of growth. They've got a solid draft. They have plenty of options. And right now, they're just taking their time. They know. I mean, they know that as long as they play the patient game, that uh, they have a very good chance of taking down Heretics, denying them those top spots, and uh, locking themselves a spot in the top eight. I very much agree. I just uh, looking at it in terms of draft, and we talked about this a little bit, and they talked about it a bit on the analyst desk as well. Giant X have fallen foul of trying too hard to make compositions that aren't simple in draft sometimes. A lot of weight on Patrick's shoulders here. The weight is spread a little bit more evenly. Odo Omne getting ahead, Jackie's being in a good position means that Patrick isn't the sole damage source. But that comp is not that simple to play. Right? You're, you're looking for this disengage from what is essentially a press R comp from Heretics. If I looked at it with nameplates off, I would very much prefer to be playing on Heretics' side of the rift, but Giant X showing up on the final day of the regular well, season. What I will say is that when it comes to dive burst comps, they may seem simple, right? Because, you know, flash R, good. Everyone presses R. Yeah, but at the pro level, there's a certain element of, like, how you execute the flank, right? Sure. And we saw in that last fight, Odo Omne just sat there to watch Yankos, right? Yep. And he actually was the one that took that initial cue, and then even though the Vice still altered on to um, Jackie's, it wasn't that bad, right? Yeah. And that's just because there's a great level of awareness about you know exactly what a dive comp wants to do. And so you can make it as hard as possible for them as they try and get closer and closer and you chip away at them with your poke and you, you kind of control the vision to make their approach harder. And ideally, Giant X never actually want to start the dragon because then it becomes easier because there's this yeah. other thing hitting you and you can sometimes funnel yourself into this awkward position. And so that's why Giant X didn't actually want to start it. They were just kind of like sat in that fog of war, took their time, and they were very patient about it. And as long as they take their time, I think that it's not as easy as it looks. But if Heretics do find that right engage, then the comp will look very easy, right? And I think <laughs> I, w I agree with you in terms of everything you just said. It was all correct. But usually, when a team that has a press R comp gets ahead in the game, oh yeah, it becomes very hard for the team with the, the good disengage to, That's true. to play against it. And Giant X have averaged minus 1,852 gold at the 15-minute mark. So that was where my doubt came in. That's fair. But this you game, know? they've done a good job. Yeah. Can you actually just check for me, Betty? I know you have a spec open. Were they ahead at 15 minutes in this game? Well, they were even, from what I recall. Yeah, I just want to... Because they have 100% win rate when they're ahead at 15 minutes. So the game may have already at been 15, finished. At 15, it was 100 gold difference. Oh, OK. So they were 100 gold behind, though. They were 100 gold behind. Well, we can't use that stat. <laughs> Betty. We don't have uh, the Nostradamus of stats to, to prove to us that Giant X will win, but with it 17 seconds on the Drake, they're now setting up around it. Peach trying to collapse in. Yank is going to catch him out for the moment, but Peach pretty tanky. Damage already onto Spyro, though, as Trimby steps forward. There's the dredge line. Wonder going in with the bow. Flacker going in as well. Ignar dives onto the back line with a quickness, and Giant X are just looking for the disengage, but look at the poke. Trimby's already a third HP. Flacker trying to do everything he can just to get those autos down, but Jack is, Jackie's kills off Trimby, and now Wonder is running for the hills. Giant X continue to collapse. They got one kill. That's all they needed to secure themselves the soul. Will Yankos look for the steal, or will he accept that this dragon is gone? Another demonstration of great patience and control from Giant X. They played around their vision very well. They played more of a front-to-back style. Their tanks weathered the most of the engage that came out from Heretix. Yankos didn't even use his ultimate in that fight. And uh, Giant X just kept retreating. They kept having their opposition walk into them. They leveraged their poke, and they did a really good job. We look back at this. It's Peach that gets initiated on first. He's forced to disengage. Ignar now acts as the front line. Heretic see an opportunity as a hook connects onto Jackie's once again. He flashes away to safety, but now look at this back line. Very safe. They have all this space to work with. Wonder trying to find an engage, but it's onto Peach again. And all this poke keeps coming over from the other side of the wall. Now it's Viro who's in danger. 
Pitch coming across the wall, so is Ignar. The chase continues. Zyro, no flash. Burns it in the previous engagement, and Zyro is down. Each takes it. The Baron a possibility now for Giant Tech. It's already scary, the though. Even though the Annie is dead, starting this Baron is always a scary thing to do because we talked about it. These dive compositions, the ones that just want to force us engage, you starting a Baron is great for them. It just makes that initiation that much easier. So Giant X controlling the vision for now, and they're going to start it as a two-man. It's not the quickest. It's Lethality Varus and a Rel. But look at the positioning of Ignar. He's coming in from the flank, sitting in this fog of war. He will be spotted out there, but he's just created more darkness. Yeah, but remember, he was, he's spotted by Wonder as well with the, the tremor sense, That's right? True. So they always know where Ignar is until Wonder unbows. They look for Odo Omne first. Wonder comes out, Trimby as well. The Void Rush in by Wonder, trying to get onto that back line, but Ignar's still very, very safe. And now Peach tanks up Wonder for a while. Flacker trying to get away from this. Ignar dives in, and Flackhead is buried in the dirt. Wonder follows him to an early grave. A quick shower for them as they head down the tunnel. Giant X, though, perfection in these team fights. Oh, yeah. I mean, they are playing these very, very well. It's so easy to get caught into the chaos of these fights, get drawn into going into a brawl, but you can see the community. Oh, this virus is going to get caught again. Has no flash, has the Tibbers. Focus Resolve doesn't quite land at the end of it. Odo comes across for a bit of an accelerated shock blast. And Giant X now looking to accelerate this game. 5,000 gold in the lead. We look back at this fight, and the goal, the game plan here is to turn. They try to initiate onto Odo on there, a good target, but they don't quite have the damage to kill him. He turns, he disengages from Yankos, and then look at the spacing here. He then moves back towards his team, and it's almost like that they they have a formation, you know? Patrick, Odo, they work behind Peach and Ignar, and every time they're out of position, they move back into that position. They play it well. They shut down the crucial target that's in front of them. And Giant X come out with a massive one team fight. That's a Baron secured. That's a 5k gold lead. And they're just stomping Heretics in this game. Yeah, Chemsol as well. You can see Heretics caught all unawares in these last few fights. Yankos will be able to get out here, but only because Giant X deem it so. They allow him to base. They want to push in these two waves mid and bot their targets. Yankos might look for the mother of all flanks. And I've seen Sven do this on an Alistair. Didn't work out too well for him. <laughs> but Yankos is waiting in that bush to see perhaps if Giant X overstep, Ignar gets a zombie ward by clearing out that bit of vision, and Yankos now steps forward. It's a nice flank. He will be spotted. He's not going to go for it, though. Is it a nice flank if it doesn't come to anything, Betty? I mean, it's not a flank then, is it? It's just True. a... It's just standing in a bush. It's just... <laughs> correct. It's hide in bush. <laughs> True. I mean, Yankos, I actually think he was um, awarded one of the most popular people on his team the other week. Yeah. He was outstanding in his field. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that joke. <laughs> now, Tao gonna drop. Wonder getting chipped away. How Ooh, tanky are you, Wonder? Hits. Wonder's gonna get rooted up with a focus resolve as well. Not tanky enough, it seems, as Patrick goes on a rampage. Trimby tries to dive in, but all of the diving he's doing is underneath the surface. Taken out by Giant X. Two quick kills for them. Can a minion here? They can tank that tower for a little while at least. The tower should fall. Survival down to half HP from an accelerated shot blast. No minion waves in top and bot for them, though, means that it will only be the one wave push, the one lane push at least, for Giant X. Very well played. I mean, what else is there to say? I am pleasantly surprised by the performance we're seeing from Giant X. I mean, if they can maintain this level coming into the best of threes, it's definitely looking a lot more optimistic than their regular season did. To end on a 4-5 and five score, definitely not a bad spot. They talked about how they needed more time for growth going from the previous split into this one. And taking a win off of Heretics is extremely valuable. They're looking poised to do so. And locking their place in the playoffs, remember, with this win. Oh, yeah. It's, uh... Destiny was in their control, and they got the 3-0 weekend. Yeah. So credit to them. Definitely defied expectations and I mean, have been they, able to find they, some big They wins. will have got the 3-0. Three, the three yes. Right. They haven't won yet. It's, it's difficult because at times as a caster, you're like, hey, guys, this game is over. But you don't want to say that because there might be some Heretics fans in the audience who are like, hey, they could still win. And they can still win. It would just take a series of unfortunate events. Oh, yes. Equivalent of a Lemony Snicket novel. Yeah, 12 books, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> For it to, to turn, its, uh, turn its way around. I mean, if anyone's going to do it, it would be Flacken. Yep. He would be the player. Uh, I think that, like, it, we come back to draft a little bit, blind picking Annie. Mm -hmm. Like, 
we kind of look at the idea and it seems good, but in practice... You're asking Annie, are you okay? It's, you know? it's really hard to burst everyone on this comp. Um, yeah, she got no prior in the, in the early laning phase. You're very reliant on your flash in this composition. I think it's good into Ari and champions that ultimately want to close that gap against you. But Karma, who's just, I poke, I poke, I poke. Yeah. Annie's range just becomes very sad. And Giant X denying Heretic's entrance into the jungle. Heretics have no vision on this side of the map, apart from that provided to them by their minions. Oh, Trimby. Can oh. see a little bit of Trimby. Whoa, okay, he goes in. The quickness landing on Survivor as well. Charm onto Yankos will force him away. There's another. Zodo secures the kill. The teddy bear left without an Annie to hug to sleep at night. Survivor has gone Stark. for the long <laughs> sleep. <laughs> Annie's story is really dark. Remember when that they released is. that cinematic? Giant X, they're looking to secure their third win of the week. They're looking to lock in playoffs as they see the Nexus in their eyes. A Cinderella story for them to come back and secure their own spot in the playoffs. Wonder and Flackhead try to do anything, but the challenge is denied by Giant X. It's impossible. Wonder goes back in, lands the knocker, but he's stunned. Void Rush trying to get out to the back of it. Cease and desist the one to Odo Omne means that they can begin to open up, but they just don't have any damage. One does a tank, Yankos has a sundered sky for all that's helping as he goes down. Sent to join his friends in the sky, it seems, as Giant X in convincing fashion will lock their spot in spring playoffs. Cool, calm, collected faces on the side of Giant X. They came in with a plan. They pinched Spyro's pool. Three mid lane bans. And they wanted to put the pressure on him. I think in the laning phase, they did a great job. They limited his impact in the game. And overall, they played those fights to perfection. Nothing but credit should be given to Giant X for this weekend. I hope they can maintain this form coming into playoffs. As you said, it was a well-versed phalanx from Giant X. You can vote for one of them in your key player of the game at LEC on X. Oduomne, Peach, or Ignar are your options. Fun, Some fun stats for you. 6-0-11 for Oduomne. Okay. Uh, 100% KP for Peach, and then Ignite 2214. So if score lines matter to you, Peach would be your man to vote for. Well, there we are, we're gonna go to a quick break. Patrick will be joining us for an interview after that. We'll see you then. Red Bull gives you wings.
We lost the battle. We lost the battle. Yeah, we did. Bro, I, mean, that, yeah. what the f I told you, bro. We lost the f man for what? Guys, I don't allow this. Can I talk to the head referee? Yeah, but then we might lose oh. second one. <laughs> <laughs> he's very willing to flash forward further as Patrick falls low. Ignar can block these, but he decides against it. And now Ignar's hooked under the tower. There's two for Blackhead. I can shield you again. I'm shielding you. Oh shit. We win, we win. Next side, no flash. Yeah, if you kill Vi, that's Nash, by the way. There is still a soul. There is still a soul. Back up. No, 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 Welcome back to the LEC. Patrick, thank you for joining me on the interview. I'm just going to echo what you said because people didn't hear it. You're like, freak. That's the highlight they're showing? Anything on that? Yeah, I mean, this game we, or at least I got kind of AD dipped, but it's really good that my top side played so well, so we just win, so I'm really happy. All right, before we dive straight into the game, I just want your first thoughts. That was a do or die. You've been in so many of these situations, Patrick. How do you handle it, and then how do you feel once you succeed? I think it's just today our prep was really good. I think we were really happy with the draft and uh, yeah, we just kind of felt confident, you know, playing this kind of style. Uh, I think we had a lot of practice on it, so it was, it was good. I'm very happy you're mentioning the draft, Patrick, because I want to bring it up a little bit. You can see it over there on the screen. We saw three mid lane bans from your guys' side. You were literally targeting Zvera right there. Was that the tactic from the very beginning? Uh, yeah, I guess I think we kind of looked at their team and we were like, yeah, this guy is pretty dangerous. He's playing real well. So I think we just targeted him and we hope to make him play like a champ that he's not comfortable on. Absolutely. And if I look on the side of Team Heretics, they literally press an R button and someone from your side disappears. When you go into the game and the draft is completed, what was the plan for you guys? Because it must be so difficult for you as a Varus in Mobile Carry to play into the likes of a Vi and an Annie. I mean, I think this comp, they can like throw their buttons on one target, right? But then like two more carries will be there and still like kill them. So I think our plan was just like poke a bit, run back. If they engage, we still win, so. All right, so your thoughts in general, because I saw the Vi first picked right there, B1, and you're like, I don't care. It's going to pick Varus anyway. Mobile AD carry, who cares? What are your thoughts on the current AD carry meta? And why is Varus like such a pretty much blind pickable AD carry all across the world pretty much? I think the, hmm, I just think Varus is so flexible, you know, you can never go wrong with picking him. And I think that's why so many teams just pick him. And I, like for the meta, I think all is good. Just uh, delete Smolder soon and like it's going to be really good, I think. <laughs> now, Patrick, of course, congratulations A 3-0 weekend. You made it into the playoffs. Are there any areas of improvement that you guys are still working on? Because it has looked like a pretty good weekend, but there were a few flops over in the early game. And you said, thank God for my top side, because they bailed us out. I guess one thing to work on is uh, bot lane laning phase. And then maybe we have to stress out a bit less in game, because I mean, we're not that much used to winning, I feel like. So even when we're in a really good position, we are still kind of nervous. So I think we need like just more stage confidence. Well, talking about stage confidence, Otto was telling me in the interview earlier that he really hopes he gets revenge, revenge onto Trimby for knocking him out of Worlds last time. So he got it, and he also got Kia player of the game. So congratulations to him. That was a magnificent Jace performance in the top lane. Now, of course, moving forward into the best of scenarios, how do you see this going on for the meta that's coming up? You know, you talked about the virus and the smolder, but do you see any significant change on that matter for your bot side? Well, new patch is, I mean, I saw they buff tanks, right? Mm -hmm. And they buff crit AD carries, so I imagine... Jinx time? Maybe, yeah. I mean, I imagine we're just going to be seeing a lot of front to back. Maybe things like uh, Kalista and Varus will go a bit down because of the crit buffs, right? So it's, it might just be boring, to be honest. Uh, boring for you, boring in general. I think just like the games where there's two tanks and two hyper carries, they just last really long, you know, no one can kill anyone, like... I think this meta, except for Smolder, is a little bit better. All right, perfect. Then it will be better meta for you too. Uh, Patrick, thank you so much for joining me. Congratulations on to make playoffs. We're going to throw it over to Medivedi for our next game. And we're back for the next game. Uh, Rogue versus SK. If Rogue win, they guarantee themselves a tiebreaker. If SK win, they lock playoffs. So. And if Rogue lose, they're out. Yes. So they don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. If SK lose, they're not guaranteed out. They can still make it through. Correct. So, long the line for mm -hmm. this game. 
Uh, Rogue did successfully take down G2, which was a surprise to some, not a surprise look, look, to G2 fans. Rogue can beat two teams in the LEC, <laughs> Carmine Core and G2. Yeah. It's very strange. They're, they're two and two versus G2, like two wins out of two games. They're two wins out of two games against Carmine Core, and then they're zero and 16, I think, against <laughs> everyone else in the league. So we'll see if they're winning spree <laughs> continues today <laughs> as they are on a one win streak we're into picks and bans rogue on the blue side rel vi and varus band away whereas sk gaming have got rid of the volibear the oriana and the senna Callista first picked immediately for comp. Should come as no surprise. Callista, Varus, obviously both high priority, and with Varus taken away, Callista then naturally becomes a higher priority. The question is, will Smolder be locked in for Exekick, or will he instead go for something like the Zeri, which has also played a bunch this split? Renata, potentially the priority. A bit of a surprise. Does make sense to be denied away from Kalista. The question is, what other AD carries can you pair that up with? Oh, Traditionally, the most oh, common one that we've seen in recent pro play is Renata, Kalista, and yep. pros seem hesitant to pick Renata with other things. Outside of maybe an Ash AD carry that we do see every now and then, which I do think can be a good pick into Kalista. You know what else is quite nice? Draven. Also Let's true. Draven, uh, Renata Draven, Draven, very strong, and Exekick did used to play a lot of Draven when he was on Great LDLC, genetic. I want to say. So uh, smart. I mean, I was actually quite smart. Yeah. I'm proud of myself <laughs> for that one. That's a good one. Uh, but yeah, X-Kick hasn't played it this split, but was known for it when he was in the LFL. I feel like all of our AD carries were known for Every Draven. Every AD at some carry point. is known for Draven. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's the AD carry it's the play, one that used to grind to Challenger, exactly. and then once you're at Challenger, then you play okay, other I'll things. Play something else. <laughs> Sweet. It's okay. either that or Ezreal. Those are the two champs that you can uh, be true. really good at. Uh, now, yeah. will we see... Well, Rel is obviously taken off the board. Vi is taken off the board. Volibear taken off the board means things like Xin Zhao. Oh, Blitzcrank often used as an answer into these low mobility champions. Does make a lot of sense. Can often pair up very nicely with the Callista. A lot of pick potential. First game for Zoelis this split. We'll see how he does on it as we now move into potentially mid lane. Talia, of course, still up and available. Ari alongside her. Ari has been shifting a little bit in terms of priority ever since more answers have been coming through. Yeah, I'm debating if you want to go mid or jungle, and they do say mid. Karma, Karma depresses me. Uh, it's, <laughs> this is a champ that I in think... Game, game. Yeah, she's just very wave glare heavy. Obviously, she's very versatile. She doesn't have the craziest amount of damage, but her poke damage is obviously nothing to snuff at. Um, and she provides a huge amount of utility and is all around just a very solid mid lane pick that just pretty much always guarantees you mid lane push. SK deciding they want to pick jungle instead does mean now that they get to ban out junglers and Rogue gets to ban out mid laners, but the mid lane pool is slightly harder to pinch, I think. Talia, Ari, probably up there in terms of unlikely bans. Jarvan taken away by SK. I think I would consider a Nico. Yeah, Nico makes uh, sense as well. Nico, because you think what enables the Xin Zhao best. Mm -hmm. Nico is a really good champion. Ari is very early game, if you go for it. Uh, they may even consider her Hui. Oh, Hui. Hui. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to deliver it like that. Uh, but yeah, Talia, Nico would be my bands if I'm on Rogue, because I think that they complement things like Xin Zhao the best and offer you a little bit more scaling. Xin Zhao, your hair looks lovely today. Yes, it, exactly. Um, SK banning out pretty good answers into the Xin Zhao. Yeah. Jax being taken away from uh, Markoon, and then also Jarvan, just a really solid engaged champion. Mm -hmm. Now you're looking at things like maybe Viego for Markoon. Uh, maybe he's a little bit cautious because of how squishy this champion is. Maybe you want something a little tankier, like a Sejuani, but then your mid jungle isn't the strongest, but it does give you fairly solid frontline. Surprised to see the Narban actually come through from Rogue. Does suggest that they're thinking about something like a Cassante top or something relatively safe, maybe even a um, Aatrox yeah. for Finn. He did talk about how he performs better when he feels like he's on a carry. So perhaps that's what they're thinking about. Ooh, the way is locked in, buddy. Good call on that. Rogue now looking jungle top. Uh, you do want something relatively safe in the top lane. You could, of course, flex the Karma there. We expect to see it in the mid lane, just looking for that mid lane push. But there's always that possibility, depending on what SK pick on five for their Could top lane. Could be a Renekton angle as well. Yeah. For Rogue. The egg of Renekton, I don't mind too much. Um, I think Gragas also. They're flexing around a lot right yeah. now. So they're actually going to go Gragas top, I believe. I'd be surprised if they put Gragas jungle and then. I mean, they could have picked this because of the flexibility it provides. You can still play Gragas mid. And perhaps they're saying, well, if SK give us a really good 
Karma top angle. We'll just put the Karma into the I top. I just can't angle. see Larson playing Crowder Gas mid. I'm not saying that yeah, he can't true. play it. I just, uh, I know the players have their tendencies and definitely doesn't fit into Larson's wheelhouse, would be my expectation. And Cassante gonna round out the draft for Irrelevant. We know that he's a very good Cassante player. We saw it in playoffs last year when they had that very epic bout against Fnatic mm. in a best of three. A very enticing back and forth where Irrelevant completely popped off. I would say Irrelevant struggled a little more this split. Yeah. Definitely some uncharacteristic mistakes from him where he's been caught in side lanes, being caught out of position. Yeah, agree. Um, he definitely hasn't had the same performance that he had in winter, but uh, today he needs to. SK looking to try and lock in their position in playoffs. A win here would guarantee it. Four wins is all you need. Rogue fighting for survival. You say that if they win, they guarantee a tiebreaker, yep. but their destiny not really in their control at this point. No, but I mean, if they're guaranteed a tiebreaker, they just have to win the tiebreaker. So it is still kind of in their control. They're not destined to lock in in their control, but they can at least make sure they have at least one more game to play. We'll see if Rogue are able to win this. Of course, they did beat G2 on Saturday. It's the last time we played, uh, but they have been struggling to beat anyone else in the league. SK. Off to a strong start in winter, have struggled in spring to really find that same form. Has felt like a lot of the players not quite on the same page, but I really think we know what page of the book we're opening here, Betty. The journal says on page 27, go to bot lane. <laughs> and I think that's what's going to happen for both these teams. Very likely. Draven, Renata, Callista, Blitzcrank. It's going to be an exciting one. Bloodshed in the bot lane should be the name of the game. Scaling mid lane mages and some high damage junglers. Both compositions very similar, different degrees of utility, slight variations in how they want to execute their draft. But all in all, as you rightly said, it's going to come down to the bot lane. Exa kick versus comp. Who can be the carry that their team needs today? Both of them have had times when they have been the carry for their teams. You, know, you look back at comp over the years, for a while actually was seen as one of the best, if not the best, AD carry I in Europe. Had a, a really good summer, I want to say 2022. It was, it? it was exceptional. It was 2022, wasn't it? Uh, Exakick, when he joined the league, him and DOS were tearing up bot lane. They were absolutely destroying last year for SK. Has really struggled to have the same impact as Zoli steps forward here. Flash hook just to burn. Ooh. Didn't even need to flash that hook deceptively long. It's the tip. Press this skin. You. Yeah, I mean, iRobot did get some of its animations changed since it was... Uh, I was convinced this skin was competitively bad. It was, and then they got some of its animation changes changed. Oh. Uh, same with like Steel Tempest Lux, I think it was. Where things were just a little bit hard to see. Fair enough. But yeah, all the Blitzcrank skins seem to have a longer Q hitbox than I. When, when I'm playing them, they have a really short Q hitbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when the opponents are playing them, it's like four inches longer than I thought it no, would be. No, I totally get that, yeah. Yeah, it's really frustrating. Um, same thing where like, I watch a pro play a champ and they do all this damage and then I play that champ and I don't do that damage. Yeah. And it just, I feel like that they're playing it's a different the game. It's the servers. It, you're yeah. right, that makes sense. Ten percent increased damage. It's like uh, Elden Ring Reforged, right? Yeah. Yeah, everything does ten percent more damage. Yeah, they have yeah. different spells. It's the same thing as like loser's queue, right? It's mm -hmm. all just mm -hmm. big conspiracy. Uh, 100%. Yeah, makes sense. But yeah, X kick burning his flash really makes it hard for him and Dos to be the aggressors in this bot lane. You say that, they are pushing <laughs> <laughs> without a care in the world. However, yeah. comp wasn't auto attacking. So I think Rogo accepting the push. And I mean, then, you kind of have to because it's Renata, right? Yeah. Like Blitzcrank only has his hook, and once he uses it, he's not a champion mm. at level one. <laughs> so basically, all you have is the threat of a hook. Yeah. And uh, until you get to level two, which really doesn't get that much better. Yeah, you have your <laughs> knockup as well. True. But uh, yeah, so you're kind of just forced to play defensively. Top lane Finn, getting some nice trades, but it's really just two tanks slapping away at each other. You expect Finn to have a bit of prior just because he's got slightly stronger wave play than the Cassante. Slightly better sustain as well with the Drunken Rage. Oh, yeah. Uh, passive giving you a bit of extra... And then mid healing. is just wave clear. It mm. really is just what you're seeing on your screen right now. I think the common pushing on uh, Huey is QE. Yeah, Molten Fisher. Yeah, 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 the Molten Fisher, yeah. And then you can also use... Um, the <laughs> This is not crushing more. I call it the sucky one, this one. Yeah, the e, e, <laughs> the, the crushing e, e, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you can help gather at the minions, and that just helps you with the wave clip. Yeah, I find um, Molten Fisher will often get just the the casters a little bit 
above dying, so then you're crushing more of the casters and yeah. you know, just kills them You off. can also put the W skill on, which I forgot the now. W skill. W-E, W-E, yeah, I, the, <laughs> I know the one you mean. It's, um, oh, Markoon ganking bot lane. Oh, here we go. Nope. Nope. It's uh, Stirring Lights, because he has those three Will-O-The-Wisps around him. Yeah, so it's... W-E, gives so you, you mana do, back. You do W-E, you do E-E, Q-E. You do E-E first, not... Well, you could. You I mean, it's all the same. I'd QE first, and then I'd EE, I'll be honest. All right. Well, the point is, that's how you clear waves on play, for those that cared. <laughs> I mean, people do care, buddy. Oh, hang on. Mid gank. Niski. Rooted with the focus resolve. There's the Spectral more follow-up stun. Niski flashes oh, away, oh. but the flash chase for Markoon will be Tower? enough. He survives nice. as well. Niski dies, burning his summoner. Well played by Markoon. You know, I was critical of Rogue this whole season. Yes, for just justifiably doing so. Yes. Markoon has come alive. In the G2 game, in this game, he is ganking like a madman. And he finds first blood for Rogue, finds the play in mid, forces the flash out from Niski. And now Niski is sitting duck for a future gank. Does, of course, still have the fear, has the crushing more, but if he's using that to wave clear, you no longer have your torment abilities, Larson. Ooh. I mean, the minions were kind of body blocking. <laughs> I love the fact that he throws a thumbs up at that one. <laughs> yep, I missed. My bad. I missed on purpose, Niski. It was about sending a message. I didn't need to, I just wanted to show you that I could. The, the, the message I sent was, <laughs> my hands aren't that good. <laughs> like, obviously, Larson, very skilled at the game, but uh, I'm not sure <laughs> that's the sort of message you Can want to be sending miss, to your lane okay? opponent. Happens to everyone, Medic. It's true. If anything, it just proves that Larson's not a bot. Mm -hmm. We're all human deep down. We all make mistakes. So you hit that one. Yeah. Does that prove Niski's not a bot because he didn't dodge it properly? or? Hi. It's just the whole, am I a robot thing, you know, click the button. Am I a robot? <laughs> They're just doing captures in the middle of the game. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Niski getting the push here in the mid lane has gone back and got himself that tier. We'll stack up the Seraph. So at least looking for the hook and lands it on Dos. Dos has a flash, but I don't really think he... <laughs> Wants to use it, doesn't expend it. Comp gets his first kill of the game. That hitbox. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> I want to get a replay of that if we can get it, because I was like DOS that I didn't think that was going to hit. But uh, I think also it looks deceptively long because Zoe got moved back yeah. as well. Uh, but okay, fair enough. Two kills now for Rogue. They found it in bot lane, they find it in mid. A really good spot in this early game. Isma going to steal away the... Uh, Krugs? The Krugs, that's the word I was looking for. In the bot lane, but there is no bot lane to gank. SK, not really finding much off the back of this. A small gold lead starting to mount in favor of comp. About a thousand gold ahead across the board, SK. Exekick does have 126 stacks on the Draven. Wait, See it on his uh, kill range, range, isn't he? Oh, nice. A little E there to bounce back irrelevant. As the grubs were secured, Isma now going to make his way towards this dragon, lock this one up for his team. They have their eyes on top lane. Rogue pinging towards the Cassante. Larson has moved out of mid. I will say, I am a little surprised. Very rarely do we see Larson roam. Yep. But he gets back in time to get the minions, and that's the important thing. Yeah, was it up, Markoon looking for a red buff steal here, knowing that Isma was on the dragon can wait for this red buff to spawn. Obviously, Isma can come out, but Larson's going to get the push in mid because this needs reset. Finn has the push in top because he TP back into the lane. So, Markoon knows that he has the support of his teammates. If anything does begin, there's the red buff stolen away. Isma level six has been able to farm up a little bit more than Markoon, but still, Markoon will be very happy with that red buff steal. And for anyone wondering about the Blitzcrank hook, and why sometimes it can seem like it's missing, but it actually hits in the end. I want to introduce you to a wonderful concept called lolly popping, which is where on a lot of the skill shots in the game, what will happen, uh, just demonstrate it here, is the skill shot will come in like this, Vedius, and you yeah. think it's only going to hit the point, but actually what it does is it hits an AoE around the point. When did lolly you get pops. these graphics enabled. Uh, you know, I asked that, but <laughs> he was like, yeah, of course we can, just for your lollipopping point, Betty. Uh, medic. <laughs> I may have worn a mask of your face because I'm pretending to be an analyst. But yeah, a lot of the uh, hook skill shots in the game will have these little lollipops at the end, so it checks in an AOE around where the end of the projectile is to see if it That was the most obnoxious arrow I've ever seen. What, which one? This one? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, look at the, these are the minions that you want to kill, Betty, and then if you kill them, they blow up. 
That's, that's how well he should use his abilities. <laughs> You're making the fans really happy Woo! with that one. Good job. <laughs> this is a very serious game, Medic. <laughs> Isma looking for the seal here. Markoon backs away. Isma can get the smite, but Markoon gets it instead. And now Isma is going to be collapsed on Zoe Lee's coming across. Isma flashes. Zoe Lee's lands it. It's a great example, Benny, of Lonnie popping onto Isma as he's caught across the wall. The bailout comes down onto him and he comes back to life. Dust kills off Zoe Lee's and Isma's able to survive. And I'm a little bit angry at myself for using the meme graphics during this fight. Because SK get two. Exa gets the execution. And SK get back into the game. Very nice response there from SK. Isman looked like he was in some dire straits, but his team is able to offer support. Exekick picks up a kill, he cashes in. And hopefully in the replay, we can see how much gold he was actually able to get off that. It was about 150 sacks. We're gonna say 300 gold off. So Isma looks like he's getting collapse on here. Nice flash, really great hook from Zoli. The ultimate buys huge. time, and then as you rightly said, the bailout gives him enough time for the execute to come in. Oh, actually, I thought it was the ultimate from Execute. Yeah, Execute kill. kills comp afterwards. So. Yeah, it was this flash over the wall. See how much gold he ends up picking up. 300 plus 533. So 833 gold in total. He's going to be happy with that one. Yeah, it's 2.5 times the amount of stacks you have extra gold. So Claps coming in mm. from the coaching staff. Swiffer, not overjoyed as of yet. He's been in this position before. Now, Ro, can you find a way to turn this game around? Grub's going to be started off. The Draven being as strong as he is is scary. It's You look at the gold difference, pretty much exactly the amount of gold that he earned in that last fight. Grab himself the Sheen as well. Irrelevant hovering around. Don't think he's going to be able to contest these. Dragon spawns in a minute and a half. They've got enough time to go and contest the Drake if they want. Comp and Zoe Lee's hovering around the mid lane. Niski has his flash back up. Exekick doesn't have his. With the wave kind of in a neutral state down towards bot, I think Comp and Zoe Lee's were just a little bit worried that Isma could be down here. They didn't have any vision, so they can't really step forward in this lane, they'll wait for it to push in. They even go the safe way back because someone could be lurking in the tribush to catch them out. Doss now six has that hostile takeover. Wave is going to push and Compens really should be able to farm it relatively safety, safely underneath their turret. Isma has his eyes on the bot side of the map right now. Makes the kick and Doss, we're able to get that push in. Irrelevant will have TP for this next fight and Finn does not have his, so. But I think Finn is aware he's gonna look to Interrupt that base. Yep, he's done that. <laughs> so relevant space going to be denied a little bit as Isma steals away the Raptors. Both side of the map, though. Oh, oh Exa. Oh. No flash. He will have the bailout here, but will it be enough? Hostile takeover comes in and Markun dodges over it. Exa just a little greedy in his positioning and Zoalis punishes him for it. Now the collapse is going to start from SK. Isma behind the wall here as Markun on the Draven. Good heartbreaker across. Isma goes in. Crescent Guard, there's the TP in by Larson. And Isma will fall as well. SK just donate themselves into the fight. But the spiraling despair is enough to catch one. Zoalis falls to it. A nice response from Rogue. Once you see the Isma collapse, SK looks very scary in that position, but they've lost a major damage dealer. So they just turned their attention. The TP timing from Larson was clutch because it forced the backline to immediately retreat, leaving Isma isolated to allow for Rogue to secure that kill. If it weren't for Niski's burst, it would have been another two kills in favor of Rogue, uncontested, but they end up getting one back. The gold remains largely dead even. The dragon pings are coming through though. SK want to secure that for themselves. Can the hook connect? No, Ooh, not quite. That one was close. It was. And the issue for SK is that Markoon is now getting bigger on this Viego. 2 0 1. The dragon will be given up. Didn't really have the time to set up vision around here once again. But especially when you have a comp that can pick out and isolate an individual member, it's so much easier for a Viego to get resets. And that's where he really thrives. After he gets his first reset, oh, yeah. steals away a bunch of spells, then gets another reset with a Heartbreaker. He, he basically just has three times as many spells as anyone else in a fight. He can just cycle through them. So. It will be difficult for SK unless they can kill off Markoon early or unless they can avoid being displaced and caught out by Rogue. Isma coming across towards his red buff. Markoon stole the last one. He's got his own and Isma repays the favor by smiting that away. Hits him with the Mad Lions logo. Plate can be secured for Finn in top lane. No objectives to play for right now. Rift held in a minute's time. Items should be coming through for a bunch of people. You look at the scoreboard beneath and you'll notice that uh, Everyone is very close to their first item if they haven't already completed it. And ultimately, we find ourselves in a very even game. Exekick's flash is going to be up for the next fight. 
but we mentioned earlier, both compositions very similar in terms of how they play, a very aggressive bot side of the map. Um, a little bit more utility overall from uh, the Renata, but a lot more pick potential thanks to the Blitzcrank. You contrast the mid laners, obviously get strong poke mages, a bit more versatility in terms of what Huey can provide just because of the sheer number of skills that he has, uh, in contrast to the Karma who just provides that valuable sheeting, shielding rather, and uh, the poke that's going to keep coming out from those Mantra Qs. And the junglers, high damage threats with tanks in the top side. So both comps very similar in terms of their approach. Ultimately, their execution will slightly vary, though, when it actually comes down to the fighting. I'm wondering how Rogue get through Irrelevant in fights. Obviously, you know, Markun, if he's given enough time, can slowly whistle away the Kassante. But with Koenig, Rukun, Finn and Larson aren't going to be doing too much damage to that top lane tank. They've been caught out here. Let's well, see how much Markun can do. Irrelevant gets up towards the wall, has the all-out path maker. Tries to all out wonder out, but it's killed by Markun just in time. So I've seen now how the Cassante will die, and the answer is, well, Markun will just kill him. Well, so the advantage is, yeah, the... Oh, calm. They're not tight. dropped. Hook. Not no. much yet. Heal is burnt from Exa Kick. The Ignite as well uh, from Dos. But the, the advantage the Rogue have is the mixed damage profile of top and jungle, right? Yeah. Cassante hyper-indexing into building. Oh, that's the ultimate for Miski. Smiling Despair. Larson has to try and get away. Flashes from the wind becomes like Look at the damage Miski onto Miski. He's standing in that Mantra queue for a while. That damage will eat away at you. TP used to the top looking side at mid lane. Yeah, it could just be a Rift Hell drive-by here. I love Rift Hell drive-bys. It's not going to beat. Markoon has the Heartbreaker. Flash Spectrum more. Doesn't even need. Makes it look easy. Well played there from Larson. In a two versus one, he is forced to flash away. The mid tower is, sorry, the bot tower is going to drop in favor of SK. But you help for yeah, you yeah. definitely do. Why not? You know you have the tempo advantage. Three members bot side. Ride that in. You could probably get a second charge off, with, I think. With six mites, I think you just kill this tower. Yeah, you do. Melt for it. Six grubs. The more grubs you have, the more might spawn out of the Rift Herald. You could look for an extra charge or ride think, it in, but yeah, I think you the, just, the Herald was charged exactly. by itself. You just want to push this wave in. Larson can then reset after he secures that and then just let the Herald do its thing. If Swiping it dies, it it's not the end of the... Punching its shadows. <laughs> what ghosts are in Herald your past that you're okay. <laughs> Nice damage. Overall, great play from Rogue and a really good punish. Niski needed to base, I think. I mean, I don't think Niski could have done much to protect that mid tower. Yep. The Herald was likely going to be dropped there regardless. Um, but just a great awareness from Rogue of how they can convert that Herald into a push in mid. And now they've secured themselves a pretty healthy lead. 2K is their advantage. It's Karma already working on what looks to be either the Crypt Loom or the Void Staff. Uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I like Crypt Loom on Karma. I think it's uh, pretty powerful. It gives you that huge healing burst as well throughout the fight. So kind of depends what you want, right? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Really. We'll see which one he decides to go for. So at least Flash Hook! Niski flashes it. That's a Flash gone, though, from yep. Niski. Control mages are that. The Flashes are obviously very vulnerable. Markoon. Building a lot of damage. Ultimately, Rogue are playing this map quite patiently, but they're taking a lot of control where they can, cross-mapping. They have their eyes on this Adder Tower in top lane. We expect Dragon to be the next point of contention. Rogue right now don't look like they want to contest it, but SK are not in a position to cross-map. They're hovering around to try and protect Niski in the event of a dive. He does have the TP. And it's all about the pings into the mid lane control. Look at this, Exakick saying, we need to get mid, we need to push this wave so we can move into the bot. River. Drake up in 10 seconds. But Larson clearing out this wave as quickly as he can. Mantra Q, that's going to disappear. Markun going to gain access into the river. Maybe they can catch Irrelevant here. That's the Q3. Yeah, Markun is a bit paranoid around. about it. I really feel the Drake's just going to go over to SK. It's strange to me that Rogue decided they don't want to fight it when it puts SK on sole point. Maybe they just don't think they're quite strong enough yet. I mean, the thing that confused me was that Klop... Klop? <laughs> Klop... <laughs> actually stayed top, then yeah. moved into the river, and then moved back, back to top. Again, yeah. I thought that they had decided at this point that they were going to cross map, so why didn't he just stay? Uh, in any case, it does end up being a cross map. Out of tower top in favor of the dragon. Comp should be able to walk this wave all the way in towards the tower and give Rogue the ability to put this deep vision towards the top side of SK's jungle. They're going to contest this red again. again. Credit to them. They've consistently put threat on this one. Denying from Isma. Oh. Great hook there. Yeah, it's called the out. There was a ward there. It looked blind because we toggled the fog of war, but there was a ward there spotting Isma. And, uh, 
Rogue able to get the hook, force the flash, as you say. Larson almost at his Crypt Bloom. He's got the Fiendish Codex. I overlooked that before, so obviously we'll be going, well, most likely going towards the Crypt Bloom, unless he decided he just likes Fiendish things. And uh, there it is. Comp stopped on his base, the Whirling Death. Nice stacks, does he have 217? That execution range, pretty high. Mm -hmm. But two okay. items on Marcoon as well Titanic Hydra and the Kraken Slayer. It's going to be one of the key damage threats. Finn now finishes the Seraphs, has the Rod of Ages at five stacks. Baron up in a minute and a half, and Rogue investing most of their time in getting top side presence. I mean, so you would expect at this point the teams to be cross mapping, so Rogue should really be moving bot. Saying like, hey, we want this last out of tower, and SK's like, oh, we want the top out of tower. I'm a little confused as to why Rogue right now are trying to like contest this top side vision because I don't really think there's much for them to play for. Baron is spawning in a minute's time, so maybe they're sending it for that, but I'd be very surprised if they just wanted to try and rush this. They have mid control. Now we look at the minimap and you can see, okay, now they're moving more towards the bot side of the map. Comp and Zoelis getting that push. Irrelevant has to recognize that he's on the weak side, and this is very much what I expected. Uh, Larson moving to top because he knows he's safe, he's on Karma. Uh, he has the TP to join any fight, and he shouldn't be in any danger. He's moving down to the river. He's now going to move his pressure over to mid so that he can catch that wave, keep things pushing. Finn just going to give away his farm, kind of as you'd expect, to make sure that Comp can get it. Should tick over to level 11. There it is. And SK, in an ideal world, now they want to be pressuring that top tower, but they're very behind in tempo right now because bases have already come through from Rogue, so at least already making his way back out onto the map. And now contesting that top tower is going to be a lot harder, especially with the wave clear that Larson has. He's in a position to contest. He just has to be cautious of that because he knows that he is on the weak side. So ultimately, advantage gained for Rogue now. The Baron is up. But again, this isn't necessarily the objective you want. You're now thinking about Dragon once again because it's Soul Point. So SK, I don't expect them to invest too much vision here. They're mainly clearing out their jungle. They want to make sure that they sweep through their bot side jungle for any potential flank wards. Gragas as a flanker can be terrifying. So you want to make sure that you've cleared everything out. We see on the minimap. Let me just highlight it for you one second. Right, you can use the arrow, man. Right, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, I've got to bring right. this up. And then, so you can see these wards right here. Um, <laughs> The worst these, way potential, of <laughs> these potential <laughs> flank wards <laughs> coming in from Rogue. <laughs> That's what you've got to be cautious of if you're SK. Isma not actually going to sweep those out. Oh, they're going to start oh. Baron off. Okay, yeah, I respect this the from King, Titanic Hydra and the Kraken Slayer. Finn coming across as well. The control ward goes down. Irrelevant now is going to try and check it, but he doesn't have a ward. He's hooked in, and this is all they really wanted out of it. Pull the Cassante in, pull anyone in. Hostile takeover. Not quite going to connect as Markoon still on the Baron. Finn on the front line. Still has the explosive cast. Markoon. Pops a heartbreaker there to get out of the Cassante. And now with 3,000 HP, there's the explosive cast. Doesn't hit Isma. Isma can still look for the steal, but can't find a way into the fight. Rogue get the Baron with a minute still on the Drake. They have full time to reset and set up their vision on the bottom side. I mean, credit to Rogue. They just forced that one. Yep. Uh, the, the nature of this Baron means that even though they've set all this vision up around the river, it doesn't actually give them that much information. This does a really good job of uh, both offering information with unique wards, but also denying. And this control ward completely mitigates what they can see. Irrelevant gets caught out. He is not tanky enough to survive four members. He loses his life. SK quick to try and respond, but Finn on the front line trying to disengage. And Irrelevant caught completely unawares. Rogue looking to keep their playoffs hope alive. SK could lock a spot in playoffs with a win here. A loss does not lock them out, but it definitely makes that race that much scarier. Importantly, a win doesn't lock Rogue into playoffs. It does give them at least a tiebreaker. However, they can still get to playoffs guaranteed if other results go their way with a win. If they lose, they are out. There is no way they can get to the at least three win threshold that we are going to have for those tiebreakers. Rogue is looking good right now. Love yep. that Baron call. Great decision from Markoon. I guess they decided at two items, we can kill this super fast. Mm -hmm. and I mean, they it's just... Kraken's like Ginsu's Blade of the Ruin yeah. game, right? Like... I do love this Viego build. I think it has so much potential damage. Up so next, we have Fnatic versus Mad Lions. Koi Mad Lions, Koi, who are struggling in the bottom of the standings. Fnatic still fighting for that top spot with Heretics losing earlier today. I'm sure they'll be looking very hungrily at that 7-2 scoreline. Markoon start starting up the dragon will be able to get it. Irrelevant still just stepping forward here. Comp starting to dash away. Irrelevant continues to chase forward. Pathmaker out, looking for at least a slow here. Pops the all out on Comp. Fate's call will bring Zoelise back, and Irrelevant just sprinted at them. And uh, 
Here comes Gragas. Yeah, I've seen more effective sprints on a school sports day. The continuation of Rogue. Like, SK were just all at odds and ends. They were all over the place after Irrelevant tried to chase down Comp and Rogue very happily accepted the, the free gift of the kills there. I mean, poor coordination from SK to force that fight. They, it looked desperate. Irrelevant just sprinting at the AD carry. Betty. And uh, Rogue just, they shut him down and they collapse on the fight. They're going to unlock this base 23 and a half minutes in. I mean, the thing Rogue with that fight as well is, like, you're against six grubs, you're against the Baron push. Do you need to invest that much, SK? Because now you're going to lose double inhibitors off it. Maybe you could have held back, tried to just clear out, and only lost an inhib or so. Rogue just entirely break open the base. There's four minutes on the Baron for them. They have super minions pushing in bottom and mid, and they've they done a very good job of capitalizing on their enemies' mistakes and playing the game well until this point. But this, this is really a mistake from SK in my mind. I mean, you see the idea, I guess, credit to Larson. Look at Larson yeah. on the back line. Kind of the unsung hero in this fight. They're trying to run them down, and Larson saying, absolutely not. I will deny you access. A barrel to hit onto Exekick to further isolate him. Niski and Ismay immediately on the retreat. Yeah. I don't even know if I can call that a fight. It was more just systematic destruction on the side of Rogue, tearing them apart. You can see their coach, Freddy, enthralled. You see the... Uh Coughing baby versus hydrogen bomb memes. No. <laughs> you haven't seen them? That, that, that's a good example of a <laughs> coughing baby versus a hydrogen bomb there. The explosive cast. Doing quite a lot of work for uh, for Rogue. They are now 10,000 gold ahead or nine. They can push in this top lane. Baron buff has fallen off them. They have two and a half minutes before the Baron does come back up. Super minions on their way in the bot and mid lane. Yeah, they're looking to try and get the push in this wave right here from this angle. Uh, <laughs> try and get some pressure up from over here. Yeah, and then what they really want to do, Betty, is uh, they take this tower and they just, uh, oh, wait, you've moved the thing. Take the tower and it just goes boom. Yeah, you know? wait, wait, there's another one we can add plan. on to that. Well, here can we are. We, do we have more? Yeah, here we are. Way. <laughs> <laughs> tower dies. Okay. Uh -huh. Obviously, Rogue keeping pressure in mid lane to try and force SK away from that top objective. Niski, chunked nice away. Nice poke away there from Larson. Death cap very close, but I don't think he's going to have time to finish it. Comp with the ulti. Cool. It's more just to force SK back. Harkoon takes the tower. Super minions in the bot lane now have to be dealt with. Super minions in the mid lane about to pass past that inhibitor line. Marcoon only has one minion, can just use it as a way into the base, decides against it. Larson still looking for damage on DOS. Execute and Irrelevant dealing with the supers in mid. Marcoon now clearing out the wave. Rogue will likely join him as this next wave crashes towards that tower. No fates call for them. A little while makes it a tiny bit trickier, but when you're 9,000 gold ahead, things aren't really too difficult. Oh. As the hook lands onto Isma, he uses the Crescent oh. Guard, then he's knocked back with the explosive cask. And the displacement from Rose Comp is absolutely devastating. Markoon was hit with the hostile takeover, but this takeover not working as intended. They don't need to base it. They can just keep the pressure up. Look at all these super minions and the poke. They're still very healthy on the side of Rogue. TP to the minions here to try and make them invulnerable so that they can tank those super minions a little bit longer from Irrelevant. It does that and another hook. The golden hand of God from Zoelis this game. He has not missed. Him and Maradona have a thing in common, it seems, is it is Zoelise's hand that has sent SK packing. They do still have a chance at playoffs, but it's likely they will have to play a tiebreaker game, at least. Rogue keeping their destiny in their own hands as they lock up Exekick once again. And Rogue, for the first time this year, have beaten a team not named Carmine Core or G2. They did it in clean fashion as well, a 27-minute victory. Markoon having a great performance today and against G2. It really feels like that he has just come alive, been making a lot of stuff happen in the early game for Rogue. An overall an impressive performance. They fight for that spot in the top eight. They bring themselves to three wins and they make that bottom of the table incredibly close. Fnatic and MDK are going to be coming up next yep. and that game is going to be crucial for both the top and the bottom of the standings. MDK with a win obviously will make them way into playoffs. Fnatic looking to lock up that top spot for themselves. But for this game, you can vote for your key player of the game at LEC on X, Marcoon, Comp and Zoelise. Zoelise has struggled, I think, this year. But this game really showed his pedigree. We're going to go to a short break. We'll be back with Marcoon and Finn on the desk after that.
I think Madlands didn't play as well so far. At the same time, I think we are playing better than we were playing last split, so I would say that we should be the favorites. Humanoid slides forward, still has the Empress Divide in the flash, but he doesn't need either. Humanoid is so damn big. We've been missing a bit of confidence because we lost a lot of games in a really bad style, so I think this win can help us to get some confidence back. I care about that Orient, I don't care! Because Super's unleashed, it's fire again! Mad finally get a bit of a charge in this split and won't be defeated today. It's like do or die. If we use play as we know, we will win. And if we don't win, it's something ice again that we can learn at least. In playoffs, we are still able to win it all. So I'm really confident that we can turn it around. Azark wants to try and disengage, but he already used the off the flick back! Oh! It's still humanoid, baby! He played better than me in our series, so I would like to show him who's the better player. Really using Katarina's cook. Kindred cautiously cooked Kit Kat cupcake. Kindred cautiously cooked Kit Kat cupcake. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Care freely using. Ugh. Kindred cautiously cooked Kit Kat cupcake. Oh, it doesn't even matter. Oh, I'm ready. It's fine. Red Bull gives you wings. Welcome everyone to the Kia Tilt Proof Challenge. We're here to see if four gamers can stand up to the test. Well, this oh! <laughs> <laughs> oi, oi, oi. <laughs> ah, krass. Dios mío de mi vida. I think I lost. I'm so happy that I didn't eat before.
Niski getting the push here in the mid lane has gone back and got himself that too. We'll stack up the Seraph. So at least looking for the hook and lands it on Doss. Doss has a flash, but I don't really think he. <laughs> angry at myself for using the <laughs> graphics during this fight. Because SK get two. Nice! No flash, no flash, no stem, no stem, no stem, no stem, no Relax, guys, relax, relax, relax. Chase, 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 chase. Can you chase? Welcome back to LEC, where Rogue's victory against SK have locked them at least a tiebreaker to make it into the playoffs. I'm Jeannie, joined by Markun, Finn, and GB to break this one down. Just so starting off with things, first of all, congratulations. Uh, Thank you very much. Another win under your belt. That's quite a few back to back. Yeah, it took some time for us, but we got there eventually. <laughs> I mean, I'm sweating right now because we got that bed going on with some surf storming, and not just the surf storming itself, but the juice of the it. The juice of the surf storming. Do you want to explain that for anyone well, who missed I it last time? Well, I think it's pickled herring or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like Swedish pickled herring. You put it in the in the ground for a few years and then you pick it up later. It's okay, yeah, that's delicious. great. Why exactly? I don't know. I don't know. But I, at least one of the reasons why I might be losing this bed is Makun, because honestly, mate, you've been playing phenomenal in your volleyball game and this one as well. Why did it take so long to click for you on this rogue roster? Because it seems like it's you're finally performing to what people expected as well coming into the year. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I thought about this a lot as well, because these, these past few games, I feel a lot more in my groove and I've made some changes to my routine as well, like uh, before coming into spring, which has also helped me. But I feel like it's finally starting to click and I finally have like a lot of calm in the game, which I normally didn't really have during my gameplay, which it allows you to see them like it just allows you to do everything way easier. Right. And I think it's showing at this point. When we're looking at you guys, oh. As oh, a collective. I was just going to say that he's welcome that I'm here. But oh, you, you're the yeah. confidence boost. Well, that's why I'm giving him confidence every day. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was going to be my question. Do you think it has anything to do with your yeah, Finn here like in top? Yeah, I play Finn every day in scrim, so I know I have to step up on stage. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly the kind of piece that we needed in Rogue, for me to do that, to push Markun to be even better. <laughs> that's what I see that he doesn't see, but I'm helping him a lot. That's with what that. I, I do on the broadcast right. as well. Yeah, you know, exactly. you got to be the bully victim so they get confidence. All right, well, with that as well, you guys have that win. And as I said, at least a tiebreaker under your belt. But the standings in general coming into spring, was that an expectation that you've had as a team after winter? I expected a lot better, honestly, uh, okay. with our initial scrims. I think we really had a, a rough set of games on stage and it really took some time for us to kind of figure out what our issues were even, because I feel like we were just going on stage and we were just kind of ignorant to our surroundings. We didn't really realize what kind of mistakes we were making and it took a lot of time for us to figure out what kind of direction we needed. I think we found a part of that at least, to yeah. some degree. You got three wins, right? Yeah, so yeah. I guess a third of the way there. Congratulations. But KC is currently at the bottom, but also with this win particularly that you've had against SK, that also means that SK is going to have to play a tiebreaker. So there's quite a lot of different moving elements that we need to keep track of here. Oh, absolutely. But uh, you at least guaranteed a tiebreaker. There will be a tiebreaker. There's still uh, so many scenarios in terms of where we're going to be going. We will be updating people, but for now, congrats on staying alive at least. Yep, absolutely. And we're going to be heading into the match of the week, because what exactly is on the line? We have Fnatic that is going to be locking themselves into that first spot if they do win. So let's head over to our casters, Zagdan Dracus, to break this one down. We weren't just doing, doing anything weird. weird. Doing no. anything weird. We are doing normal Fine. stuff yeah. up here. Don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're getting into game, Fnatic versus Mad Lions. Before we get in, I have to say, while there is a lot of I intensity in the fan bases, before it came to us, but during break, the Fnatic and Mad Lions Koi fans are so yeah. wholesome. It was amazing. You guys are like yeah. shouting at each other. I know now you have to like <laughs> yell at each other and like stuff. I just got to say it was super, super wholesome. Love to see it. Fantastic stuff there. Love between the respective fan bases. And while there is a lot of love, and it is our match of the week delivered by Uber Eats, uh, you know, I think the Mad Lions Koi fans, they might need a little <laughs> bit more love on this particular one if they want to lock it in, if they want to secure themselves that spot in playoffs. We'll see, Rob. It's been a bit of an up and down for both of these teams this week. Yeah, I mean, Fnatic having that first loss, or another loss was not great for themselves, but uh, we we'll have to see how they do, because a win here would lock them that top spot coming into playoffs. Whereas we look across as Mad Lions Koi, I mean, honestly, just trying to find their footing. It feels like they haven't been able to find that success in the mid game. And now with their opportunity to try and lock themselves into playoffs, it would be a huge win over Fnatic and even that confidence that they need going into the playoff brackets. That confidence very important, especially with Fnatic, you know, sitting at the top. And MDK as well, it's interesting. You know, I had an interview with Supa, um, talking about how he still feels like the team is playing really well and behind the scenes improving really rapidly, despite maybe not being able to show the results on stage. And they certainly have been close a few times. 
But as we jump into the draft, you see pretty standard priority bans. Talia gonna be the first pick here. On the opposite side, the Zeri plus the Rel as Noah takes himself a brief moment to breathe, to center himself for what is gonna be a Kaisa game. And we'll see what build he wants to go for. He is LS's favorite AD carry, I imagine, <laughs> right now. It's Fnatic have already very successfully used LS's face for clickbait. And it may happen once again. Yeah, curious to see. I mean, it does feel like it probably go for a little bit of that poke build that we got to see already from him. But uh, yeah, I was about to say for jungle, I want to see something a bit more aggressive, something that can set up this Talia. Polybear fits that perfectly. So looking to see Fnatic once again play through that strong mid jungle. And then it's just a question of for Noah and <clears throat> sorry, for Jun, how he wants to try and round himself out in that pairing with Noah and try and play up into what is going to be that strong pairing in the mid duo. Big debate. I do always get nervous for the opposing team when Razor gets a. Uh... The Volibear. This is a man large and in charge in the early game. I think that it's safe to say. Yari now coming in as well. Okay, so Ari Talia, a, a matchup that I'm a bit divided on. If you have the tools to limit Ari's mobility, as we saw in the G2 Fnatic game when they were the ones to pull out the Poppy, etc. Um, it looked pretty easy to shut this pick down with only the Talia. We've seen Ari's, you know, you build Merc Treads, you can dash into the minefield and get away. The stun, not a long enough duration to really stop you. But now the Rek'Sai, the TF band. Curious what Mirwan is going to go to, if he's actually going to find something really advantageous with this red side last pick, if they do want to give him that counter pick. He feels much, much better when he has one of these niche counter picks. Yeah. He seems so much more confident. Yeah, I agree. He uh, definitely feels significantly more confident in that regard. But I also think, like, I want to see something here for Aloya. I think the Rel is... Well, I would prefer to see go down to the bottom side of the map, and then you try and take something that's a little bit more advantageous for yourself, like the Lee Sane or something a little bit more aggressive here, because I think a lot of what we've seen from Razor Green Humanoid is a huge amount of that strong mid jungle. So I want to see that counteracted. You've already got the Ari. Try and make that a little bit better for yourself. If I have the room to set themselves up, what is Big Four going to be here? Renata, yeah, Renata okay. solid. I mean, when you look at the opposite side and you see a Volibear, you know you're going to get some value out of the Renata. Yeah. I do get nervous against the Kai'Sa, who can reposition herself so easily to get away from a utility spell like Hostile Takeover. But with the range support already locked in, with Kai'Sa being honestly incredibly low range early on, uh, you're pretty much set to take over the bottom side. That is a Leona, however. <laughs> yeah. And while she rarely shows her face in pro play because a single item hard counters her, and that item is Merc Treads, um, she's does a ton of damage early on. Yeah, it's definitely a very aggressive lane in the bottom side. I think it's something that Super and Alvaro are going to have to pay attention to, because I imagine with the way Fnatic are set up, it's, hey, do what we usually do. Try and get some early roams from Jun towards mid, work with Humanoid and Razor, get the success there, and then start to lean that bot side. And when you're in that position, then it becomes very easy for the Zeri, or to turn it down onto Zeri, or even push the Renata out of lane. The only thing is, of course, you will struggle to get wave control in that bot side, so maybe there's a bit of an angle there for Alvaro to get out on the map first, but I still think you've got a great answer here as Fnatic. Did Mirwin just pick the most vanilla ice cream R5 top laner possible? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Was his hair the secret to his counter picks? Now that he has shaved his head, are they no longer an option? These are the questions that comes to my mind immediately. Um, Mirwin, of course, solid top laner. Oscar on Cassante, a comfort pick. I think his best pick across the entire year thus far, not just because of the power of the pick, but he looks incredibly comfortable on it. So need to see how well Mirwan can perform on the Udyr here. I don't think this top lane matchup is going to be super crucial early on. Instead, Rob, we've already talked about it, is the Fnatic movie posters just keep coming in. Respect. Um, bot lane, going to be hype. Yeah, I think the big thing here for Madeline's Koi is that the Udyr guarantees them another pushing lane, right? So in the early stages, you got guaranteed push bot, pretty much guaranteed push on top. And it means that it's a little bit more difficult for Razork to really try and invade and get involved in some of the early plays. So I think specifically, it'll be on Al Yui to try and track where Razork is so he's not trying to like pull off any funky maneuvers. But with, you know, the fourth wave crash into reset for Mirren, I think he'll be able to get a nice advantage here against the Xante. You play for Demolish Prox and, and then it's all focused on bot lane. Like how well can Al Yui do to try and disrupt the attention that Fnatic want to try and put down here. And how well can Jun do with something like the Leona, a champion we don't see nearly as much uh, in professional play? Haven't seen it really recently whatsoever. Take a look at the overall picks in a brief moment here. But I think that ultimately, both sides, decent tools to play around the bottom lane, certainly more aggressive tools for Fnatic. I do get concerned if they start to fall behind, but here we are. Time now to get into the game. Fnatic versus Mad Lions Koi. Playoffs, more or less on the line. 
Fans. Ready. It's a bait. And the thing that you guys have to understand is that we just needed to test you to make sure that everybody was ready. That's right. We needed to make sure you knew who you were. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. Fanatic fans, dementia patients, handshake. Gah. <laughs> that, was, that was unnecessary. <laughs> dementia yeah. patients did not need to catch that yeah, straight. They're delirious. Yeah. Come on. There's a okay. All right. All right. All right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I know, but seriously, I think it's incredible for Fnatic, right? The opportunity to actually take first place here if they end up winning this. Um, I think they've had a phenomenal split. It's been really, really working well. And a huge amount of it has been like falling back towards the veterans, right? But I think Jun, great addition into this roster as well. Yep. He's been stepping up massively. And even the way that they play around this Talia pick has been really, really cool. Like playing for those side lane picks, catching people off guard, being willing to rotate around the map. It really feels like they're uh, especially when they get their hands on Talia, have found a way to make this pick always work for them. Which I think is good to see because that's on paper what we want to always see from Talia players, but not all players have really unlocked that maybe level of individual confidence or coordination with the team to really make the most out of this pick overall. There was an issue locking in picks. We are getting into a game about 20, 30 seconds here for our match of the week. Fans still eager. We're still excited. I mean, MDK went to finals. The biggest surprise, potentially of both winter and spring now. Winter in the best way possible spring. Yeah. Dangerously close to the worst way. But have to see now. That was age is coming. I respect that you did not put his face on the tiny squirrel. That would have been, that would have been rude. Yeah, definitely. Oh, what the poster with the poster meta. It evolves. And the thing is that we're gonna have to keep track of the poster meta. I'm gonna be honest, bot lane meta, interesting. <coughs> poster meta, most compelling thing <laughs> I have seen thus far. So here we are, onto the rift. Level ones, pretty calm, pretty controlled. Fan bases unleashed, excited. It's a good uh, contrast. I'm still curious to see exactly how MDK want to try and approach this. Because I, as I say, I think you got an easy one of, hey, we want to try and make sure we can get pushed top, get push and bot, like put more attention into the bottom side of the map and just make sure we're able to scale relatively well into a mid game. Um, but it's when we get to the mid game, that's where I've seen the mistakes too often from Madeline's Koi. And especially when you're getting to com composition like this from Fnatic with the Talia, it's so easy for them to roam around, pick you off if you overextend the side lane, you can get yourself caught out. So uh, it's gonna have to be a clean performance here from Madeline K or MDK if they hope to take this one down. Definitely true. And while it's easy to focus on the MDK side of the story, as I think the stakes are certainly higher for them, just a reminder that, you know, Fnatic haven't been at the top of the standings in a regular season in quite some time. 2018 yeah. summer was the last time. And it's not like this week has been fantastic. We look at the last game for Fnatic against SK. Don't get me wrong, SK threw harder, but Fnatic also threw. Now Fnatic, though, looking for a bit of an aggressive level one. Not going to quite find the setup angle. Good patience from MDK to play to the far side of the lane because they didn't have brush control. Let's just keep my eyes on the volleyball here. He will get pinged out there. So didn't start blue buff. Wasn't sure if he knew that the ward had gone down, but just gets caught on the edge of it. So at least the moment, Badlands Koi have full information on where the Volley Bear is starting. And it will be both junglers starting to make their way down towards this bottom side. Because, as I said, I think for Super Navro, you want to try and continue to put the pressure on towards Jun and Noah. That's kind of the downside of Leone, is you are all or nothing. So if you can't find those windows to go in, well, Super Navro will just get to chip away at your turrets and make the most of it. Yeah. And again, mentioned earlier, uh, you know, obviously an oversimplification, but Leone doesn't have any knockups. And as a result, Merc Treads are incredibly effective. And so your window of playmaking. Uh, much shorter in pro overall. People aren't going to hesitate to rush that boot option. But again, the damage profile really what Leona can provide, as well as the long-range non-committal engage of a spell like Solar Flare. But also, as you highlighted, Rob, she goes in really well. She goes out... Not so well. Really not so well, <laughs> right? And that's tricky. And it's not Aftershock either. Uh, does have a lot of natural resistances. It's a good flip back, the but charm. an excellent charm for Frescali. Oh, you're now on the setup. Will he commit for the Flash Shattering Strike? Humanoid looks like he's just going to try to play for the wave, accepting his fate on first blood. Drawn out. Elio, you're there where he needed to be, but it's Frescawi with the charm that really makes that first blood work. Great timing on us. Frescawi just about able to clip him with it before he got uh, slingshotted backwards, but means now he'll be able to reset, get some the early dark seal for himself, get, to get a little bit more control over this wave. But smart from Humanoid not to invest a Flash, like, for Scary and El Yoya would have been able to follow too easy, so he just accepts this as Ooh, Jun. Good movement coming in from Super though. 
Gets the dash over the wall as the tether is still there. Does not bring Jun along with him. Razork here. Bottom side, moving through the brushes. Very powerful. And the thing about the Volibear, we've just seen, it just takes over. Clear speed so good, early trading so good. But excellent window there that Elioya capitalizes on to find the first assist at the very least as Razork takes away Scuttle. Holds on to at least a one camp lead for now. A little bit more. You should be able to move up here. I'm going to try and contest for a second scuttle, but honestly, with the way the wave is pressed in, it might be a little bit difficult. And um, for Skelly, though, over here, maybe they go for the 2v2, but especially after you just... Yeah, they're not going to try and overdo it. Ilioia going to be able to take his Raptor's free set and then try and come back out onto the map. Um, so I think, again, it's going to be a case of Ilioia trying to see if he can take some of the extra time he didn't use on the scuttle crabs to maybe clear out his Krogs and then make his way to boss side. Good opportunity there, as we see once again, little parkour comes out from Soup and he's able to just walk out to safety. Early threat, hasn't been there yet for Fnatic in the bottom lane. All right, early advantages, still going to the side of MBK. He might get the better of a lot of these trades, however. This guy connecting the charm a bit too late, but will at least proc the electrocute. So now, what is the next play? What is the next opportunity? We saw Mirwen doing what he can to slow push this way forward. We'll most likely get the TP out from Oscar. Small advantage. Can't imagine that he will use that for anyone other than himself, though. And Oscar still opting to stay. Asante mana costs notoriously low, allowing him to stick it out a little bit longer in this one, but is also there to cover just in case. Razork needs support. Frescali could charm this time around, and Humanoid really can't trade back there. Nice little okay from the Ramus. Hey, yo, he's coming in from the bottom side here, though. Will be spotted, so Humanoid has to back away. But means Void Grub's gonna be able to go across the Razork. If I'm Noah and Jun, though, that's where I'm really starting to get worried. Because I know that Ayoi is on the spot side, and we've been completely separated from our jungler. But it's a tricky thing. Void Grub's taken out. All three going to the side of Fnatic. Definitely a nice early buff to have, depending on where they can get pressure. Tricky, of course, because they might not be able to leverage it too much for themselves. Right now, Mad Lion's Koi. Yes, they lost the Grubs, but they're grabbing the Drake, using bot pressure pretty well. Razork resetting to the bottom side of the map, but he's not going to be here, here in time to get the Drake. That said, Supa also getting the play. Man, that last quarter is getting so many little advantages. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was talking about, is like, I think Razork kind of needs to play either through mid a little bit more, or have, or actually just like all in on the bot side. Maybe now that you've hit the level six, you can get Humanoid to join in, make things a little bit easier. But as long as you continue to have Ayoya pressure in this bottom side of the map, it's impossible for Jun to actually go in. All he just gives his life in Ayoya when Ayoya shows up. So I think this is where you're just getting that continual chip damage for Soup on the bottom lane. So really, this is where I want to see Fnatic up the ante a little bit. Like, get your shove mid and immediately start to transition bot lane. You can already see like Jun and Razork linking up together now. Get the vision control that they need in River to enable Humanoid to lean into this bottom side. Definitely good heads up play. Oscar as well doing really solidly in the 1v1, at least to try and get pressure on some of these trades. Udyr, of course, has not had the opportunity to back away quite yet and get that reset. So a lot of gold just sitting in Mirwin's pocket. Once he is finally able to recall, might get something done. Razor going for the play here. Good handshake from Alvaro. Doesn't go for a Jun, goes for Razor, knowing the follow-up is more lethal. And that's the play kind of fizzling. Bot prior is there, and yeah, this is the moment where if Drake wasn't already gone, you'd get the Drake, but it is. So MDK, earlier plays paying dividends. Yeah, it will be a one-two punch though, because it's not going to be just the one time Humanoid comes down here. You use essentially not anything on Fnatic to get that job done, but you burn the flash in Alvaro. Now, when you use the wall the next time, Alvaro just gets stuck on one side of it, and he's going to fall. So this is going to be a case of, you know, in a minute's time, start to make your way back down here and do the exact same play once more. So I want to see what Ayoya has to respond with, because I think your best bet is to try and punish Humanoid to punish bot side, because if you can't get that play with Humanoid involved, it becomes significantly difficult, more difficult to actually set up that play for Fnatic. And I feel like there's just been so much pressure on Ayoya in this early game. You talked about it. Trying to cover as much as he can against a jungler who is going to be more powerful early on. Trying to mitigate some of these avenues of attack for the side of Fnatic. In this case, you highlighted Alvaro's missing flash. Everyone will finally TP back to top. Boots to a tier, nothing too exciting. Although delaying the recall as long as he did does mean it's gonna take some time to stack that tier. Yeah, I think it's kind of just a 
response to what we've seen in the map because oftentimes you just you won't see you go for the tier but i think in this specific case where you're just constantly pressing or and looking for demolish procs like this i actually like the adaptation where even though it's a little bit late it's just about having as much mana to continue to push the wave knowing fanatic are putting a lot of resources into that bottom side so mirin kind of just gets to farm turret plates for free and good to be able to put yourself ahead in gold. I think the biggest problem I have with Udyr domestically uh, for us in the LEC is that oftentimes while Udyrs will get some of these early laning leads, the transition of making this champion a continuous threat past just the laning phase is often a difficult one. Let's see if Mir1 can be the exception to that trend so far. Good pushback from Oscar, pullback as well, instant all out. Ghost proc down both sides. And nothing's gonna happen here. Waiting for the Q3. Mir1 trying to sidestep. Looks like the play is going to fizzle. Nice bit of damage coming in from Frescal. He's trying to back away. Pull back. Good under Razor. Ulti now coming in. That's the Magnetic Storm. Druid looking for a bit more damage. Elio is still healing up for a moment longer. Frescal finding the initial kill. Reset's now coming in. Bailout not quite there. Razor able to get the return kill, but the charm back is now coming in. But do they have the damage? Red buff ticking. Nice sidestep for Frescal. Doesn't have the... Oh my gosh, so <laughs> incredibly close. I thought for sure maybe a flash auto, but he doesn't want to risk it. He doesn't want to risk dying under tower. Instead, happy to just have the pressure and very likely the tower plate. Very good call from Madeline's Koi. They'll attack Fnatic before they make it down to the bottom side of the map. They find the 3v3 with the roam. Perfect timing from Alvaro. And even though they don't get the bailout on Uyoya, they still come out on top. Now, Fnatic, I want to try and turn it around. Flash in. Zenith Blade now following up. Hostile takeover is there, but Razor going to turn right back onto Alvaro. Find the initial kill. First guy was here, double buff there, but Fnatic got what they came for. The pick on Alvaro. Yeah, Alvaro just having no flash comes back to bite him, but unfortunately wasn't able to escape. Now Fnatic, they do spot out Mirwin. Volibear on, is on top side with Jun still. 1v1 fight on the top side, part a million. Oscar though has burned a lot of those major cooldowns. But Supa is here. Creative lane swap, Noah already down to the bottom lane. Oscar can recognize that Supa is here. Doesn't know exactly where Mirwin is, is forced to back away, can't stop the recall. So, Fnatic, were tr at least Oscar Aiden was trying to delay the reset on Mirwin because his teleport's just about to be up. So the longer he can keep Mirwin in lane, he can reset, regain the health of mana, and then get back to lane to match for Void Grubs. But because you had the rest of MDK show up, they're able to bully Oscar Aiden off, they get the reset from Mirwin, but he is... Um, and with that earlier rotation as well, they're able to get numbers advantage here for the Void Grubs. So it will be then a split onto the Void Grubs, three for three, but ends up giving Fnatic a lot more control over this bottom side of the map, especially for Noah, who's going to be happy to pick up some of the gold off this turret plate in the bot side yeah, as well. That's interesting. You've effectively traded one plate thus far for the Grubs, denied six Grub buff, which I oh. certainly do like, but if they're in time to contest the Drake, that's going to be the big thing because they conceded all bot side control. And Oscar Inning just TP top, so you don't have the match here. So MDK, if they TP in for Scout, which they are, they can contest. Fan advantage. But the Dragon already gone. Mirwin needs to run forward. Ram stands can't just be unstoppable, but he doesn't use it in time. The activation. Oh, yeah, now trying to keep them all in the midst. Four members stacked up. Lightning crash there, but Super's caught in the wall. He can't get over. Frescali off to the side. The charm now going into it. Connects with the Volbear. Gets the reset. Humanoid trying to lay down a bit more damage, but it's just Frescal. He's standing behind him, and Mad Lion's Koi taking two out in the process. The follow-up dive. One more dash available for Frescal. The wave about to collapse. Noah and Jun doing everything they can to defend the tower. Frescal goes a little bit too soon, though. He doesn't need to make that play. Noah now trying to back away. Ultra Shock Laser goes in. Noah getting chipped down. Crash down, not quite there. Cleanse ulti out to safety, but MDK still playing damn clean. Oscar trying to free fire back on the top side of the map, but it is not going to go in his favor. MDK with a massive play. Beautiful punish from Madlines Koi. The second they see Oscar in having TP back to the top side, they're like, we can get numbers advantage. We can collapse on this. And Oyoya, that engage was picture perfect to set up for your team. Definitely was. Oscar finally going to knock down the last plate here, but it is not going to make the difference in the overall gold lead. 425 to him. Still a 2K gold lead for MDK overall. And this is exactly what MDK need. The opportunity to try and fight back, try and push themselves up into playoffs. And against a team like Fnatic, this is exactly the lead that you want to come into your mid game with. There's no one. <laughs> that hurt a little bit. That's the moment where you press tab, realize the RE is 403, and go, ah, oh, I see. And this thing. Yeah, there's that, that, thing, that thing. The nine yeah. stacker. I'm going to be honest. It's it, 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 There's a lot of things you could hover there. We could just circle that whole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that this whole cool. thing. Yeah, just this is a problem. Just this. Uh, this yeah. Thing. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Found it. <laughs> uh, sorry, go. Good, good, good in that. Problem. <laughs> no, you can't try. <laughs> Don't try. It won't let you. It wants you to draw circles exclusively. Jun, that is not where you will find safety or peace. He did not learn his lesson on the bottom tower. MDK are more than happy to oblige him and teach him a second time here. As Beerwin is also getting the top tower. How did this go so wrong? We were so busy talking about how incredibly <laughs> overpowered Frescawi is at this exact moment. We missed the context of the play. Well, that was the problem, was that because Noah had gotten chunked, they were able to immediately collapse onto mid lane. They get the numbers advantage, and now they push on through. Ayoya exiting into that top side as well. Means he's here to protect Mirren from any volley bears that might show up. Oscar and should be able to clear the wave, though. So it won't quite be top terror, but still, Madeline's Koi playing this map perfectly right now. 3k advantage. All right. Man versus Man who believes he's four animals. Still not the most eventful fight. More about the, the pressure of the PvE. But Jun on the way up. If he cancels this recall, it's pretty big. Ward? Oh. Feels bad. Shield the Daybreak. Not going to connect there. Supa walking forward. Finally takes mid lane tower. Their first tower of the game. Three overall. Yeah, I don't know if you care about this Rift Herald if you're MDK, though. You got Frescavi on bot side, and he should be able to get that tower. So as long as you keep people pushed up to top end, you're pretty happy here as Madeline's core. Definitely. Unfortunately, you had to give it up, but of course, three guys make this a little bit faster. Frescavi's not going to be able to grab the tower on this wave, but can chip away at it. And you can see already Alvaro waiting in the Fnatic red side jungle. And this is where Madeline's Koi, they get to establish a ton of vision, minute and a half until Dragon. So Fnatic trying to contest at the moment, but you can see you're not allowed in this jungle right now because of how much MDK control. And with the amount of money or investment on the bottom Good side. Eye. Needs to run. Mirwin debating. The flick back oh. still good. No! A moment of overconfidence sees a bear again, and Humanoid gets the kill. Mirwin had that by all rights. That should have been his kill. Humanoid plays it so clean. I mean, he should have just died. He should have died. But, but he, I don't even know how he did it. <laughs> and that's a huge win for Fnatic, because if Mirren had got the kill, gets top tower, and you lose control of your bot side jungle with Dragon Spawning, that's like the game kind of written off at that yeah. stage. But with that little bit of extra oomph in their power, Humanoid now gets the back. He's completed his first item. He's got a Dark Seal himself. He's starting to match some of the power that's coming through from the Madeline's Koi mid laner. And as well, they get control over Midwave, and with a Rift Herald in tow, they can use that to get control for River for Dragon. Yeah. Very close to just being Mirwin running down Humanoid in the lane, but I think that moment of hesitancy where he backsteps but is still in tower range really costs him dearly. Oh, yeah, stepping in. We need to step back as Humanoid plays down the Unraveled Earth. Fnatic don't have the members here or the push to go too far forward into the Fog of War. There is Mad Lion's Koi shifting all of their vision to the top side of the map, Mirwin. In the meantime, has taken up home in the bottom lane. Oscar resetting to mid. Mac potentially keen to start something here. Yeah, I think the mistake here was Razark going for red buff. I think he should have reset and actually tried to get out onto the map again. So then you can try and push in mid, threaten the tier one in mid with the Rift Herald. But now with the position that you're in, the late reset means that Mirren gets to push boss. You're going to get Dragon here. Supa's managed to shove in mid, and there's not really a massive threat anywhere on the map for Fnatic to really trade if you go for Dragon. And even the Madeline's Koi, they're faking the Dragon. They're going to go for Humanoid. He's no Flash. Humanoid caught on the side. A bit of vengeance after the last play. Mirren should have enough damage to finish this off. And if he does it, Supa more than certainly will. Havaro going to take the kill. Now MDK, control over the bottom side, can move straight to Dragon if they want to, but first they want to push that vision line forward. Great call out, great collapse overloading the side of the map. Yeah, and it was just playing off of the assumptions Fnatic had made. You assume the Dragon is going to be where Madeline's Koi go for next, but they're kind of like, here, look, let's be real, an Ocean Soul isn't really our win condition here, but for Skelly getting caught. Razork Thundering Smash goes in, Noah leaps out. For Skelly. my god, the flash into the alt. Spirit Rush takes him to safety, Noah dangerously close to killing him. One more item, one more dagger, one more longsword. Probably would have done it. But now Jun. the Herald charging, spinning, 360-ing. It's a little bit confusing now as the Leona finally going to get into the midst of the fight. Hostile takeover is there. Mirwin now needs to find his way to the backside. Noah going to go down. MDK still trying to take over. Supa still standing. Crucially, that is one mega fed Zeri, but they can't finish off on screen time. Yes, they can! Supa still alive! It's not even a bailout. He's just immortal. It's a quadra for the Zeri. Mirwin still stepping forward. Humanoid's got no business being here. Mad Lions coy like Lions of Bond Prey. It's a Benta for Supa. What a fight. 
A Penta per split is needed for Super, and he claims it in what is going to be one of the most pivotal games for Mad Lions Koi of the split. An incredible fight from MDK. That was impressive. We, we have to watch it again. And this is where Zupa, like, is in a great position. He's continuing to push on forward, but the big thing you have to keep an eye on is watch it, the bailouts. Oscar is trying to time it for the second that it goes down, but he actually messes up ever so slightly, so that then Zupa is able to flash forward, get the reset onto the Leona, and from that point forward, you just can't touch him. He's getting so many dashes in the back line, and MDK are just able to set up perfectly. That's Gowie. Good damage, but he's got another dash. Spear rush forward onto Noah. Another, this is... They're just slaughtering Fnatic, Fnatic. Stepping too far forward, Humanoid throws two backwards, keeps his team alive to fight another day. It's only 19 minutes into the game. Baron's not even up yet, but this gold lead feels insurmountable. This is I this mean, is the MDK they told us about. This is the MDK they said, hey, we're playing scrims, we're looking great. They didn't show it on stage as much, but today they are showing it. This is the MDK from winter. This is exactly what people were hoping to see. A team that could play aggressive in the early stages, punish map movements, and then find that success in the mid game, not overextend on side lanes, not get caught out mispositioning. But every single time Fnatic have stepped up to the plate, MDK have shot them down where they stand. Excellent performance thus far. The Ari, I was initially a little bit skeptical. How well for Scali was gonna be, was gonna be able to do, but that clean charm really kicking things off in the mid lane. Humanoid getting collapsed on. Uh, Yo Yo and Prescali starting that snowball, getting the ball rolling there. In a relatively quiet game from the rest of the map for Fnatic, this Kaisa Leona pairing not really giving them the advantage on boss side maybe they were hoping to find. And it is the on hit uh, Kaisa this time around, not one of the more creative AP itemization builds. They need sustained damage, it does make sense. You have to kill the Udyr. But MDK for now are just running the rift. Fnatic are just trying to play off side lanes. They're saying, hey, look, screw this. We can't really fight. We can't really go anywhere near MDK. So maybe you can try and pressure into topside. You can see both jungle and support there to support Humanoid. But now everyone's got to try and dip. But Madeline's Koi, they're hoping to pull them off and catch them as Baron is spawned. Mirren, spot on a ward bus. Looks like they'll just about get out of there in time. You can see the Weaver's wall, though. Humanoid anticipates the collapse on the side lane. And MDK, all it takes is one more pick that they've found multiple times already on the side lane. One member on Fnatic sticking around for one extra wave, one extra cannon minion. That pick will be enough for MDK to move to Baron, and they can start knocking down the last of these remaining towers. I mean, they've already got five. Yeah. And for MDK, it's just about controlling this jungle on the top side. As long as you get those waves in your favor, and you can try and bait out a, a TP from us Gurnan and start to get these numbers advantages on the side lanes, like especially since Mirren doesn't quite has his. That's why MDK are starting off the barn right now. They're trying to pull t teleports out of Fnatic so they can get control on the map. Sustained damage isn't incredibly high. You can see this is taking a bit of time. Frescali also not committing to the objective. Fnatic, I think, recognize that this is happening and instead just go for tier two. Recall's coming out. Mirwin can try to contest, and the rest of the side of MDK now retreating, but they're going to knock a Tier 2 down of their own. Exactly, and this is why I like the call from MDK. It's like, hey, we can go for both. Wave was already there in topside, so you get the threat in the Tier 2, and you still got the TP on Mirwin to try and come in if anything does go a little bit awry. So Tier 3, oh, oh hang on. Full committing for the play. Humanoid's already used all of his CC. Jun tries to throw down the Solar Flare, and Humanoid's just going to drop. Supa now legendary, the tower will fall. The wave set up in mid lane as well. It's what a master class. Mirren's chasing For the members Frescali. of Fnatic. They're not gonna get a chance to recall either. Where was this mid game? The entire split MDK with a lead. Unrelenting pressure in the mid lane, pressure on the top side of the map. They knock down half of that health bar in the inhibitor tower. They take their first inhibitor. Within a minute of knocking down the big purple worm, they're already into Fnatic's base. This is incredible. I mean, Mirren chasing both Razorak and Oscar in and back, so they can't reset. Numbers advantage for MDK. Two inhibitors down. Madlines, Koi. This is incredible. This is the stuff I want to see from this squad leading into playoffs. This is, if it had been shaky, if it had been messy, we would have been doubting so much of what this team could do coming into best of threes if they were even able to make it. Oh, now, the TP. it feels like an inevitability, but Fnatic not going to go quietly. Mirwin. Still a Phoenix, still a Bear, still a Ram. We'll, uh, we'll walk away. <laughs> well, well, okay. You tried. You there tried. was a solid effort, you know. Yeah, I mean, you gotta go for it, but I don't think I don't think you're I don't think you're killing the Bear. 
<laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. This bear, Razork is very killable. And I got to say, 16 out of 16 KP for Elio this game. I think the first kill in yeah. mid lane, the credit there belongs to Frescali. Elio was where he needs to be, but it was really Frescali who set that up. But he has been everywhere that the team has needed him to be. And you can see it in the, in the score lines of his carries. Zero deaths on Supa. Zero deaths on Frescali. Immaculate performance. Yeah, and I mean, as you say, setting up so much of this, like the flash in to get the CC, flashing over walls, flashing over and um, the reverse crowd control that can come in, but Fnatic trying to poke out Mirwin. They've already got control on bot side. This is going to be so difficult to try and keep off of your turret here. You still got 45 seconds left on this barn buff. Guy Splitter, Supa does get locked up though, but immediately cleanses out to safety. The hostile takeover buying all the space the Zeri needs. Lightning! Cutting through the back line of Fnatic. Human right now back and away. Noah's got nowhere else to go. A killer instinct. More like an instinct of desperation. Kills now coming through. Frescawi God, like I expected a close match. I was ready for Fnatic to slaughter. I was not ready for this level of dominance for Mad Lions Koi. What a clean way to end the regular season. Super now going in for just a little bit extra. The charm gonna connect. They don't have the damage to kill off Oscar. But they'll take their time on this one. They know they've done well. They've earned their moment of glory. And they've earned their spot in playoffs. Madlands Koi will take it to four and five. Impressive stuff from start to finish. They'll finally hit the Nexus. You can see the smile on Supa's face. This was the game they'd wanted to show us so many times. Today it finally manifests. It was so incredibly well orchestrated. Like the transitional ganking mid from the get-go, play around that bottom side, get that big lead, and that super, get that pentakill in the middle of that game as well. I was incredibly caught off guard, <laughs> but I won't be caught off guard if he wins your Kia player of the game vote at OEC on X, Elioia Frescali or Super are your options. Now, if this were about who's the most supportive, it'd be Elioia, but we all know this is KDA. Bigger you number know, there's a pentakill. <laughs> And that's what people remember when we return an interview with Supa for now. We're going to head to a quick break. Red Bull gives you wings.
Drops Kelly off to the side. The charm now going into it. Connects with the boulder. Gets the reset. Humanoid trying to lay down a bit more damage. It's just Frescali standing behind him and Mad Lions Koi. Welcome back to the LEC. I'm standing here with two victorious players from Matt Koi. Congratulations, Alyoya Super. Super, 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 Super. I think that's deserved after a pentakill. It's not. Okay, please elaborate. Why would it not be? He did not Because he put you on dog jump right duty. Right click, right click, and, and you had to do all the work. Just the Renata champion, not even like skilling this pentakill. I didn't right click. IQ. <laughs> he, he, he doesn't know the mechanics of the champion. Yeah. It's fine. He plays. He plays Renata for you. Okay. Yeah. Now, of course, congratulations. You guys had luck prior to this game, but of course, you wanted to go out with a bang and beat Fnatic. You also, if Fnatic beat you here, they would lock first. You kind of, for now, have taken that away from them. Please talk me through that game because you lock in the Zeri, very confident on the champion. I know you personally from the ERLs. This kind of champions are your bread and butter. How do you feel? I'm first of all. I need to. I step up after my EU Master Performance 30. I need to tell my coach that I can play 30, no? Uh -huh. This time I get level 6, just pentagil, easy. But I, I will say that was a really good draft because most likely Noah really like 30. When he's out of this champion, he doesn't impact that much in, in the game, early game. So it was a good pick. So it was also a takeaway from you guys. Ayoye, I want to come to you because Super has made some very serious allegations this week about him being, you know, the best AD carry in the league. And you have been a huge advocate and very vocal on the fact that there are no rookies. You make it on this stage, you got to step the heck up and play. What do you have to say about what Super mentioned about his potential as an AD carry? I mean, I just agree with him. He's the best ADC in the league and it's just time for him to prove it. And I am just waiting for him to prove it, to step it up, you know, and say that he's the best in the world. Because I know he's going to do it. So I just, want, I just want him to get hate from everyone and, like, everyone bash him in Twitter. That's where I get the fun. You know what? Hate watchers fueling you is one of the best uh, injections you can have in terms of uh, being happy about your performance. Now, of course, you talked about proving it internationally, proving it to worlds. MSI is very close, and you guys are also fighting for a ticket to go to that international. Yoya, you have been to many. How do you see the development in the team right now moving towards potentially that ticket? I would say, honestly, it's one of the first times that I feel really excited about going into inter internationals because I feel like I'm going to get a lot from, like, as a team, we're going to learn so much and it's going to be so much more useful than it has been previously for me, or those are my expectations, at least. So we really need to make it to MSI. And once we make it, I feel like it's just going to be such an amazing, amazing experience to be able to practice against the best teams in the world and also show them how that we can also play a good League of Legends. Absolutely show today. Super, coming over to you, your first impressions in your first fight for going to these internationals. Oh, I, could, I couldn't hear him. I don't know why. Oh, he couldn't hear, he said, guys. Do you have something to say to him? Or... <laughs> they were saying, you're, like, you're the best. That's fair enough. However, they said you're the best. I think X thought you were the best, Alyoya, as you get Kia player of the game. Lots of signs over there for you guys. Super, I'm going to come for last minute to you. Are you anticipating getting into that development status for potential internationals at the end of the split? I mean, my objective is to try to, try to be the best this year. I think I can do it. Obviously, I respect a lot my, my rivals, no? my Guma UC Viper, but in the moment I get to play into them, I will, I will make it. Well, here's to see you playing against Kuma Yushi and Viper. For now, congratulations on making playoffs, guys. Thank that you. was an amazing victory. We're going to throw it over to Castus for our next game of the day. What do we get? My man's three steps ahead. He's like, yeah. all right, we, we got in the playoffs. Therefore, we've already made MSI. I respect yeah. that. <laughs> I you do know? also love the shock at Oyo as he points the screen and goes, your damage. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I mean, it was impressive. Yeah, it was. Can't say that. I just wish we could all have that level of confidence. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. 
you get you qualify to high school, you're like, I'm a doctor already. Yeah. We win clash, I'm going to worlds. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like I like that. I like that level of confidence. When you could back it up like you did in the yeah. previous game. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. I will say one or two people in his pool of potential rivals, domestically at least, might have something to say about him considering himself the best. And oh wow, conveniently, two of them are in this game. That is Hans Hama and Carly, two players we're naturally gonna be focusing on. As it appears the coach is focused on them, because that's a Senna ban, a Varus ban, and a Draven ban. Fun fact, a lot of us think of Draven as he's represented in solo queue. He's aggressive, snowbally, piloted frequently by people like T1. Very large, very, very bulky people, I think it's safe to say. <laughs> uh, G2 have been playing him like a scaling pick. You just sit there, stack up a million stacks, come at me. Eventually, I'm going to kill somewhere. you. Yeah. Eventually, I will alt and kill you. So you come bot or you die eventually. Instead, however, with the Draven Band away, Kalista the first pick priority, allowing Team Vitality to secure incredibly high priority, Oriana. Curious if they take the Zin Zhao here as well. I'm actually going to go with the Rel, okay? I was like, you can take a really strong mid jungle here if you want to, and then you always leave the opportunity to, hey, look, maybe the Rel goes on the opposite side, but maybe they want to secure the Rel to ensure that you end up with a, uh, the chance to counter a Nautilus that is probably going to try and come through here for Mickey X. So, um, But I wouldn't be surprised to see the Zin Zhao taken or just not giving that opportunity across because Ori Zin Zhao, super strong. you got the Rel that wants to go bot into that Nautilus if it comes One, through. Two, but already, I think a lot of attention going to be going down to the spot lane with the Kalista locked in. Definitely. Ari now coming in as well. Not into something like the Talia, instead into something like the Orianna. So, might suffer a bit more early on just in terms of what Orianna can do in those early trades. Clockwork wind up Orianna passive, just incredibly good. But as we get later into the game, potentially more room for Orianna to play make as there's not that obnoxious unraveled earth to deal with. So there's the Viego. So Ari Viego going to be the call. So again, G2 Esports started to bring this out more and more where it is the, hey, we're going to play for the strong mid jungle. But they did get denied by Fnatic in their game by taking the Poppy on the opposite side and then going, hey, you're not going to be able to play through this very, very strong lane. But curious to see if they want to try and continue this stall here with Vitality. But no, actually going to go towards the J. So still yeah. keeping the hover of the rel open, or sorry, the flexibility of the rel open. Uh, and I think here you can then ban away things like the Nautilus, that kind of stuff, and just make things impossible for, uh, honestly, Kalista to get rolling in that bot lane. Unless you are just willing to go, hey, we're going to uh, push the rail in the bot lane regardless, and we're going to ban away top laners. And remember that G2 have been playing some pretty shaky early games. Some of that has been amplified by the fact that they've been picking Smolder, a champion who's, regardless of the bot lane matchup, not always going to do a lot early on. But the fact that they've gone for Kalista here means we'll see a relative change in pace early on. Much more about Hansama and Mickey X almost guaranteed. I think your mid lane point is a good one. I, I, you know, without the Talia here, without the immediate reliable lockdown of something like a Poppy just standing on top of that Ari stopping her from getting away, I think there is going to be a lot of room for a guy like Caps to take but over even, the game. Even like a Kalista as well. Like, there's so many dashes that are on the opposite side that you just get to run amok there. So You I think, are a Poppy merchant, I will say, though. You I do, think she's really yeah, underrated. I think she's really good. It's she has insane. Like, she yeah. has two of the best abilities in the game, and neither of them are the one that knocks someone into the wall yeah. and stuns them. It's the one that stops you from jumping and the one that can knock three people out of a team fight. Oh, I thought it was going to be the hammer on the ground. <laughs> oh, you like it. that? Just a little bit of wave clear? That does it for you? Fired up for that? <laughs> Maybe even throwing the buckler? You yeah, know, the bu just, I yeah. the buckler. Yeah, the buckler's nice. Those ranged grass pox feel good. Okay. So there actually is the Nautilus ban. Uh, so I wasn't sure if you wanted to just go, hey, we're going to put the rel into the bot lane, assuming you're going to go for Nautilus here for Mickey X, but the Braum take ban on the opposite side. So I'm curious what they are actually maybe thinking of, because I'd be happy to put rel bot here yeah. as a response to most of the, the engaged supports that you'd want to go for. Unless they think an Alistair may be here for Mickey. Okay. Okay. Eh. Now, I like one of those a lot more than the other. And it's not the cute dragon. It's the ugly void monster, but that'll do. That's a Vestian. It's like a half bird person. So that's a more interesting one. It does make a lot of the pick opportunities on the side of G2 Esports a little bit more difficult. The Flash Charms of the world, the Flash Viego stuns. Now Karzi has more defensive tools for himself. It maybe indicates that Vitality are not going to be focusing on the bottom side of the map, just giving him those tools to keep himself standing. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. Maybe we're just going to look at like Renata here for Mickey on this bottom oh, that's side. Zach. Um, and just accept that, hey, look, a lot of this is going to be a case of throwing it at long range as Vitality go for the engage after getting what seems like a little bit of poke down. Um, but yeah, the Zach for BB in the top side, not going to go towards the wreck side. <laughs> so their usual blind pick that we started to see creep up, but oh, actually going to go for the engage. So I, I thought they'd go for the Renata and just try and play for that instead, but yeah, curious here. I think you can still put Rel in the bot lane then if you want to and open up Daglas to go for a different kind of pick here. 
What is the option? The sheer amount of long range engage with the Zac, with the potential for the Ari dash or charm flash kind of opportunities means picks are going to be easy for G2 Esports once they get to level six under their belt. Some of these lane phases might be difficult to navigate. Again, I haven't been the biggest fan of Leona. Alistair, a pretty conventional option, can obviously knock her up on the Zenith Blade in, but instead the Rakan, the lovers duo. Uh, you know, and historically, this has always been considered a pretty big skill matchup. Yeah. Rakan can outplay, but Leona certainly has an easier time getting value in the lane. Yeah, I think it's definitely one where Leona is very strong in the lane. The whole idea is with the Zenith Blade, you can match wherever the Rakan decides to go. So as he W's in, he's in a plate, he can't return to the uh, AD carry because you're just able to lock him up in place, um, or you just follow along. So I think that's where you're going to be looking to see G2 Esports put a lot of pressure down on that bot side in the early stages. But as you get into more the open wide game, Rakan gets so much value from the ultimate that he has an opportunity to, I say outscale, but you know, it's all relative on well, how well you play. Yeah. So, And I feel like when you're in your final games of the split and you want to just play, you know, you're playing for seeding, you're playing to get as tie up as you can. You want something that's going to feel comfortable. And EU jungle support duos, I feel like if you're going to play anything to make your life simple, Rakan Rel is the option. It's so easy to always go in at the top side uh, at the same time. Either of you can play off the other ones. Engage, Rakan has so much mobility. We saw, I think a big reason the GX have done as well as they have is the combination of Ignar and Peach together. I expect to see the same from Daglas and Hillisang. But that is the task at hand. Obviously, Rakan can also fall behind. Things can fall apart, and G2 are an aggressive bot lane. We're going to try to push those leads. The other side of the map, though, I am nervous for Broken Blade of Zac into Jace. Especially with the changes to the to the JC, where yeah. you just you root and then knock back. Like, oftentimes, you can try. I think you have enough time to interrupt the slingshot. I'll have to double check on that. So I think you might still get knocked up, then do it. It's a bit of a weird interaction. But uh, we'll see how it goes through. But either way, G2 launch themselves into a game where they can potentially look to steal away that top spot. And Vitality looking to try and put themselves ever further up the standings with a win over the big bad. And look, this game is incredibly important for the top of our table. If G2 win, they're in sole control of first place based on scoreline, and our top four will be G2, Team Heretics, Fnatic, and Vitality. That will push Fnatic out of top two. Top two crucial because you get to pick your opponent. Uh, you get the luxury of picking the people at the bottom of the table, which is always fantastic to have. But the same is true for G2 if Vitality win. That would mean tied score lines. Because of our tiebreaker rules, it would be Fnatic finishing first, Vitality second, G2 third, Team Heretics fourth. So basically, G2 will go from fighting for first place to out of top two if they lose here against Vitality. Fnatic, of course, big Vitality fans right now would love to be sitting at top two. Um, and, you know, obviously if G2 win, they're in. And they take Team Heretics with them. So shout out to the 2019 G2 homies over there. And with this setup that G2 has, it feels very much like they're going back to what has been their bread and butter and functioned well for them, right? Aggressive bot lane, engage for Mickey, strong mid jungle and BB on something that's a little bit funky, but can like <laughs> do well if he wants to leave side lane and actually like come down to interact with the bot lane. It's funny that you say that way, but you're right. Like I, I think the more I think about this team, it's like, okay, give Hans Han and Mickey something. Incredibly strong jungle mid duo. I mean, and with the Rek size and the Zacks of the world, more and more our top laners are becoming um, just like weird pick enthusiasts. But that's the thing. Like BB's most played is Rek side. <laughs> he's, play he's played it twice. Everything else that's going like Volley Bear, Jay's, Greg is. Yeah, to be fair, he's played every yeah. other pick once. So it's not yeah. it's not not that hard. He just to repeat a pick to be able to play it twice. But as expected early on, Jay's going to do well in this matchup. Maybe with a few more levels under his belt and some armor, Broken Blade will be a bit more comfortable, but you can see Yike clearing away from topside. Meaning Broken Blade's going to be pretty miserable, and Photon's very likely to grab uh, a plate here if no one supports. Yeah, I think the uh, the big thing here is for Daglas just to try and get some early vision, which I think he's about to go for now. Actually, just a transitional gank, it looks like, but... Daglas, Q flash, caps. Not sure if it was predict... I would have to slow it down to figure out if it was a prediction or if it was just reaction, but either way, well played. Sees that that's really the only angle that the gank can work. Flashes back, but of course now, 
Uh, something that can be capitalized on. Daglas' summoner spell is significantly less important than Caps's. But it also means that Vidio can't be capitalized on. One of the things we see often with the Vigo and Anari is flash, charm, your Orianna, set up them for Yogg to come in, or at least you burn a flash onto Vidio, and then you just rinse and repeat, right? But getting that early flash out of Caps makes this laning phase significantly safer for Vidio. And realistically, that's all you want here for Vitality. If mid lane's safe, Photon should be able to push, and then you can actually just put some pressure down onto Karzi and Hillisang and make sure they're going to be safe here. G2, taking control of bot lane though. Again, with the Callista lane, you kind of expect that early on. Broken Blade doing okay, but Photon very likely to pop the passive here. Does get it, unstable matter. We'll come back to life. I don't think Photon can push for anything else there, but already getting that down means if there is ever pressure or attention topside from Daglas, the dive is so much simpler to execute. Photon just gotta take the reset though. Spend the extra little bit of gold that he's picked up and try and make his way back towards topside. Daglas, spotting Yike, a huge amount of this is again, Daglas just trying to make sure that Yike can't interact with mid or bot lane. Like, those are the two lanes that G2 want to try and focus on. Enith Blade. Now the follow-up CC. Karzi can pull back on the Feathers, but doesn't quite have three on the lineup. That's the Ignite down for Hillisang. Very positive health trade for the side of Vitality, but a sum in favor of G2. Yeah, I think a lot of that was just trying to ensure that Mickey gets pushed down low. He still has another pop, which he's going to pop now, but Hillisang trying to push him back, because when Leona goes in, you have already seen, like, she has to go for it. So, want to try to cover his caps? Caps. Also need just to burn a pot. <laughs> yeah. I think it's safe to say, or recall. Yeah. It looks like recall is going to be the option instead. members of G2 kind of around the map at the moment. Mm. Uh-oh. G2 early game, question mark. Root now landing, Hansama locked up, but Yike there just in time, and now it's Hillisang who's been caught out. He tries to dash, he tries to flash onto safety, but the timing just not quite there as Yike takes Rakan to dance around and look cool, which is respectable, but big advantage to the G2 bottom lane. A nice timing from Yike as well, with the way that everything had gone. They assumed that he would be moving back into topside to try and take his camps in the top end of the map that were respawning, but Yike goes reset, immediately moves into that bottom side and catches Karzi and Hillisang out after they'd just taken that nice trade. So, really good decision making from Yike specifically to get down to that bot side. Now, Daglas, though, knowing, hey, look, you're going to have to reset again, Yike, to come up top side. I've got some time to do these Void Grubs, but Yike may even forego more of his camps, may just look immediately top side. I was saying level 3 Rome. Setup here is a bit risky because Daglas isn't too far off. They really need to be able to burst Photon down. He already queued forward, though. That might just be the death sentence. The flash out to safety. Still the Spectral Maw connects from Yike, but he's only level 4. Jace just trying to dance on him with the Hyper. Daglas now coming in. Yike has to be very careful. Photon, if he swans back to Hammer Stance, that's going to be one dead. Viego, there's the first. Broken Blade's got nowhere to go. No passive. Over aggressive from G2, and Photon's more than happy to oblige them with a quick death. Well, there's going to be more of this. Pull back the fall. <laughs> it's just a solo. That is a generous assist, League of Legends. And Karzy got out. He got the cleanse. He flashed. He managed to escape away from Mickey. I thought he was as good as dead. So three quick kills for Vitality. Top and mid have just gone massively in favor of them. Certainly have. And I think the only frustrating thing of your Vitality is that two of those kills are on to Daglas, but it'll help him at least keep up in terms of early gold, maybe get even further ahead. Photon, though, sitting pretty. Broken Blade wildly far behind. Needs that passive back. Luckily held on to Flash to make plays. But you can see here they just don't respect. Big flash from Photon to get out from underneath BBZ. And then Daglas, perfect timing here. And Photon, like, those sidesteps. Really well played there. Blue Spade shoes out in full force. This Vitality have to get the 2v2. And then in the mid lane, as you say, the... Uh, oh, that's a frustrating yike. But I think this was a questionable call because they essentially they got the flash, they hit the stun, but they had burned all their cooldowns. And in the extended trade, Broken Blade's out of spells. I don't even know if you get out of that with more than one for one. Hansama now forced to flash cleanse. Mickey trying to back away, but we talked about this with Leona. Footwork is okay, but he's still just eating autos for free. Yike now on the way in. Another Spectral Maw to try to find the stun, but Hillisang there to body block as Daglas steps out with the crash down. Mickey retreating to try to get back under his tower, but the flash to follow up is there from Hillisang. Might want to keep the play going on to Yike. Yike retreating. Going back to the Tier 2, Hansama left on his lonesome under the Tier 1, but the wave not in the favor of Vitality. They won't be able to dive. I was going to say, Daglas, I think that's one you want to go in on. So, manages to get the flash to get the kill, but Caps now starting to roam up towards his topside, Photon. The wave should be sitting just underneath his tower. Actually, he's just backed entirely away, so... Gonna keep himself safe. Safe and Caps finds nothing. Dragon now for Vitality. That's three grubs, four kills, a dragon. Vitality, this is a phenomenal early game from them. And I gotta say, Daglas has been everywhere that he's needed to be. We'll get a pause to talk more about Daglas. We've had a lot of questions. A lot of people, even this week on the podcast, were like, hey, is it time to talk about Daglas? It wasn't then. It's not 100% time now, but yet another good game under his belt, at least a good early game. Perfect 
positioning to be there on the top side. Nice follow-up play. Yes, maybe he could have crashed down in instead of out. That would have been nice. But thus far, he's ensured that the only losing point on the map for Vitality, which was bot lane, uh, is now no longer a problem. That's a lead for Zaya. Yeah, I think there's been a, multiple different activities essentially that have happened between the junglers, right? I think Yike is trying to play off these really minuscule timings that he's found to try and punish IH, uh, Vitality. So you're looking bot side, right? He doesn't go to top lane like you expect, or his top side jungle, he immediately goes bot, gets the kill there. He then tries to forego his caps again, and then catch the timing onto Photon, but just doesn't quite get the kill, and there's just not quite enough CC to set up a BB to finish that off before Daglas can get up to top side. So I think it's been, yes, Daglas being in positions where he's responded well, versus where I think it's more Daglas being proactive to find a lot of these plays. Yeah. And definitely has just been shadowing laners who have been outplaying, right? Vichu has actually got a solo kill mid lane. Uh, Photon had it. Anyone could have been there top lane for Photon. So Daglas in the right spot. But so is Solo Lance. They probably deserve the majority of the credit. I think it's a good point. Oh, Sang. Stepping in, just trying to threaten Cats. And they've just limited so much of the jungle mid duo. We talked about G2 kind of going back to what is comfortable for them. Trying to set up for more of these early games. Excellent sidestep from VTO. Hex flash forward. Unstoppable is Yike, though. Fantastic use of the Heartbreaker, but he's the one leaving Heartbroken. His caps is now oh, in trouble. Mother. There's the Fed, Jace! Photon, he can do it on Rubble, he can do it on Jace. Guy, it feels good to have a Korean top laner in the LEC, bro. That is true. Feels good for Douglas as well to have four kills, but I really think okay. he would like to have that spread right, out a little back. bit more, okay? I take it back. We're not praising Douglas anymore. This is highly suspect. You can't play Rel and also take the kills. <laughs> Still though, I think it's the fact that they're shutting down some of these plays, right? 1k gold lead mid, no, or sorry, jungle, 900 in the mid lane, but Yike tries to interrupt the shockwave with his own ult, but he's still in a horrible spot. And then here, Caps, he's just out of mana. No charges left. No hope to try and get out. There's no one else on the, on the map. Well. Did they miss? I mean, they must have miscalculated base timings or something or thought that they had a window that just wasn't there, but that was sloppy. I mean, most of their team is in base. Broken Blade just got back to top lane. It is almost impossible for you to have man advantage in that circumstance. I think it's more panic, to be honest, from G2, where it's trying to salvage the plays as you overextend. And here we go, Mickey goes in. But Karzy, he's fine. Karzy's having a fine time. Hansama boots two, is still going to get knocked up. Daglas can now follow. More CC, and there's nowhere for the Kalista to go. Vitality are obliterating G2 Esports. Fnatic are sitting living pretty, knowing they're essentially guaranteed at this point. Top two, the Ignite ticking, and again, the Leona goes in well, but she does not go out. Karzy on a killing spree. And the Fnatic fans in the corner are getting louder and louder as a result. They are very happy with the way that this one is going. Vitality, this has been great. And that time, Daglas, perfect setup, gives the, the third kill over to Karzy. Another Turpate going to go across as well. And what's the response here? Diego was just clearing out his jungle on the bot side. He's not going to be able to try and put any threat in towards the mid lane. And then the Vitality kind of just gets to do it all without anything really happening from response from G2. And this is on the way to being the worst individual week we've seen from G2 all year. I mean, their True. game against Rogue, uh, you know, Marcoon everywhere, really shutting down that smolder, not giving it the chance to scale, even if that game did get certainly messy at a certain uh, at a couple points. But now the commitment onto VTO. G2 trying to push it back. The pullback on the caps under tower is clutch. VTO still ticking the flash, the full command from Yak. They desperately need this kill. And Viego will secure it. G2 biting back. Just about able to get the kill. Good hold on the solar flare from Mickey to make sure that he'd be able to get that lock up long enough for Yike to come through. And it was just a nice timing. As you say, Vitality not in a position on the map. They'd all gone for those resets. So able to do it. Broken Blade, that might have been a bit step too far. Yes, but Mickey is here. Thundering blow, the knockback there. Mickey can follow up, but Yike a little bit too far away for them to be able to push any further. We'll just be the wave crashed on top side, but here comes Karzy and Hilly caps in the brush. If he gets spotted, this is going to be bad. He's got no man. I think got no room to make a play, and he's already forced to reset. Or, sorry, cancel his reset timer. Excuse me. We'll give six grubs to Vitality, though, because you can see Photon, he's going to be able to reset. TP back up into the top side. You're trying to interrupt Hilly. Nice interrupt <laughs> onto Caps. Stop? <laughs> and again, you're just buying time because G2 stayed out of the map. Oh, he's not the done. Way. Won't be able to get it. There's not enough range on the the gleaming yeah. quill. Yep. But there you go, pushing top side with the TP back from Photon. They pushed in mid. That's six grubs now for Vitality and a minute until Dragon. But might have taken a little bit of time. G2, I don't think they want to try and contest, but they are in the area. Well, Cap's already TP'd to the bot lane. VTO still has his TP, so this is not really the play that G2 are looking for unless 
Vitality over commit. Bates call now forced out. Mickey pulled back to safety by Han Sama, but the quickness comes in from Hillisang. Charm again onto this Leona. That was way too over aggressive I from Hilly. I feel like they should have finished the last grub, personally. I agree. And I think they also shouldn't have committed Hilly there, because realistically. Oh, hang on, cops. Shockwave. DTO trying to get the Ari out before the next play. Might just be trying to get for the kill. Command attack. Foxfire just to get the extra movement speed and step back. But as I was about to say, Vitality had already got the lead. No Hansama ultimate for Mickey when the next dragon was about to spawn was like fantastic. Mickey has only one way he can go in and he's not coming back out. But you can turn a focus on him. Karzi should be able to finish him off. And now Haley again taking a step too far forward. We'll dash it to video, but I think this is where Vitality had their win and they can play for a minute's time. But instead, they're trying to capitalize too heavily, too quickly. And it's actually giving opportunities for G2 to kind of take a breather, reset, and come back on an even footing for the next fight. Yeah. You were pretty close to getting everything uh, you wanted in that exchange, where you basically get Caps' TP for free because Hillisang cancels that recall so many times. If it had completed, he could have just walked bot, and he would have had that TP available. You could have gotten all six grubs. Five is, don't get me wrong, it's plenty. It's not like you need the sixth, but as well as getting the Fates call, you feel like that just sets you up for the next fight. You, t you talked about it. And this dragon, his cooldowns are still going to be gone, but now Hillisang hopefully will have the quickness in time if Vitality have the setup. Caps first on the wave in bot lane, and Hillisang has to be careful about stepping too far forward. Damage now on the Photon. Big wave there. Mickey X and Broken Blade should have enough damage to finish off the Jace, but Photon still going in. The Eclipse not enough. The Ignite ticking. The Jace will fall. Broken Blade getting a bit of vengeance on the top side with support from Mickey X. And this is just the timings that are being punished here by G2. Vitality tried to do too much. G2 get back out of the map. Shockwave once more. Apps finally forced to dash out to safety. Taking away the Spirit Rush. Takes away so much of G2's playmaking. Vitality, three members committed into the mid lane, five drop buff. They're gonna shred through this tower so quickly. Yike off to the side, but with Daglas and Hillisang here to cover with Karzi having cleanse and ulti available, there is no getting onto this Zaya. And they can lean into bot side as well. Caps is too low, has no TP, so the immediate force onto bot lane means that they should be able to maybe with the next wave get the tower, but actually I was gonna say the wave was cleared out by Caps just as before he reset, so it will just be Dragon instead. But at least Vitality's starting to get a little bit more control again on the map. Vitality have to be feeling good. They've gotten every objective in the game. First tower belongs to them. Five grubs, two dragons. Yes, a 2k gold lead. Not insurmountable, certainly. The good news for G2 is they finally have an avenue to get something back for themselves. And the Herald might allow them to break open mid lane tower. But the game for Caps especially is so much more difficult with mid lane tier one down. Look how far back he has to play. It could just be V2 on the wave. It could be three people. He's not sure. So has to give the benefit of the doubt to the side of Vitality. It also becomes very difficult to use this Rift Herald now as G2, because how do you try and force a wave state where you can actually get the advantage on mid-wave? Because essentially what you're going to see is Karzi and Healy force mid-wave, shove it into the tier two. Healy leaves, groups with Daglas, they get top tier uh, one with Photon, right? You yeah. establish a bunch of vision on top side, no real wave state for G2 to take a terror. So unless they completely abandon the top side of the map and lean in with caps on this bot side to use the Rift Herald there, maybe they can get a terror, but one bot lane terror going down in trade for a top lane terror and use of Rift Herald is still a big win for Vitality. So G2, I think this is why they're trying to set top side here. Look to get the pick as Vitality are starting to move up towards Photon top side. If they can punish Vitality when they skip a step, this Herald can be incredibly impactful, but you're right. If we enter just a normal game state as it is right now, so heavily Vitality favored, it's it's like a consolation prize. It's like half a turret's health bar. It's not going to do anything. G2, you, again, you can see with his mid lane tier one down, it's so hard for them to step far forward. And Kalista's wave clear against Azaya right now is just so much slower. Yeah, it's so hard to try and contest this. And even if you try and push on towards Karzi, he just ults and walks away, right? So I think that's why you're seeing Karzi pretty much free to go in and push wave solo. Um, and it, all that you're trying to do here is Karzi is shove this wave hyper aggressively and fully establish vision on this top side. If you know that there is nobody on G2 that is contesting this top lane push, it becomes significantly easier for Photon to get that tier one by himself. BB can't really stick around. And that's why spotting out Yike and stuff here is actually pretty key, but I'm surprised to see them backing off. I thought they'd continue the pressure here because you've only got like a minute, minute 30 that you can actually play off these wave states. So three more waves before you've got to go and reset for a dragon coming up. Damn. This game is so hard now for G2 to do anything. 
I mean, credit to Vito as well. He's just been getting aggressive on caps consistently, making sure he never can leave lane, even if he does manage to get pushed with more than like 40% HP. Which means any piece of CC connecting certainly would finish the job. As Hillisang looking to get this started off. Quickness goes in. Zenith Blade to try to interrupt, but Photon there. Daglas coming in behind. Flash keeps Mickey safe for now. Harrowed Path shows that Yike is on the way in Vitality. Don't want to overcommit. Caps has TP and he's missing off the waves. So they want to make sure that they're backing up and not giving that across as Video goes to accept the wave on bot side. So they're going to trade slow for the moment, but again, it's just rinse and repeat for Vitality, right? You just shove in wave now. You've already got the vision on the top side. You know that Mickey has to reset. Cool. Now slip into the top side once more and do the exact same thing. Photon going to start hard shoving the wave because you can already see they're leaning towards that top side as Vitality, but not actually going to go for it again. I think you're missing opportunities here where you could actually try and contest onto the top side, but they're looking for Caps instead. Trying to catch Caps, but Caps spots them. Smart uses the Scryer Bloom behind him, anticipating a potential play here. And this is the tricky part of playing against G2. Now, the good news is there's not a Smolder. They don't have inevitable scaling on their side. But in order to really press them in the mid game, you have to be so diligent around your waves. Otherwise, you're falling back to, I think, what every team falls back to, which is they will eventually have to fight us at the fourth dragon, Rob. But I don't, you don't need to go that far into the game. You shouldn't have to wait for that angle. You are so far ahead, you should be able to end it before then, or at least get an even bigger advantage. But if you can't find the good waves to play around, if you let G2 catch waves everywhere on the map, push you out, uh, it's so hard to navigate the mid game. And this is where you get to see the G2 Classic to try and find those picks. Reset in a minute 10 before Dragon. You can see just got it for hands. You get it for caps here as well. And they're going to try and come back out of the map, push out waves, and immediately try and find picks on the map before you get established as Vitality. Because most teams will reset now, which is what you're seeing for video with the 50 second timer. But Hilly might be able to get into the top Broken side. Blade uses Let's Bounce to get out to safety. Picks up a little blob and gains 500 HP, which. Definitely makes this one a little bit tougher. Vitality can try to play off the next wave to break the tower, but with Vyke already moving to the top side, it gets a little bit more difficult. So there's two things that G2 can do here. They could abandon top entirely here, but it looks like they're not going to, and try and set up for a dragon play. Or they can try and hold on to the top tier one, but I think this might actually be a little bit of a mistake. I think you can test mid wave, set up vision, and look for picks on Vitality as they start to come in towards dragon, but not feeling comfortable enough to try and go for it. They really want to hold on to the tier one. It's just tough because Mickey's in position to punish Hellasang for stepping far that, that far forward to lay down that vision. But they don't have the upfront damage to just immediately kill a Rakan, especially one with Locket, with Flash, you know, Guardian if he's able to get back to the rest of his team. And so that opportunity doesn't really present itself. They're, they're not in a position where they can just instantly burst someone down without caps in the area. Harold will finally get used. Better than expected, essentially allows G2 to cheat tempo. And they're already there to cover a potential dragon play, so not bad. Really getting the gold a little bit closer, not giving up too much. Yeah, Vitality had recessed. Daglas and Karzy gone back to base, so G2 actually finding that window to get that Herald usage, and Hilly, oh. that was close. But now okay. G2 get to try and set up for those picks. That was very close to being exactly what you needed from G2. TP from Broken Blade into bottom lane. Wants to push that wave out and force somebody to respond. Control of the try belongs to G2. Mickey fishing for VTO, that would have been bold. I think that Zenith Blade might have been the death of him, but Broken Blade in the area means there could have been some follow-up. G2 missed their chance, though. Now it's Vitality, you have mid control. They're going to be able to push in. You see Hansama drifting across to try and accept that wave of the Tier 2, so you missed your chance of Caps! Nice sidestep from Caps. Bit of an overcalculation there from Hillisang as well, as Yike lays down the Harrowed Path, but Vitality remain unconcerned. Faith in their ability not to give the 50-50. Charm connecting a bit of poke on the Vitality, but the Dragon is theirs. You can see Hillisang wants to make a play. This man is not happy with a single objective, and I think it's going to cost him his life. Beautiful Zenith Blade comes in, and actually it's going to cost Daglas as G2 fish for the angle and find the kill. You already got the dragon, you greedy goose. Why are you going back for more? And it's VTO who's going to pay the price. Hillisang's hubris. Leveraged beautifully by G2. And it would have been so easy for Vitality to back away, go mid, collect the wave, shove into the tier two, and force G2 out of this bottom side. But because they don't want to, they want to find more. G2 collapse. You'd already see Karzi was moving back up towards mid lane, so G2 find that window of opportunity to get the pick. And now Video, completely isolated, sets up another kill for G2. Yep, and that's the scratch the back of your head moment where you realize, hey, enemy jungler has a lot more CC than he's supposed to. Ah, I see he is my rel right now. Okay. Bit of a tricky one. 
Again, G2 not ahead by any means, but that play is big for getting the gold a little bit closer. Two items now for Cap. Still only about one and a half for Han Samu. We'll see when he recalls if he can complete something. And Vitality, aware of their fumbles, but it's not going to make Hillisang any less confident. Charm not connecting from Caps. Vitality with the vision control over Baron. Man, I, what, Rob? He can't help himself. <laughs> I love Hillisang oh, so much, but some. Oh, he can't and help and it. And he no, stole it. Stop it. No. He loves fighting. It's in his bones. It's like Conor McGregor in trash talk. He just has to do it. Now Hillisang goes. He finds the two man. The immediate follow up isn't there. Caps on touch on the backside, but Vitality already got the pick. Good play. Now the tier one has fallen on the top side. Vitality again. They've got the vision control. Over the oh. Baron, but they want more picks. Yike in trouble now. CC there. Pull back there. Yike trying to get a safety. Heartbreaker not enough. And Hillisang, the two man knockup. He wants more. And he just keeps going. This time it works out for them at tier two tower. In the sights of Vitality. Turning back Baron. to the Baron now. A bit of a moment of hesitation there. Are they confident enough to just force this? It's 30 seconds on Yike. They absolutely should be. Nikki's coming into the base, but BB has to reset. No TP for him. Caps doesn't have it either, and he's gone. So this is going to be Vitality. The picks and the tower into the Baron. They finally managed to get that play to work. Incredible stuff. And I'll never get tired of it. I'll just say it again. Hillisang, he goes in. He knows what he's about. He's not going to get flustered by a single play. You got to respect the confidence. 60% of the time, it works all of the time. Every it's time, baby. Go in, and this is perfect, right? Because Hibby actually has a great angle here. Gets Yike and Caps on the backside after Daglas with a great engage. I thought the jig might have been up as video got spotted as they tried to set up for that depth rush, but it doesn't matter. Vitality able to make it work, and you can just see how happy the coaching staff is behind them. I can't... The gestures were happy. The face wasn't happy there <laughs> from Pat. We'll, we'll ask him later if that was a happy... He's been hurt before, okay? He's been, I, yeah. Yeah, a lot of throws this particular season. But now Broken Blade going for the engage. VTO fishing for a side step. Flash out from Karzi giving that respect. Pull back onto Broken Blade. Passive going down. Broken Blade should just die here. The question is Vitality, do they want to keep this fight going or be happy with the single pick? G2 looking for the angle, trying to take one Baron buff away, maybe two, and just delay the push here. But now that BB's down, it's going to make it that much harder to defend. Watch Caps. Caps is off in the flank. They haven't spotted him just yet. And they're trying to send Photon down to bot side. He'll still be good four before. And Hilly is even trying to find the flank his own. He has ultimate. He's stepping back into the rest of his team. Hansama off to the side, but Hillisang wants to keep it. Hansama still untouched. Caps untouched, but the TP now coming in. Hillisang strong. Yike trying to back away. Pullback is there. Photon doing good damage to Jace. Just tearing through G2. But now the turn. They're trying to bring it back. Caps one more dash to finish off. Photon he gets one back. Double kill for the Jace. Daglas wants to finish off the Ari, but he knows he doesn't have enough in the tank. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, the push already coming through. Karzi still alive. It's a chaotic fight, but it is still the push in favor of Vitality. Daglas is keeping Caps engaged, and it means that at least Karzi and Hilly can get the wave to get the tower. Video shifts the bot side to collect that as well. So even though the fight looked a little little bit funky, it's still only Photon going down for Hans and Mickey, and you're getting so much more for Vitality. Nice attempt from G2, but Vitality's responded well. Certainly have. Thunderdome being prepared as well. 30 seconds until the Cloud Drake, it'll be Soul to the side of Vitality. When you see a on the opposite side, that is a concerning Soul to give away. And you can see here, so basically Caps is trying to come into the top side. They're trying to get on into video, but the problem is, you just don't really have the control there that you really need to go. Karzi is totally fine to stand behind his front line and go for this. And with Photon TPing in, the numbers advantage starts to come through, where they can actually set up properly for it. The kill on top side, they push in on bot. We're back to Dragon, though, and people are caught. Break back. Crab has been now picked up. BTO. It's the charm follow-up there. They don't quite have the angle. Let's bounce coming from Brokeway, but he's so damn squishy. I come to the side, cannot do anything. Feathers have flown. Karzi could be vulnerable, but they're just too far ahead in the fight. Vitality again. Playing it so cleanly. BTO stops the pick from coming through. The setup onto the Drake is theirs. Hillisang moments away from the ultimate now coming back. Yike burning, ticking, wants desperately to get the reset, but he can't do it! Caps now, three stacks left on the dash, but he's only gonna be able to run back to base. The Q flash, the shattering strike from Daglas. Shattering hopes of G2 to be in the top two, pushing them down. Fnatic fans elated. Fnatic will be in sole possession of first place. After this win from Vitality, one last desperate stand. G2, can they bring it back? The answer is hell no. VTO eyes on the Nexus. He's not interested in playing for kills. He turns his attention away, but his confidence in the final moments from Vitality. 
Lock in top two. They lock Fnatic in alongside them, pushing down G2 and Team Heretic. And what an incredible performance to do with. Daglas getting control of that bot side, making sure in good shape. Photon has been an incredibly strong performer for Vitality so consistently on the chase, showing up again. And with that, Fnatic and Vitality are our top two, with G2 shifting right the way down to third. And they were better. Yeah. They got the plays in completely. Mid. They got the plays on top side. Balling, yeah, a little bit iffy, kind of as expected, given the power that G2 brought in draft. But they still managed to bring it back. They built a lead, took over. Your key player of the game at we see on X Photon, Daglas, Hillisang, are your options. All very good options. I'm not going to try to sway you anyway. But what I will say, as we see the final bow here, is Vitality know they've done good in the regular season. Yeah, so we're going to have Hillisang on the desk, Rob. Just Ooh. confirmed it. And now we can head to a quick break. Wow, this is amazing. Yeah, I mean, I had a break, so. Uh, do you want to try? I'll be right back. Do I want to try? <laughs> Me? Maybe. What am I going to do? Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Even the biggest champ needs a break. Wow, very incredible, magnifique. What? No, 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 no. What are you doing? This is better.
be very careful. Photon, if he swaps back to Hammer Stance, that's gonna be one dead. Viego, there's the first. Broken Blade's got nowhere to go, no passive. But it's gonna be more Pull back, the follow-up, <laughs> it's just a solo. That is a generous assist, League of Legends. Yike, burning, ticking, wants desperately to get the reset, but he can't do it. Caps down, three stacks left on the dash, but he's only gonna be able to run back to base. The Q flash, the shattering strike from Daglas. Shattering hopes of G2 to be in the top two, pushing them down. Fanatic fans elated. Welcome back to the LEC. Hello, everyone. We are joined with Daglas from Vitality. Congratulations on your win against G2. Something we touched upon today was that the LEC, anything can happen. So you guys won against G2. How does that feel? I mean, it feels great to will win last game of the regular split. I think we are in in form that we are preparing for playoffs and we wanna show in our last game that we are ready for playoffs. Yeah, I completely agree. I think you guys have been scaling up, especially since last split to now. It's been insane amount of improvement. I've been really impressed with the way the teams uh, like come together at the last point. It's been really good. Yeah, particularly when we're looking at this game, uh, we're looking at G2, a team that necessarily isn't the greatest when it comes to that early game. And the composition that you picked, the play style that you went for, it felt like that was something that you were looking to survive to then be able to scale into that later game. Well, I think uh, our preparation against G2 was really good. I think our coach Carter and Pat did a really good job before. And we had a really good plan yeah. for the like first for the early game. Mm -hmm. And I think it just today I think G2 made some mistakes that we punished. Mm. So that's what put us yeah. in so the lead. Sorry to cut you off. Something I've noticed you guys do on Vitality, right? Whenever your backs are against the wall, it feels like you will just draft five comfort lanes. You have Photon on his Jace. You have Hilly on his Rakan. I think he has something like a 60% win rate. It's most played champion by far. Your Rel, of course, is synonymous with Rel by now. Um, is this something you come into the day with, you know, we're going to concede lane prior, we're going to concede, you know, uh, winning lane matchups to make sure we have full comfort and that's going to bring us over the finish line. Is that something that actively is a discussion? I think that is definitely one thing that yeah. we are looking forward to. For today, our plan was uh, that we want to like remove comfort zone of enemy spot lane yeah. so then they don't have prior. Mm. I think we did that and we put ourselves in a really good spot. Yeah, looking at particularly how you were approaching the ball, and it was also the mid lane that felt a little bit heavy on the focus, particularly we have a B-roll that we'd like to show you from the gank on Caps. I feel like there was a lot of pressure on there as well. Could you talk us through the thought process here? Well, I think uh, we spotted like enemy Ari worth level one. So... That meant that Viego should be behind her, level 3. But in game, we knew we hard stomp to V2. So we just hard force this play. Mm. So using the info of the knowing the ward was placed down and knowing that you could pull this off because of the 2v2 uh, was the decision making there. All right, it seems like you guys are playing a lot better 2v2. Can you tell me about your improvement? Because I feel like a lot of uh, play people were down on you, like especially in the last split. But it feels like in recent games, you've really stepped up, no? Um, would you say so? I have like worse and better games. Yeah. But I think it's all about the confidence. Like game by game, I'm getting more confident and I'm playing more aggressive, I would say. Yeah, confidence is key and you guys have showed it, so congratulations once again on locking playoffs. Looking forward to see you guys in the BO3 series. Uh, we're going to be heading over to our casters because we have KC going up against BDS. A lot of stakes on the line here, so Dracos and Dagda, please do break this one down. All right, everybody at home. It's class. It's so cool. I'm going to make this very clear. <laughs> BDS win, it's simple. It's not that complicated. We'll talk about that in a second. The cool situation, yeah. sorry BDS, throwing you under the bus here. If KC win, there is a three-way tie where Casey would first play against SK. The winner of that match would then play against 
Rogue. So that would mean two more games, that would mean two tiebreakers, and a hell of a lot more League of Legends. And the reason Rogue get to kind of be the top seed in this three-way elimination is because they have beaten SK and they've beaten Carmine Corp, so they are technically the ones with the uh, the head-to-head -head victory. So, so I'm excited to see how this one pans out. As am I. If BDS win, KC are eliminated. Hearts out to the KC fans. And then only Rogue and SK will play a single tiebreaker game. So either way, we get a tiebreaker. The only question is, do we get one or two? I want two. I'm going to say it. Sorry, <laughs> BDS. I want two. I don't know why. Maybe it's self-destructive, but I just want more League of Legends. KC, three back-to-back -back games to try to cement themselves in the playoffs. I can't think of a better story or a better way to end the week, I mean, especially with this, fan, or this group of... Carmine Corp fans. Because the thing is, it doesn't really change a huge amount for BDS, right? No, BDS They're still in the same position, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's more, we just get to see more Sick League of Legends where it's yeah. stakes. The, the real loser in this situation isn't BDS, it's SK, who would then have to play two tiebreakers yeah. to make their way out. But we'll focus one game at a time. Again, reminder, one tiebreaker regardless, two tiebreakers if KC win. We'll keep reminding you over the course of this game, and I'm sure the AD will cover it as well. For now, though, Varus, Oriana, Zinzao, Bandaway, Kalista, Karma, and Rumble to follow. And the debate here for Casey, what do they want to lock in first? A lot of people with this first pick, Vi. A lot of people with the first pick, AD Carry, who's vulnerable to Vi. It's a tough call. I think it'll be fine. I think, uh, although, to be fair, thinking back to last year, Bo was not an exceptional Vi, so uh, definitely went a little over aggressive and didn't have a way back out. Yeah. So we'll have to see, especially with the slight improvements we have seen to Carmine Corp, whether he's a little bit more on the same page with his team or whether he gets caught out. But we'll have to see what the response is going to be here for BDS. I think you end up going towards Zeri here. You make sure that you're going to be fine there. And then it's a question of what does Shea want to try and take into the jungle? Or are you just an RE priority team? Do you really want to just go back towards that comfort for Nuke? Ari, not a bad option into the Vi. Yes, there is the point click CC of the Vi, but you can kind of dash away in the duration of it, give yourself some space to work with. Maokai would be a very defensive pick. Lee Sin would be more fun. But Rel has looked really good. Uh, honestly, this entire week especially. It was a bit shaky, I think, in the earlier weeks of spring, but this week, the teams have tried to close out their season. A lot more confidence on the engages. And Casey not abating. I think the Julia makes a lot of sense. Obviously, this is a reliable level six duo. Really hard for Team BDS to pick anything in the mid lane that is not incredibly vulnerable to the Talia and Vi combination. But the Smolder will come through. And I doubt it's a topside flex. What yes, we'll have access to Nico. And frankly, this is my what favorite pick for most yeah. mid laners in the league. Nico looks so damn good. Just the reliable, again, reliable CC and important matches. I will take over anything else. No, I think it'd be Nico. I think yeah. the Nico, as you say, works well. You've already got a lot of your damage coming through in the Zeri, so just being able to enable her is more your your big opportunity. Plus, Raylis, you know that Adam is going to take some variant of AD damage in the top lane, whether it's an Aatrox, an Olaf, or an Ekton, whatever along those lines it might be. So we'll have to see, though, how aggressive you can play here as BDS, because the clock is a tick, and you got the, the smoulder on the opposite side. So for KC, they have the chance to just try and play through mid-jungle, Keep the pressure in the bot lane, give this motor time to scale, and it's BDS who need to be the ones making those plays. Definitely. I think it's always a bit tricky when you have the Zeri early on. She just doesn't do that much damage. Post-6, once you have access to the ultimate and your support, if it is an aggressive support, has more levels, maybe an Ignite. You can't put down a lot of kill pressure, but KC waiting on that support pick, trying to get, get as much information as they can before they decide what they want Targamas to bring out. The Volibear taken, the Renekton taken from Cabo, not wanting to have any more reliable CC to set up either the Talia or the Vi. There's a question here for BDS though, is like how greedy do you go in the bot lane? Like, do you go for Zeri Lulu? Knowing you're against Smoulder, you're like, hey, you can go for it. I, I'm kind of with your wincing face on this one, yeah. Draco switches. I think take engage, take some sort of um, roaming support here for Labrov that can get him buffed, maybe even throw the, the, the rel down to him. But just get something that can play more aggressive on the map and not try and match the scaling with the scaling. Definitely is an option. I think Lulu is a champion that can be very strong, but I'm I'm a big fan, uh, as you may have noticed, Rob, of champions with like a high output floor. Like no matter what you do in the lane phase, they do something. Lulu yeah. is not one of those champions. If you fall behind, if you're not able to push an advantage, uh, it'll be tough. Of course, any champion very likely to be able to push their advantage against Smolder early on. So we'll see. BDS, do they want to save their counter pick for Cabo? Do they want to, or sorry, yeah, for Adam, or do they want 
to save it for LeBron. I think you could just take the Aatrox here if you really want to and say, hey, look, incredibly strong. We actually see a oh, high priority in LCK, okay. but yeah, they are actually going to give the rel down to Labrov. They're going to get the lease in for Sheo. Very strong mid jungle here again. Good lock up, good setup here for the lease in, which is all he really wants. And then it becomes a question mark of what does Adam want to try and bring out into that top side? Brum going to be the response here into the rel. Brom, good in a lot of situations. Unbreakable, a very powerful ability, but only blocks the damage output, essentially, reliably of the Zeri. Pop Blossom's still going to be a threat from Nuke, no matter what they do. Yes, you can um, take the Tangle Barbs out of the equation, the Blooming Burst, but it's, you know, still something that has to be respected. We'll see how well Targamus can pile with the champion, but I like this pairing. Jace on the top side for Cabo Shard, certainly a bold call, but we've seen two good Jace games so far today, which is... A bit uncharacteristic. We're a bit wishy-washy on Jace here, I'm not going to lie. But we've seen one from Photon, one from Odo as well. Maybe Cabo can add his to the mix. I think the thing is, though, it kind of means that Bo has to play more towards Cabo. And it's not something that we've seen traditionally with KC, where Bo is willing to, like, shadow Cabo so we can get a wave crash or set up vision for him and that kind of stuff, right? So I think this is where we will see a lot more attention of up towards getting that control for the Jace in that top side, especially against the Olaf. like. You can just run down the Jace if one of these undertoes lands. So Bo definitely going to need to pay a little bit more attention to top side than he would to bot lane in this regard. Yeah. Pre-6, you know, Adam's still going to have Ghost, so it's just hard to get away from the Olaf. Yes, you have the Thundering Blow, the Jace Hammer form. E, is it enough to keep Adam away? But at the same time, as we saw against SK, part of the reason they are in this tiebreaker scenario now, couldn't close against Adam's Olaf. We'll see if KC do it a little different. You can hear the passion of the KC fans in our studio here in Berlin. Always a pleasure to have them. But if we want to bring them back into playoffs, this is one of three wins they will need to get back to back to back. You win here, then you play a tiebreaker against SK for the right to play a tiebreaker against Rogue. And BDS already kicking things off with a creative level one. Could put KC at disadvantage. Luckily, Targamus going to be able to walk away. I actually thought that was going to be so massively big brain from BDS for a second. So you can see already this ward that's been placed on this top side here. This is coming through from Carmine Corp because essentially they know, hey, we want to make sure Olaf isn't hiding in the jungle. We want to make sure Cabo Shard is able to get some vision control on this top side so we can hop in and out of these bushes and get that wave push that he needs. A BDS in response, I thought they were going to go in just hyper aggressive in that bottom side and try and invade believing that KC were going to go for that play on the top side, but um, I think with Nuke, one, taking the Q start rather than taking E for the follow-up, and Labrov not being the one to set up for the play, BDS is going to back away instead. So BDS picking off, giving Sheo a bit of a leash, hoping to keep up the pace of that jungle clear. I'm caught off guard. That is the first skin I have seen where Lee Sin very noticeably has hair and is throwing me off. <laughs> he has a big majestic ponytail and it is messing with my brain. <laughs> Yeah, we took it all off of Mirwin and gave it to Lee Sin. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, Mirwin. Box for love, Mirwin. Good on you. Had to donate. He looks great. Yeah, he does. Give him a shaved head. Upset again. Oh, God. Smolder stuff. Smolder. Not good early. Scale's good. Needs to CS. Needs to hit enemy champions with ability. But in this case, if LeBron's just going to walk in and eat a bunch of free damage, you're going to feel pretty good about that one. But I think this is a really... I'm sorry to say, a cool smolder composition. Because essentially what you want to do is Casey, right, is play through mid and your... Oh, hang on. Ooh, flash committed now. Q comes in from Targamus. Doesn't have level 2. Doesn't have the unbreakable upset. Not going to be too effective. But Targamus forced to flash out. Good play from LeBron on the second engage there. Okay, so I was about to say it's sick because essentially you can play for sides with your solo laners and just let upset free farm in mid. He'll eventually get control because he just one-shots the wave and you get to stack. That's perfect for you. That's not a big win, though, for Targamus, who I might have to hold off, because... Shea with the setup, the follow is there, the knockback from Sake, the flash out to Sake, the blooming blows against it! First blood for BDS, well played by Nuke and Shea. Just about able to clip him on the backside with that auto attack as well. Sets him up perfectly, and now this is starting to be alarm bells ringing, right? You've already lost Targamus' flash on that bot side. Easy setup then for Shea to try and come back into that bot lane, especially with Hex flash, and as well, Saken burning his flash to try and escape. Nuke just going to shove in this wave. I think Shea just there to try and support him, but really great stuff in the early game from BDS. Right now, the winning part of the lane, or at least where they have pressure, is top lane for Cabo, but that can fade away and Axe connects if Lee Sin is there to follow up. Cabo's advantage can disappear in the blink of an eye. We know scaling is still the name of the game for the side of KC, but falling this far behind early on, giving up some of these advantages in lane can 
give BDS the angle to snowball much faster than initially expected. Bow at least ahead in jungle CS for now. Not going to turn into a gold lead, though, because of the assist that Shao was able to get, but maybe he can contest this red buff. Pressure is there for Cabo on the top side. Shao has to be careful even being here. Good damage coming in. Relentless force there, as well as the denting blows, but now Nuke first on the roam. Bo? Bo has to be careful. Flash out. Now going through. Vault Breaker there. He does not want to hit on the Nuke. Shao now Flash got safety, but it's Nuke who's in trouble. The flick back is clean. Sonic Wave is there, but Shao does not want to take it. KC finding a kill on the top side. They needed to burst that bow immediately, but they weren't able to do so. You had the push for Cabo in that top side and taking it to come across as well. Targus now is hovering around mid lane, but I don't think you're going to get anyone from BDS coming through. But you had to play off a very short timing window here for Nuke and Shao. And with Shao taking so much damage early and Bo turning aggressive onto Shao as well here. With the uh, the passive proccing, Shao has to ditch. Shao also not able to follow up on this tiny little Sonic Wave that goes wide. And then Bo able to finish off the kill there. Really nice stuff from Carmine Corp working off the pushing waves. Yeah, pretty bold play, to be honest. Shao maybe shouldn't have been there, but the fact that they're able to fully commit to that one, relying on Bo's flash advantage to get him away from the burst that would come in from Nuke, makes the play work out for them in the end. In the meantime, upset. Fully committed to his role as a scaler, as is Ice. Double Cole coming out in the bottom lane. But still a 300 gold lead in the mid lane for the side of BDS, but a 300 gold lead for Bo on the opposite side for KC. Potentially something they can play around and look to leverage more, getting closer to level six, about to tick over to level five. Yeah, I think they're not going to be able to do too much for Bo at the moment. I think you do want that level six, as you say, but you need to clear your top side out before you can get that. Uh, you also would like to try and play off of getting Nuke dead in that mid lane when you hit that level six, but I think the flash might just be up before you can really get that uh, opportunity to play towards that as well. So I imagine instead we might actually try and see him. Well, honestly, I was going to I was gonna say bot, but you already have a huge amount of pressure on bot side. And even if you try and go top, Adam just presses or and the, the gank's dead, right? Yeah. So I think it is a case of try and play for some sort of timer here on towards nuke, or at least like get a push in mid, where Saken can then use his own ult to help you and support you if you go and play for a different side lane. LeBrav roaming up, not spotted, but pings are out at least a little bit. Bo will clear out the grubs. Now they know exactly where he is positioned. They were already pinging the grubs earlier, anticipating they would clear top side into that option. Taken no flash from the initial play. Sonic Wave connects, but they see Bo. Don't want to overcommit here. Just continues to step in, knowing Targamus is there. Aggressive maneuver for Bo. I'm surprised BDS didn't try to turn onto the Vi, but aren't confident that they have enough damage. They didn't know where Targamus was. They just knew he'd reset, and Bo really wanted to try and get that chunk so he could play for Raptors. Most of them already gone to Shio, but okay. Ooh. If either of those skills had connected, that might have been a very different story, but luckily Shio gets hit by neither. Bo is six. still going in. Smite is there. Nuke is six, but Bo manages to get away. Nuke hitting absolutely nobody, but Bo still getting cut down here. Sagan doesn't have the follow-up damage. It's over-aggressive from the side of KC. None of the abilities from either side are landing. And that's just making it easy for Shao to play this one out. Nuke still just on the chase. Sagan going up top side, but Kabo hasn't even moved yet. Yeah, Kabo just wants to try and go for the chip damage on the tower. Don't want to try and overextend. They know that Adam has reset, so if it had really gone badly, could have tried to move down there. No upset. Taking a little bit of damage off Weiss, but he'll be fine. He's going to go for the reset as well. Messi, Messi plays on both sides with the mid laners whiffing a lot of stuff, but the kill goes to BDS. I'm set up to be careful here too. Zeri has ultimate up, which is a nice little bit of burst to kick things off and a lot of movement speed. Upset, <coughs> excuse me, has flash, can get away, but will opt to stay here. Ice just going to push out the wave and back off. That was a weird one, Rob. Yeah. I don't know if I want to watch it back. <laughs> I think it was just, as you say, like the difference was how many of these spells went wide. Saken doesn't get the flick. Targamus doesn't get the initial Winter's Bice. Then as well, Bo is kind of the only one that's actually dealing damage in that scenario because Saken's been forced away by Nuke. It was a, a kind of a comedy of errors, to be perfectly honest. I think the only, <laughs> yeah, the only nice thing for Casey in that context is Nuke also kind of whiffed some yeah. spells as well. But ultimately, um, it's just he like that episode. More, it's, a, it's like those episodes of Dragon Ball Z, you know, where you're like, you spend two hours just charging, getting ready and charging it, up, and someone and then knocks it's like, it aside and exactly, like hits yeah. a wall. Yeah. Oh, Targamus. And it must be tough. It must be frustrating to spear a bomb and then whiff. Targamus. Not even gonna get the chance to spear a bomb. Picked off by the side of BDS. Stepped uh, pretty far in. BDS just caught him. I have no idea what he was doing. Well, I think he just assumed that there was a recall there. I wasn't entirely sure where people were positioned on the map. Bo going to be forced to ult to try to mitigate the upfront. CC Unraveled Earth. Kickback is good. Follow-up is there. Pacheo put himself in no man's land. It will not matter, however. BDS still so far ahead in the play. KC's 
season starting to fall apart in front of them. 1K gold lead for BDS, three kills ahead. I have no idea what he was doing. Nothing here really seems to make sense for what KC are trying to achieve. You end up, Targum is completely overextending into River, and then when he dies, Bo goes, do you know what? That looked like a great idea. Now Targum goes, let me show you how it's really done, mate, and yep. then goes in again for a third and then time. goes in, and he's going to succeed. Try, yeah. try again. Back to the grave. Fourth time's the charm, I swear. This is difficult, I think it is safe to say. And while the KC fans remain endlessly passionate, endlessly supportive, um, you know, right now it is not panning out. In the KC lineup as they get further behind, Bo now here to clear the vision. And this is a, it's a sad sight. You know, you really want in these final games for, for support jungle to be working well. And while Targamus and Bo have often been in the same place, the plays have not really been working out. Yeah, they've been in the same place, just opposite times. Yep. You know, it's that's the big problem is that they both died in River, but they weren't there at the same time. They were there together at Raptors. They just in spirit. They were also united in missing skills. And that's mm -hmm. I mean, that's rough. You have to imagine that, like, at this point, if Casey win, you can start to get a little bit of hope. There's momentum on your side. Yes, you have to win two more games, but that little sliver of hope starts to grow into something bigger. But when you fumble like this and you make mistakes, when top lane, which has been doing well, is about to get completely deleted, hope starts to fade away. Adam grabbing a kill, leveraging the power of that Ragnarok Shale already on the second spawn of Grubs. Ice in the bottom lane, taking plates, making sure that Upset cannot farm comfortably. This is just gone from bad to worse for KC. Here comes Mom. But uh, Saken? On the way down, trying to knock up Ice. Knockback flashed away from Ice, still alive for a brief moment. Threaded volley, shut down there for Saken. The start of something for KC. Saken just needed to get in the face of Ice and say, no, I'm having none of, none of this. Needs to get that damage off, manages to land it perfectly. And then Nuke, he's a minion, but I don't know what else he can do. All right, here we are set up on the Drake. Clean comes in. Kickback is there, but will give his life, but the dragon is gone. Something at least small for the side of KC. The shutdown was good. But, I mean, look at the bottom of your screen. It's all red. It's all in favor of BDS. And the bottom lane is getting harder. Yes, Smolder has a hidden, not so hidden scaling component of the stacks. And you can see on his picture, if you look real close, 76 at this moment in time. Not terrible, but not great. Upset's going to need to up the pace here if he wants to be the reason that Casey bring this one back. Yeah, I just, I don't know how Casey tried to bring this back from this position, right? We've seen no linking up between mid-jungle. Uh, upset, he hasn't really gotten to a position where he's really scaled to a point where he's threatening. And BDS, they've already started, like, dragons are going in their favor. I'm sorry, well, they've started to get the dragon stacking underway. They'd be able to play for that at the 25 minute mark, which is maybe where Smolder might have a chance to try and do something, but realistically, I think Upset a little bit too far behind at this stage. Um, and then when you look towards the, I'm sorry, well, not Upset specifically, but KC a little bit too far behind. And they really want to try and play it through side lanes, right? The whole point is Cabo should have a lead in top. Saken and Bo should have been able to get a lead in mid, but they're behind. You can't play outside lanes from this position, and it means that now BDS would just get to play for a superior team fighting. It's an angle that they have. BDS slowly pushing their vision line forward. Luckily for Casey, they haven't been able to break down a lot of these, or any of these really, tier ones. Cabo's still holding for now. You can see the setup. They're ready to collapse, and there's not a lot of counterplay when there's this much CC in an Ola. Pack and Ragnarok. Oh, Cabo Shard walks in. Devastating. Shattering Strike connects as well. Shea, Ward hop forward, kick back. Are they going to give a kill to Adam? Taking their time. Nope. Shea on a killing spree. Knows he's fed, knows he's powerful. Happy to take that one as Adam. Gets the consolation prize of a couple extra plates. Everything now going in favor of BDS. Yeah, and I, I just feel bad for Cabo Shard in that one. Like, no, none of that vision that was established earlier has been cleared out on that top end. And he needs to try and collect these waves. Otherwise, he just does fall further and further behind and just becomes irrelevant. Like, you can already see he's a full level behind. He's already massively far, far behind in gold. And at this stage, there's nothing you can do. Adam, I'm pretty sure, especially as he hits level 11, should just be able to kill Cabo underneath his own tower at this stage. Yeah. I mean, very often, Olaf feels like a stat check, right? Like, you can either kill him when he Ragnaroks at you, you can dodge the axes, but when he has Ghost and ulti up, you're certainly not getting away from him. Phase Rush can help. The knockback can help when he doesn't have ulti. But when you start to fall behind against this champion, 
Adam just takes over. And there was no response. You can see the bow was just sitting in that bot side uh, map or in the bot side brush, hoping that maybe he could make something happen. But Ice backed the right the way up. Labrov and Jay were like, cool, we're just going to keep our own jungle safe. So KC get nothing. And again, two minutes now until next Dragon. You've also got foot at the Herald that's about to spawn as well. And KC moving into the area, but maybe with Labrov and Reset, they can pick this up. But this is going to be a really tight timer. Yeah. Shao clearing out the Raptor camp. We'll likely check this quick Sonic wave in. Yep. Knows it's been swatted. Plays down the vision and Olaf has reset. Adam with no TP means man advantage for KC. And it looks like BDS might just give this one up. Upset on the way as well. Meanwhile, Nico split pushing in bottom lane. And uh, LeBrov all the way on the bottom side of the map. Maybe once again trying to catch out Cabo as he goes for the wave. But Harold is a start for KC. Something I don't think that really BDS had to give up. No, I think they could have been in a better position for it, especially if Adam had actually got that top tower or positioned himself for the top tower. But now you're going to have Shao try and match here. The, uh, the all right, first, what's the name of that first time? I'm saying Guardbreaker because I'm playing too much TFT. Stridebreaker? Stridebreaker, thank there you. you. Go. It's <laughs> completed for Adam. So if he Spinny gets onto thing. any of these side laners, he'll be able to chase them down with the slow and that ghost as well. So he becomes significantly more threatening in that position. And with BDS getting first tower as well, we know the Adam Classic got pushed top, is immediately group onto mid wave and see if he can make something happen. It's gonna be up in full force as well. Although I think he is just gonna reset and actually swap with Nuke so he can keep Nuke a little bit more threatening, especially as we look towards Dragon. And still, KC fans endlessly cheering, trying to fill these players with hope, even as the game starts to look hopeless. Upset. I think he's had a really solid season individually, but in this game, you know, opting for the smolder. The potential of what it could bring is there, but might not have the time to scale up. They just have to watch, just has to wave clear as the rest of the map falls apart around him. So BDS trying to match KC in the top side. KC assuming BDS are going to try and play for a dragon, but should spot a Shale here and know that the jig is up. Targamus backing off, Ghost popped, Alti can get popped as well as soon as the CC comes in. Targamus very likely dead. The wall certainly would be good against Olaf if he was on the right side of it. The knockback is there, the ulti fades away. Bo's got nothing left in the tank. But Jao offering an opportunity for him to get out to safety. Ballbreaker might just be enough of the stride breaker there from Adam. And nothing's going to break his stride as BDS just again take the topside skirmish. Nice job by BDS the Raiders. It was second dragon for BDS. So Casey were like, okay, we have Rift Herald. Let's try and use a topside, get some gold back in our favor here, something for our solo laners. But BDS just say, cool, we don't mind leaving Dragon at this stage. We get the turnaround play on topside, and we can still go for Dragon anyway. And that's why once they saw Shale here, they're like, oh crap. We know exactly what BDS are about to do. Great flash from Adam over the wall. Shale lands that Sonic Wave as well, which then sets up nicely to try and follow through. Shale unfortunate there. Could have gotten Saken, but nice flash from Saken to match the kick flash from Shale. But BDS still come out massively on top. And you can see frustration on the face of the KC coaching staff. It's hard. <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot of counterplay when an Olaf is this strong. Even when you're moving in a support jungle, it's textbook. It's how you're supposed to do it. If there happens to be an Olaf in the brush, your man advantage suddenly means very little, especially when Olaf is this fed. But that's the thing, right? I think when we came into this game, we are like, cool, how is Bo going to look in the buy? What's he going to be able to do? Because realistically, it had to be play for lanes, but it was more lanes playing for Bo. And without him able to capitalize on Nuke having no summoner spells available. That off. Should be able to back away, yeah. No. And, not, and also then not being able to get that vision or the push control for Cabal Shard in the top side. BDS were just able to punish really effectively around those points. So I do think, again, it's kind of coming back to, is this the right champion for a player like Bo? Yeah. I mean, you know, even in the meta, there's a question as to how powerful Vi really oh is. My God. over the wall. <laughs> he wants to make a quick, a merciful execution. <laughs> didn't use Flash in the last play over the wall. Just managed to ghost pass. I thought I saw him use it too, but he still had it, so obviously did not. It's just that you what, bro? You what, bro? You said, huh? It's just a second you see the flick back. He's, I mean, he's just, he's already made playoffs. He's still just coming in here, like, completely ruthless. SK behind the scenes somewhere right now, gearing up for a tiebreaker, just going, oh, thank God for that, hold on. Because <laughs> remember, uh, again, if KC win, they have to play SK, and then the winner of that plays Rogue. But if, if KC get knocked out here, if they lose, they're out, and then it's just SK versus Rogue for the final playoff spot, we will always play a tiebreaker for that, even if Rogue own the head-to-head. -head. 
Did he end up for a potential dive on mid? But looks like they're just going to try and uh, sync up with Nuke in the top side. But I think the question then becomes like, what, what is this experiment for Carmine Corp going to be? Because it's been two splits now where we get to see some improvement, but it's clear that it's not a team that is able to get the functionality that they want. And being this close to hitting playoffs, it's kind of heartbreaking that they're not able to just about make it work. Well, and I think that, again, when you look closely, you can see signs of that improvement, but when you look at the scoreboard, you can't. It's exactly the same as it was in winter, of course. In that context, they were down, and then they won the last two, and they were already out. But at the end of the day, 2-7 is 2-7. That is certainly not where KC want to be or where the fans want them to be. And you do have 10 weeks after this to potentially get that back functioning, right? Which you could improve, but at that stage, it's like, do we want to take that time investment and then maybe try and make it work in summer, try and get to Worlds? But if summer doesn't go well, well then you don't have a huge amount of play time this year. Yeah, and we changed the format slightly. Uh, I mean, placing high in summer is really important regardless of, of championship points. But even then, a, a miracle run doesn't just feel like it would be a miracle. It feels like it would be impossible for KC at this moment, at this level of performance. But silver lining on many, many clouds. This split has been smolder. And in a lot of our games, especially in the first week before the hot fix, uh, yeah, it was just an inevitable win condition. This Harold runs past Adam <laughs> and will charge. He's not worried about it. He wants to wave instead. Potential play on the top side here. Targibus, Shadow, and Cabo. Bo there as well. Trying to push this wave in. Tangle Bar. Does he have numbers? Deleted. Ball breaker forward. Now going to go on to the nuke, but he's on the wrong side of the wall. Flip back is good, though. Finally, the CC layered. It looks like a good start to things, but Ice ulting. And now he's just going to try to clean up the fight. Unbreakable. Protecting Saken. Upset. Standing behind. Mom up and available. When is it going to get called in? Ice skating forward do they want to step up or are they happy with what they have so far sonic wave connects resonating strike will it be there unbreakable the block ice from falling up any further the broad may have overstepped here they're shredding him down kc found the angle adam's finally here but the play's already fizzled the tp out from Cabo. he knows he's dead if he doesn't just make it to safety he doesn't have enough time they tried to get out just before the frat bro showed up but unfortunately for Cabo shard he got caught right as he was about to leave <laughs> Nobody wants to get caught in that conversation, but KC <laughs> managed to get the pick and get on out of there. You don't understand, man. His dad owns the dealership, and that is his entire personality. <laughs> Yo, bro, I like, I that's, I like the, I that's the share. angle for bro your bro lock. <laughs> but it, like, you can see it here, right? Oh, Olaf, bro Olaf re uh, setting in the bot side, trying to get up to the top side. Kick. Flashed away from from Bo, could have been really nice from Shale, but they do get one. And BDS are trying to buy time where oh, Adam can actually get back into this yeah. fight. But KC, they're actually able to poke and prod as they start to move forward. And that's kind of what they do great with Saken and Cabo Shard here. When the all-out comes through with Labrov, just able to flash away from Saken, get the kill onto Labrov. And now the ghost comes through from Adam. Yeah. And they've got enough burst damage to finish him off. Cabo's like, I got to get out, man. He said something about cryptocurrency and Web3. This is not a conversation I want to participate in. Yeah, tried to make him look at his portfolio, but I, honestly, I think Cabo Shard, the really, I think it was a good call. The only way you get people out is if you split, otherwise Adam chases you all down. Yeah. So, look, it was a nice attempt. Well, you weren't, you weren't going to outrun him, right? Teleport was really the only angle yeah. to escape. Ultimately, you end up being a sacrificial lamb. You might have just been able to escape, but the vision comes down. Yeah, it's he's been slamming an energy drink since like 3 p.m., so he just never ever. You understand, man, he's always grinding. Passive income. He's been awake since 3 a.m. Yeah. That's the secret. Oh, that's a surprise, Olaf. That's not the bush you wanted to go into, but we'll die. Ice on a rampage. I would... Sigma male. I, he's on his grind set. He's unstoppable. They let him into his zone, Rob. That's the one rule. Don't let him into his zone. And now they're in the Baron zone. And BDS going to be very, very happy about this. Still, a lot of members of KC trying to collapse here. Shale is not here. Just to be very clear, no jungler in the vicinity, and we're still going hard on this. Shao coming from behind. KC see a window of opportunity. Five seconds on Bo. He won't be able to get there, but maybe they can find an angle into the pit. Shao finally going to make it over the wall. There's no way. Baron will drop. And now KC are in a bit of a difficult position. That acceleration gate not going to quite hit Targamas. Flick back is good on the lower bra. Some nice poke damage. KC don't have enough damage to finish the kill, sadly. 197 on upset. The timer about to tick over. The stack's about to tick over to 225, but that's a Baron buff and a 7k gold lead on the side of BDS. And a 6 kill Zeri, who's just finished their Infinity Edge. Ice 
very strong in his own regard as well. And this is the thing, I think Upset, the timer, may have just ticked on that little bit too long. Casey need to find ways to get picks, slow down the pace of this game. And at least they're trying to set up to get like bot terror here, where maybe you can then unlock Saken to a slight bit inside lanes. But with Adam as big as he is, it becomes very easy for him again to just chase down people. And that's why like him just showing up here is causing issues already. All right, TP onto the bottom side. Another pick onto Bo. If the first two don't succeed, try, try again. But this try bush has been the death of KC. Targum is dying there twice. Bo now once. Camaraderie there, at least in death. His BDS gain control of the red quadrant of KC's jungle, looking to break down the bot lane tier two. Labrov zoning KC off the back here. Cabo still trying to push in on top, so numbers advantage once again here for BDS on this bottom side of the map. Shao gonna shove in mid, as BDS gonna link up with him now in the mid lane. Targumus, you need to be very careful here. Shadowrank Scythe doesn't connect. Saken doing his best to clear the waves. An uproar from the KC fans. Faith unwavering, even in the face of defeat, even in the face of two back-to-back. -back. Splits filled with despair. 220 for upset, close. One more wave should do it. He's walking into his own jungle. It's been heavily warded up, but unbeknownst to him, he is completely safe. He'll start to see Nuke on the top side and know they can walk in with a bit more confidence. It's this next wave, it's mid wave. That's the 225, that's the execution threshold. But it's not a win the game button. You will still need a fight, an opportunity to leverage that advantage or to leverage that strength. And he can't even bring mom to college. And that's the problem <laughs> He's just so strong. And he's just going to continue to push that mid. And now BDS are starting to go into top side again. I just don't think you have the presence on the map right now. Cabo and Saken linked up on that bottom side to get the tower. But that just overexposes you on this bottom side of the map. Or the top side of the map. And again, it's just movement constantly here for BDS. And now we're in the situation we've been in multiple times with Smolder. You're just stalling. You're just holding on. Two and a half items. An extra Brutalizer for Cabo. Closer to some additional armor penetration might help tear through Adam. KC fans again shouting themselves hoarse, giving it all. And what it could and seems to be KC's final day on this stage for 10 weeks. You said it. And for some, maybe it's a sign of hope. 10 weeks, you can adjust, you can come back stronger. But for the players in this lineup, it's despair, knowing you have to be so far away from the competitive game for so long. That's the thing, for KC, they're trying to split up the map and see if they can catch people over-rotating here for BDS, but BDS, they're not really giving them the opportunity. You'll always see that they're just basically like, they'll push out bot now, but then they'll just immediately drop bot and then start to play off two lanes at every point in time. So at the moment, they're going to push out in that top side of the map. They're going to push out here, they're going to push out here, and then look to establish all this vision in this quadrant. And then you can just play for... Um, your position on towards those towers. Although with Dragon in 50 seconds, there's always the opportunity instead to just try and catch <laughs> people as you move in towards here, yeah. Instead, but it's the same idea, right? Is just continue this push, keep yourself in check. And Adam, yeah, he's gonna reset as well. So it is gonna be the Dragon fight coming through here for Soul. And for Casey, entering to bot side is always so risky because if you lose the fight, Ice is already shoving in mid and it makes it so hard to actually try and contest. Yeah. And even if, you know, BDS give up Dragon, cool, it's a second Dragon for KC, whereas they just crack your base. It's so hard for KC to find a good play. Just 100 different shades of bad, 100 different shades of trading down, hoping, praying to trade even, to buy more time again for Smolder, to get a few more stacks, a few more waves under your mid laner, is even now, Taken has a bit of a gold lead over Nuke, not much, but perhaps could make the difference in the fight. TP down, there's a top wave. But of course, they know Adam doesn't have TP. KC moving in for the play. Ice clearing out mid wave. KC with first setup. They've got their flanks covered as well, but Adam with flash and ghost up. Nuke wasn't spot on the ward. It's actually been blocked out by a control ward. So Nuke trying to see if he can move into position here. Adam over spot the wall. They recognize the wolf now. Upset retreating. The Drake taken. No one objective bounty. Cow manages to take the Drake. And now there's an Olaf trying to tear his way through the backside. The execute isn't enough. Upset cannot get into the fight. He needs to flap onto somebody. He needs to do anything. He's been isolated, he's been pushed back. The miracle 
single steal is not enough. The kickback from J.O. is clean. It's a triple from Cabo. They look to finish the job right here. It started all right, but BDS not going to go home empty-handed. But KC will find themselves going home exactly that. Nothing to pick up as BDS will trump them in their place and deny them that spot in playoffs. Domination just about from start to finish. One or two tiny glimmers in the early game, but it's just gone from bad to worse. For the second split in the row, KC will finish 2-7. SK and Rogue will play our only tiebreaker, and BDS will end their season 5-4. and four. A very clean game from BDS. Again, it's kind of going back to what has been their bread and butter. Get control in the early stages, start to play round do like try and get your control into that bottom side as well. And I mean, really, really well played. Honestly, Adam looking great on this Olaf as always as well. Definitely did. Of course, you can vote for your key player of the game at LVC on X. Cheo, Nuke, or Ice are your options. Commiserations, of course, to KC. And again, key player of the game. We talked about it a moment ago, but make sure you get your votes over there. I mean, I'm kind of heartbroken for KC. I think it's been, and they've tried so hard to get everything to work, but unfortunately just hasn't been the case. And now when they had that glimmer of hope to see now that Rogue might just overshoot them in the standings and take that spot is going to be heartbreaking for them. But on the upside, as you say, BDS would look great. Your key player of the game, as you said, she uh, Shale, Nuke, or Ice, you can vote now at LEC on X. Yeah. KC, back to the drawing board. Tough split. BDS will see them in the best of threes. We'll see them in the next stage. See who they're drawn against after our tiebreaker. For now, we regroup, we recenter an interview with Adam after the break and the tiebreaker ahead. Don't go anywhere. Welcome everyone to the Kia Tilt Proof Challenge. We're here to see if four gamers can stand up to the test. Well, this oh! <laughs> 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 ah, gas! Dios mío de mi vida! I think I lost. I'm so happy that I didn't eat before. Red Bull gives you wings. Done. Done. There we go. Break? Break. <sighs> Even the biggest champ needs a break. I'm tired. Me too. So, uh, what do you think? On to the next one? Let's go. Come on. Oh.
that's perfect for you. That's not a big win though for Targamus 2. I might have towed off. Let's see. Yeah, with the setup, the follow is there, the knockback from taking the flash out of the city, the blue close against it! First blood for BDS. Well played by Nuke and Shale. Attack on oh, Cavatar walks in. Devastating. Shattering strike connects as well. Shale, ward hop forward, kick back. Kill the Adam. Taking their time. Nope. Shale on a killing spree. Knows he's fed, knows he's powerful. Happy to take that one as Adam. Look right now. I can go after him. Vine of Flash, Vine of Flash, Vine of Flash, Vine of Flash, Vine of Flash. I can go. Nice, okay. nice. Welcome back to the LEC. Adam, merci for joining me. That's my extent merci, of French. <laughs> That's all I can do. Now, of course, congratulations. You had already uh, locked playoffs. However, it hasn't been the performance that I'm guessing you guys would have expected for that split. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we still end up in like positive ratio, which is like not the most dramatic stuff. But I think um, at least how we are as a team right now and how the organization perceive like our goal of this year, uh, like we're supposed to have like higher standards, you know. So finishing like 5-4 is not like, it's decent, right? But it's not up to our expectations. But yeah. You know what they say, when you make mistakes, you get a chance to learn from them and move on. That's However, true. when you sat down, I said, yay, congratulations, you've locked in. You said, I'm really sad because I kind of kicked out Casey. Yeah, I mean, of course, it had like to be us, you know, this is like the like the bad luck in a way, I think, because I mean, I really like like Casey a lot, right? And I think it's a, it's a shame that, you know, they're eliminated now. Uh, for the second time, they have players in which you know I care a lot about, and I hope that um, they will stay strong, you know, after after this period, because like they still remain insane players, right? Absolutely, and you've played with them, you have won in the ERLs with them, and obviously you want to see them succeed. Long-lasting friendships that you have That's true. Uh, in this team, and I'm I'm gonna bring up the draft right here, because. Um, Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read this. I'm always taking pictures. And I asked you for a picture, and you're like, trouble, I can't. I really need to draft. And I'm like, <laughs> it's fine, man. You're going to pick Olaf anyway. And you did. Yeah, um, I mean, like, I was kind of hesitating uh, today when I was discussing draft with Striker. And like, what is he going to play? And there was like two sides that were like 100% sure. It, he goes Jace blind with Malphite, or he will just blind pick Gragas. Uh -huh. I, th I think he decided to go for Jace, which uh, I think makes sense because they have Smolder. So I think their uh, game plan was like pretty straightforward from the beginning. They want to put uh, Jace ahead in the beginning so that he he can like have a good scaling and make a bridge until Smolder is unable. Oh, well, that was a pretty good plan right there. Now, something that's also very weird about your draft is that I was expecting that Rel to go jungle. You know what? Sheo is a little bit of a Setsuani slash Rel merchant. He picked the Lee Sin to surprise to all of us, but you told me a little secret about Sheo and Bo playing Lee Sin. Yeah, I, I mean, like the thing is, like Sheo likes to meme a lot about um, like uh, Sheo picking Kairi's jungle before Bo does. Um, so obviously, I, I think like the listen pick was also for the meme. I wouldn't say it's 100% for the draft. I would say it's also mostly f uh, f for meme and for ego as well. Because <laughs> so, but I think he really stepped up today. Um, I think show like lately, uh, especially this meta uh, enables him. I think a lot. Uh, he's trying to like uh, pull out more of his carry jump, and I think today was a great example of uh, showing his skills. Absolutely, and he did get Kia player of the game as well. So congratulations to him for stepping up and giving us a little bit of more leasing action. Maybe we'll see more Milky Way champions maybe down the line, like a Graves, like a Kindred. He's he's shrugging, he's like moving his shoulders. He's not gonna give me any of that. Now, of course, moving forward, we still have one spot left for playoffs and it's in between SK and Rogue. Who do you think takes that one? Hey, I mean, I still would like SK to win. You know, I wouldn't like Niski to get eliminated. But uh, if I have one message for Niski right now, it's just, just wake up, man. What do you think has been going wrong? He's sleeping too much. <laughs> He's sleeping. Stop having fun, man. Like he went karting yesterday night instead of spanning solo queue. What a big mistake. Okay, thank you very much, Adam, for the interview. Uh, last message to the desk is uh, Niski needs to wake up. Do you guys agree? 
All right, thank you so much for uh, that insight. Niskiwe Cup, that is something that we're going to be discussing ahead of the competition because we are looking at Rogue going up against SK. But before we head into that, I think something we need to really highlight is how the spring season overall has played out. You might be thinking, what do you mean? It's already been 5 view once today. That's how it usually goes. Not today. We've got a tiebreaker. But before we head into that, Fnatic have officially locked in first. What year is it? I don't know. Feels old school to me. I see G2 in second as well, tied with Vitality. Woo! Heretics, like top end of the schedule is a lot tighter, uh, or the standings rather, is a lot tighter than I initially thought it was going to be going into this spring. I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm hoping the gameplay is going to continue elevating it, going into the best of series. But for now, what a tight lead we have there. Yeah, yeah and with the loss as well coming through from Carmin Core, unfortunately, it does mean that they are eliminated. They are not in contention for playoffs anymore. They are in that 10th spot, going 2-7. and seven. Unfortunately, we didn't see them in playoffs during winter either, so that is a peculiar position to be in. And the fans have been supporting them through thick and thin, and that is something that they should be very proud of. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, they had a bit of a resurgence, two wins. You know, they actually managed to pick it up um, at some point. You thought, right, mm -hmm. they had it all together, but unfortunately, it's not the case. Not there. But that uh, brings us to the tiebreaker, right? That brings us to SK going up against Rogue. And you might be thinking, wait, we've seen that earlier today. Yes, you have. And it went actually in favor of Rogue, and they looked very strong. A lot of different points that they were able to bring to the table. When we're looking at SK, we just heard it from Adam. We want them to wake up. Absolutely. Uh, and Rogue this time around, since they have the luxury of choosing side selection as well, they've gone for the blue side, which obviously makes it a lot easier for them to draft the priorities. We've seen a lot they've gone for today as well. I think it's interesting as well, because in contrast to that, it puts SK in the back end going into these drafts. Mm -hmm. I think recently as well, SK in general, they've just been a bit slow with their drafts. So in terms of like finding a clear win condition with them too, I think Aragon as well, you've been talking a lot yeah. specifically about your issues with them too. I think it's been a bit strange, right? Uh, they had such weird plans going into the two most recent games, at the very least before today, where, for example, against G2, they left open Draven, which is a big no-no usually, only to counterpick with Zaya Rakan, which just gets absolutely blasted early game. Mm -hmm. And then in the game against Vitality, I believe, they lock Maokai Corki, which is one of the most sleeper drafts I've ever seen. It's probably what Adam was uh, referring to with the wake up. Uh, you just can't do anything, right? You're a, you're a package salesman. You just have to uh, wait to scale up with the rockets. But I think it's completely fake because they drop Niski down to four or five and there's just no picks left because the mid lane pool's pinched. I think they've absolutely got to change up um, the way they draft because it's not been good enough something that they have to improve for this one because at the end of the day it is going to be a BO1 and we've already seen a couple of tricks from Rogue coming out with their game against SK but particularly their compositions have been different. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think from the side of Rogue compared to SK here, I think they finally just woking up with one specific player. And that specific player has been Marcoon. I thought going into this split, or at least with the meta as I saw it was gearing up, Volibear, these early game junglers that we would see from him would be where he suddenly starts taking charge for the team because this Rogue roster had not been proactive. I thought he was going to fix it. He didn't. But going into this week, he absolutely did. He's been so active and he's been driving them ahead to put them in comfortable positions for the mid to late game. They're constantly finding these huge huge Wombo combo engages with the Ori board delivery on the Volibear with the Flash, uh, finding all these ganks on the Viego. I'm a little worried about how the game goes for the side of SK because uh, Niski, in my opinion, has been really struggling, at least in terms of the early game, getting ganked a bunch, you know, oftentimes, he will just die because there's no supporting vision, get caught under tower. There's so many things that go wrong in the mid lane. When you have a veteran like Niski, he needs to step up. Yeah, and absolutely. And that's a guy you got to shut down now. That is Isma yep. who also needs to step up to recover the lanes that Makun will be attacking, as you said yourself. And we also saw it in the clip with Niski kind of just being isolated, getting ganked by the enemy jungler. Well, you need to make sure that a guy like Niski is set up for the 2v2. It used to be what he was known for. It used to be the guy that has the best 2v2 in the jungle or in mid jungle in the league, but we've not seen it recently. And we we need Isma and Niski to step up again if they want to bridge some of the pressure that Rogue has implied on other sides of the map. Sounds like both of you, to an extent, have made up your mind. But whether or not it's going to be Rogue that's going to take this one is something we're going to find out. Because as we promised, this is going to be the last game of the LEC Spring regular split. So let's head over to our, ca head over to our casters who are going to be breaking down SK going up against Rogue once again. Thank you very much to the wonderful analyst desk as well as Adam for that um, insightful and honest interview. Just Straight calling out Niski. Niski's just, <laughs> he's just, I can't say he's catching strays, because I think that the focus is like what needs to change for yeah. SK, but I think that is a lot of pressure for any one player to put on their shoulders. The good news, SK's a, SK. Niski's a veteran. You have to hope that he can handle it, because if not, Rogue, 
against all odds, against all expectations, especially after their first loss at the start of this week of play, are going to be going to playoffs. We head into draft again. Drafts pre-recorded. So we'll see what they opted for this time around. Um, I do think as well in SK, like, Irrelevant has just been straight. I think this guy really needs to, like, he has been so good for so long. He's gotten so much praise. But these last few games just really have not been it for him. He has gone way too far forward, not having the support of the team. Looks like he's on a very different page. So I'm curious to see exactly what the game plan is here for SK. As we're already into the draft, Karma taken immediate Jace pick alongside the Maokai. So this feels to me like they're going back towards, hey, we want significantly more comfort. We want Niski on some sort of carry, and we're gonna let Isma try and play around that here in the jungle. Karma locked. Zin locked as well it was the Viego from Markun that really allowed Rogue to find the first win at the start of the day against SK Gaming. Again, set up on an aggressive jungler's Rogue debate on what they want their third pick to be here in the first round. They're hovering a lot of funny stuff, but it might be something less exciting. I really want it to be like at Just least be... most of these. Please pick something It'll fun. It'll be Zeri. <laughs> don't... I'm really sorry. It'll be Zeri. <laughs> uh, this is the only one that they've hovered that I don't want it to be. And that one. And, and that also one. that one. <laughs> okay, I take it back. Never mind. This is why we don't talk about the hovers. No, Smolder! <laughs> I, uh, I thought they'd actually go towards the Zeri, because I think Zeri, Karma is a combo that's really sick, because you do get the shield. And then you can take something a little bit more engage heavy for Zoe Lee, yep. which is where he's felt more comfortable, like the, the Blitzcrank earlier on, right? But uh, unfortunately, not going to be the case. Instead, we're going to get the Karma coming across for um, X Kick. So I'm starting to believe that this might be a mid lane Jace for Niski. And essentially, we're going to see that Poke Karma build, or sorry, Poke Kalista build come out. They try and play at range. If you try and engage here as S uh, against SK, just get the Maokai ult immediately. The uh, so. Poke Kaisa build? Yeah. And oh, I think got it. you can probably go for even the uh, Renata here for DOS if you really want. And it's just wave after wave of do not touch us. And I I think Renata's DOS' is best champ. I think it has I been since the winter of last year. I think when SK's bot lane really caught everyone's attention was a lot of those um, Zeri Renata games from DOS and Exekick. See if they can replicate that with a potentially a Kai's Renata. Or if that's something that Rogue want to take away. I have not been impressed with Smolder at all since um, the hotfix. The, yeah. I think teams have just gotten more comfortable playing against the pick for the most part. And the good news for Rogue, though, I like that they have a strong jungle matchup early, because very often I feel like we see teams draft a losing jungle matchup and Smolder, and that feels like a death sentence in the early game. This time around, that Markun, somewhere into our first game of the day, is set up for success. Zin Zhao incredibly powerful against a lot of these poke options. Especially if that is a mid karma, you can play heavily for those early skirmishes and even play for push invade on mid um, on to something like the Maokai, which could be very much where they want to try and play towards. A lot of time hovering on this last one, though, I do think it will potentially be the Renata ban just to try and take that away here from DOS. Because even if you don't necessarily, okay, they're not going to, because I'm going to say, even if you don't necessarily play with the Kaisa, you just slap the, uh, the bailout. Okay. Wait, who does it belong to? I know. We're all thinking it. It's probably bottom, especially against the Smolder, because he doesn't do anything early game, but could still go top. Yeah, we have seen it over in the LPL on both sides, right? You get like YSKM, who's willing to play a top side, hasn't exactly had a great win rate on us, but still willing to play it in that top side. Um, and then you've obviously seen Haley bring it out. We've seen Iwandi bring it out uh, over in the LPL. So I definitely think it is somewhere that we could see the Camille. If it That's is... why I think Finn isn't sure exactly what he wants to try and bring out here. Ooh, debating. Gnar, of course, historically has struggled into the Camille, you have to be really flawless on the hot backs to safety. So Cassante just taking kind of the safest option into whatever is going to get thrown at him. If it is Camille topside, there will be a lot of physical damage on SK Gaming. Then we will almost certainly think uh, see the Poke Kaisa build, I think, to balance things out. But still the debate here for Rogue on their last pick. Nautilus pretty stock I standard. I think he'll be Camille support. I think they end up tossing. I think you're happy to, you could put the Camille top into Cassante. It's not a terrible matchup, but I do think that taking uh, something a little bit more a, like setup heavy for relevant, I think could work out a little bit better. And, and then you can just play hyper aggressive into the smoke in the bot lane, especially when you should have push on mid um, eventually in this matchup for Niski as well. You got good setup coming through from the Maokai. A very easy target selection for SK if they do put this Camille bot side. Players taking to the stage. They already know what they've selected. We're finding out what the last pick yeah. will be. So Gnar locked in up against the Cassante. It will be the Camille support. Very feast or famine. But despite that pressure, Doss looked pretty good. Looked pretty happy coming on the stage. So a bit of optimism for me in terms of how this is going to go. 
Certainly the tools to dominate early game, at least on the bottom side of the map for SK Gaming. The jungle, a bit of a point of concern. Isma a good player, but Maokai, not the most impactful champ in terms of the 1v1. Yeah, that's why I wasn't sure if Zolis was going to go for something like the Braum to try and like tank up the Maokai ult, tank up some of the poke that can come through from Nixie, Nisky and Hexakick. But I think they do just need a guaranteed engage tool, which is where they're a little bit caught out. It was like you want that poke point and click CC, I should say, from the Nautilus to set you up, but it's not the best of times, into, especially paired with a Smolder and also against the Camille. So SK very much focused on bot side. We're going to have to see if they can try and get that ball rolling, or do they just succumb to the late game prowess of Rogue? Conversations already amongst the SK members. Of course, the luxury of the pre recorded drafts is you can really plan out your early game. The downside is if you get too set into that plan and something goes awry, it's going to be harder to adapt on the fly. You need to still be on your toes, ready to do whatever. And it's a story, two very different stories for this team. Yes, they're in the tiebreaker, but Rogue, it's been the surprise rise from nowhere. When they were losing, it was not a surprise to anyone that they were losing. It was slow games. They weren't doing much. They managed to turn it around in the last moments. SK Gaming, on the other hand, have been winning, I would argue, more than half the games that they ended up losing. They have been in incredibly strong commanding positions, and it has been throws that have cost them so dearly that have put them in this position. So when we talk momentum, Rob, I think it heavily favors Rogue. It has been Rogue stepping up, though, when the pressure's been off, right? It hasn't been them when when they still had a ch well, they still have a chance, obviously, but it's been like less likely that yeah. they'd be able to make it. Now coming in down to the wire, can they make it work for them up against SK? Or, as you say, can SK find that magic? Can Irrelevant start to play with the team again? Can Exekick and DOS really step up, step up on this hyper-aggressive bot lane? Either way, one of these teams getting sent home, it's going to be heartbreak galore on both of these occasions. Regardless of the result, someone's going to be sad. Of course, we talked about it. Confidence big for Rogue. Percentage chances, percentage of remaining scenarios were not high for Rogue to make it through. They lost the first game. It felt like a guaranteed death sentence, but they surprised everyone beating G2. They beat SK today as well, keeping their destiny more or less in their own hands. Now one final push. Markun in the interview talked about confidence, gaining the confidence to play on stage the way that so many Rogue fans have been waiting to see since he was first signed to this lineup. The opposite side for SK, they need to just let it all wash away, all the failures, all the mistakes. Focus on how they win this one, which probably starts with that double hail of blades that you see on the bottom right-hand side of the screen. Dawson and Exekick, as you highlighted in the draft, Rob, they're here to mess people up. They need to get a lead, they need to get it fast, and they need to take over before comp comes online. I'm kind of surprised the comp go for the TP and then the Ignite on Zoelise in this matchup. I really thought they'd actually try and take an exhaust and just try and take a heal, make sure you're able to survive the laning phase. Because it's not so much that you're going to get poked out and you get the opportunity to CP back in. It's going to be an all-in, and SK already looking for that right now. Ultra Q, hookshot, wall dive. Doss just finding a nice bit of damage onto Larson. Damage that will stick unless Larson wants to burn his TP. So Niski initially looks bad as he tanks the Soul Flare there from Larson, but overall health trade still in favor of SK. And even able to pick up the ward off the back of the play as well. So we'll know exactly what's happening. Mark Kuhn going to try and contest as he comes through. Not going to take the Wolf, but... Isma, he's gonna spot him and just leave. There's no, you have no shot yeah, in the exactly. 1v1. Still though, managed to get one of the camps away. And Isma? Pri I mean, Pryo belongs to Niski right now. He's getting the push out level one. Obviously has access to two spells as the Jace. Now taking over to level two. Red will reset. It's messy on the bottom side, but again, the more they disrupt the Zin early, the less time he has to try and get some of these ganks. Maokai was already going to be doing nothing early, so this doesn't hurt too bad. The Q not hitting, though, actually makes this a little bit slower. Doss going to come in with X-Kick to try and make sure they can get this red. So nicely done already to disrupt Markun. He's going to lose both the Wolves and the red and the Interrupt. So he should be able to cross over, I believe, through mid, get his own topside and prevent any sort of uh, counter punch coming through here from Markun, but actually going to enter into spot side. I thought he crossed over because you've got push mid, you got push on top side as well. And that could have been how you uh, just shut Markun out in these early stages, but maybe a little bit worried that Nisky? if he didn't... Getting run down in lane, he burned through all of his mana in that trade. Both mid laners without a pot, both of them using the last one, ticking up here. It's irrelevant. Good advantage on topside, keeping Finn under his tower. Very close early game. Gold still favoring Larson in the mid lane slightly. Here comes Isma. Well, this could be where it either works out well or the game ends right now for SK. This is risky. 
This is the dive that could define their season. Where is it going to go? Doss burning, ticking the ignite already there. He's getting out to safety. The ignite still burning. Doss might just drop the hook now going in. SK have fumbled the bag. Comp getting first blood, the worst possible outcome. It's so difficult to dive against the Nautilus because he's so many roots, so many forms of CC to keep you in check. And Comp can just hop out over the wall. Really risky play, and especially when Isma didn't really get the reset on the, uh, the aggression like you would want to. Sets up perfectly for Rogue to turn that one around. And you can't let it phase you, you just have to go to the next one. Smolder's still weaker overall. Sucks to have the gold deficit, but can't let it get in your head. But crushing there, and that's part of the reason I think Zolis took the ignite. He says, look, I can exhaust you most certainly, but it's not going to make my Smolder do more damage. If I pack more burst early on, at least maybe I can punish the dive that's coming out. As well, gives time to Maracoon to get himself back into shape. Manages to get top scuttle. Got where Raptors on the opposite side, and they're going to be able to move back into his bot side as his Raptors start to respawn as well. So picking up a lot of these Ooh. camps have already respawned at the higher level as Exic will be able to get the shove in. Walks up, a Cathian Rain. Isma going to try and hold the wave as Larson. Small XP advantage until Nisky picks up these creeps. Bit of a difficult situation. Vision on Marcoon crucial early on. Scryer's Bloom should spot him. No. Just the edge there, sneaking his way down to the bottom lane. I like the early itemization coming in from Comp. He did TP back to lane, but he gets the Swifties. Just wants to stay out of range of that Camille, make it that much harder to land the hookshot wall dive. Make sure that he can just walk in, walk out on these trades. And you can see SK are playing scared. They don't have perfect information on where Zin is, and they also just know that they're weaker right now. SK has no mana. He hasn't recalled yet. He hasn't spent any of his money, and he's already at a deficit. Because he's going to start to reset now, but this is a bit of a woeful timing because realistically... Oh, hang on. Topside, Relevant. Pull back from Finn. Good. Trying to keep this trade going. Relevant wants to go Mega. We'll get some of that health back. Finn, though, out of mana. Is going to be forced to TP soon. Big wave loss on bot side, though. So Execute getting weaker, even in the grand scheme of things. Opting into the Cull and Tear. Oof. This is going to be on DOS to try and make this lane be aggressive and have damage because this is not the buy that you want. You just don't have any sort of burst damage to follow up on the Camille. Now, DOS obviously does have a lot of damage innately to himself because he's the Camille support, but uh, I think I would have preferred a more aggressive build here for Exit Kick. Even if you get the tier, just get, well, you got a long sword at least, but get a bit more aggressive stats there. Yeah, it's tough. They're at a deficit. Range so low for Kaisa early on that you're getting poked out by a lot of incidental damage like the Riptide, like the Super Scorcher Breath from Comp. So Cole gives a bit of extra sustain in this context, bit of extra gold. Tear comes in as well. Muramana presumably on the horizon alongside something like Crit Bloom. Again, we'll highlight the build more as it comes to fruition. Level 6 there for Finn, Irrelevant still trying to play on the edge. Only a small gold lead in top side. Ninja Tabby for Ninja Tabby, and now Doss trying to get out of lane. Again, the 2v2. Uh, maybe at level 6 it gets easier, but again, Comp and Zoli's already sitting pretty, already sitting comfortable. And it is a dragon, but it's traded for grubs. Uh, you're fine with that as Rogue, though. I mean, realistically, you're not trying to play for any sort of early aggressiveness around this motor. You're more playing to say, hey, we're going to scale well. Cool, let's get some Void Grubs. If we get an opportunity to take a chip at Tower, get a little bit of uh, the place for ourselves, we're in a much better position. So, may even look for an Invade on the top side here, actually. Is Isma going to spot out Maracoon? Just look at how confident Zolis and Comp are playing, though. How many times have we just seen a Smolder scared under their tower for the first 20 minutes of a game? But this little lead, this little advantage, the Swifties making the trades earlier easier. The rough first item buy for Exekick. This lane is so free right now. You're also playing a poke-heavy composition as SK. Like, if this starts to fall behind, you're just not going to have a fun time. You're going to lose towers, you're going to lose control over objectives, and you're going to have a lot of pressure that come through from Marcoon and Larson, like, playing off of this composition, boss. Reset from DOS takes him into mid lane. Doesn't want to burn the flash to extend the hookshot wall dive, but Marcoon is here. Wind becomes lightning, trying to predict the flash from Niski, but doesn't quite hit the angle. Respect for that, though. Almost catches him on the way out, at least getting a bit of extra poke. Dosh now covering. Can use this to get a lot of vision on this bottom side, though, which I think they should be trying to achieve here as Rogue. If you can point out where Isma is, it makes it very difficult for Dosh to try and go aggressive, but not having enough wards available at the moment to try and get in and get that vision down. Marcoon? Level 6. Zoe Elise is here as well. Isma only level 5. They don't have a ton of damage, but obviously with the reset coming in from Larsa and SK, know they're stronger, can at least step up and contest there. 
SK are trying desperately to find something. They know that the longer this game keeps going in the position that it's in, Rogue are going to outscale. So trying to link with Niski, find a kill there, trying to work with Ismet to get something, but they're just not working out. And the fact that you're not having contentions coming through from Rogue means he can't really use this combo of Isma, who will have the ultimate available soon, but Niski as well, like, you kind of have to play for this level six off of Maokai. Push back from a relevant solid, positive health trade. Bomb being called. Comp wants to get this wave in. Just deleting that one. This is the most favorable Smolder early game we have seen. Big time. I, maybe this entire split, I can't remember every single Smolder game, but they are literally holding waves with Nautilus HP bar so he can Q hit every single minion. He has 64 stacks, nine minutes into the game. It's only going to get faster when he gets closer and hits 125. And Larson's sitting pretty. Everyone's sitting comfortable. A relevance 800 gold lead isn't going to mean much if, if Rogue continue with this pace. Larson is Great. going to start to get really uncomfortable, though, because you can already see it. Doss starting to move around mid. Level 6 hit from Maokai. They just want to try and go for this ult combo, set up a Doss and get the pick onto Larson. So has Flash available, which is going to be a lifesaver for him at least once, but needs to be really quick on that trigger finger. And that's why Zolis and Comp starting to lean in towards this mid lane, try to spot out some of that vision, but actually don't spot out that ward. So I give a lot of information as to what Marcoon is up to, especially as his Raptors start to respawn. Comp, gonna clear out a bit of vision here. Did he not see that ward? Either? No, it doesn't off the pink, and it doesn't catch that off the sweep. Hasn't. Yeah, it didn't even catch on the sweeps. So. I mean, well played from Doss. Yeah. Is that brief moment where they had priority to lay down such good vision on the bottom side. Perfect information on Marcoon really stops Rogue from making any super proactive plays here. But again, Comp left to free farm. He is a ticking time bomb. Um, SK, you know, can't really walk up and harass right now. They just aren't stronger. I think they got to try and pull something cheeky off. Like, play where you're not really expecting. Like, dive Finn in topside with the three members, get Doss up there, do something, right? Because as long as you continue to play this by the book, realistically, Marcoon and Zoelise have been moving around to try and take care of Larson. Larson playing very safe under a Sarah to just shove all day. I at least shove the wave out all day. So you have to make something happen elsewhere. And... Uh, they're just not really setting up well enough to try and go for that right now. Doss at least protecting Niski. Feels like they've just kind of abandoned bot side. Doss not going to be able to input buff for the hook shot. Rogue are the ones who set the trap. Rogue are the ones who try to catch them in rotation. SK pretty confident with the amount of vision they had, but we're not ready for that one. Excellent pick from Zoelise and Marcoon. And now you got to run for the hills as Exekick. You can't try and stay underneath the tower because while well, Smolder's there, you don't know where the Zin Zhao is. Doss is trying to get back to bot lane. Finn spots the rest of SK on the top side of the map. So Dragon could be the call in 30 seconds if they're not just going to kill X-Kick. Well, Larson's grabbing a plate. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Smolder's continuing to push in, continuing to stack, might get a plate of his own. And what is another rotation of grubs really worth in the context of this game? That's two plates for Larson. Things are going to bad for Morse incredibly quickly. It might not look like it now. Yes, it's only a 1k gold lead, but the Smolder is scaling for free. The poke that SK could bring to the table in theory isn't going to mean much when Karma is even with this Jason can block so much of it with the Mantra E, the Defiance. Race going to come through for Dragon in a second as well. And as you say, what's a group to a Dragon? Isma wants to try and get in towards mid lane. Larson stepping up aggressively, but yeah, just able to exit out bot side. And this is the thing. Again, Larson can just wave clear so consistently here at such long range. And how it many, makes it so hard to play this combo. How many people just live in Larson's lane right now? You should be charging SK rent. They're there so consistently, but they've yet to get the flash. They haven't gotten a kill. They just keep fishing and they keep coming up empty handed. Good news is the dragon didn't drop. Rogue weren't far enough ahead to get pressure on bot side as well as the dragon. So now SK are going to try and force Marcoon in the area. Larson pushed back. It looks like Rogue are willing to concede this one. Two drakes to SK, perhaps an avenue to come back here. Maokai all big. Marcoon will get rooted. Comp will sidestep as his jungler does body block. So. No opportunity for recourse there. Isma just trying to make sure they have the space to get out. Another play going to fall. Again, into the back pocket of comp. His gold lead only getting bigger. What an insane story this would be for Rogue if they actually managed to pull this off. Because coming into this weekend, sitting at one win, they beat G2. They beat SK today. And now they might just do it a second time as they look for another dive. Look at is our Niski, though. Starting to roam down here. Rogue, their timer's starting to fade. But they're not going to over-risk it. They know, hey, look, we're getting the win. We're getting cop the gold. Just chill. And how many times did it feel like this season that SK had just won a game? And if they had won, we wouldn't even be in this tiebreaker situation. True. 
And so it's not just this last week where Rogue have finally found their form, finally found their confidence. Markun especially working so well with Zoelis in this game. Zoelis now hooking in, potentially an over-aggressive play, but I <laughs> respect the confidence, at least forcing the smite out. Now all these mistakes come back to bite SK as Rogue are surging at the exact right time and SK just continue to falter. Is Terra gone? What do you do is X? Oh, hang on, X kick. <laughs> Nothing. He's just trying to keep the tower up. Just threatening, just posturing like there's someone else there for backup. They did have the deep ward, so I think Rogue were kind of caught off guard by that one. We're just like, hang on, there has to be something we've missed here, so they back it on up. But Doss now entering into this bot side jungle with you to get some vision down. But there's nothing even here to try and steal. There's no wave to try and go for a dive. The reset going to come through for Comp and Zoelis as well. They're going to spend their much earned gold and. They're totally fine, you can see. Yeah. Like, look how safe Comp is. He was like, I'm not even going to back a turret with zero wave. I'm going all the way out of here, so there's no hope you can look for a dive. This is brutal. Two plates to six. SK, 1.3 behind the Drakes. I think the big hope here. And while the gold isn't, you know, a death sentence, I think it's really just the continued scaling of the Smolder that starts to become a bigger and bigger problem. But it's also so different, like, we, oh, hang on. Larson. Nice side step on the Shark Blast, flash out to safety. Root not quite going to connect onto DOS. It looks like the Herald will reset. How much more do Rogue want to stick around? Finn already aside to the bottom lane. Irrelevant going to respawn. Three members of SK. Making home in the mid lane. Rogue, a similar story. But Comp's already started the objective. Isma on the way in. Exekuk used his ult earlier. Doesn't have that tool. Bomb ready and waiting. Back up her son. Huge amount of vision on the bot side to spot out if Finn does start to TP. Terror will fall just to the minion wave. But this Harold's gonna Terror's fall as gone. well. Alti goes in. Nice sidestep TP coming in. SK looking to bet it all here, hoping this is their opportunity to turn it back around. But Exekick's got no alt, and Markoon's looking to punish. He does have a flash over Relent now stepping in. Rogue has to be careful about moving into this choke. Wall up there. Irrelevant flash up. Looking for the angle on Gnar. They will at least get the pick back, but they concede the Herald. A kill is nothing though. You needed so much more from SK and Rogue just don't commit. An awful lot of times we kind of talk about Rogue saying, hey, they're playing too slow. They're not doing anything. But this this is smart, slow play from Rogue. They're covering their bases. They got the objective and it's only Markoon that dies. So for SK, you needed to find something off the back of this. Top Terror could at least give you something here. But you can see Larson here. You've also got Zoelis Zo coming as well. Larson waiting until he's got a support on the way before he steps up to try to clear that wave. Willing to give up some tower damage as yet another Mantra Q lands. So oppressive. SK, maybe trying to catch Rogue as they overstep. Recall started in the brush. Larson, is he going to walk up here? I think he knows. He just doesn't need to take any risks as long as he plays really safe. Rogue are so favored. This is slightly risky, though, for Rogue. I think at this stage, you do actually abandon this top side off this next wave. They could set up for a dive. Xin is in the bottom half of the map, and I think he could have tried to crest, check on to mid lane turret, but the wave, again, just Larson clearing it out. And you have to wonder if SK should just go for the dive anyway, but they don't have perfect information. They don't want to risk it. So the gold is close. The gold is so close, and most of that is irrelevant right now. Holding on to a CS lead despite conceding that tower, has the single kill in his name. Triforce there as well. We've seen Miraculous Gnar ultimates turn games, but it's a lot to ask of irrelevant after the week he's had. Struggled in a lot of these games. Of course, this is the time to turn it on, no doubt. Putting all your hopes on a single player, a terrible position to be in. Top lane going to be the focus for Rogue. Herald invested as well. You can see Comp starting to lean up towards that top side. Is Finn going to move over to mid to cover there as well? So we'll have a slight numbers advantage here on top side for Rogue. And that's why Isma has to flash away from that hook. Knew that would have been a death sentence. Comp wandering down. 141 broke the 125 point. So now much easier. And here comes Herald round two. No. Larson <laughs> feeling confident. Exa kick. Alting oh, and getting no. pulled back by Finn anyway. The timing from Finn, flawless. Don't quite have the follow-up as Harold. Gonna wander back into mid lane and get taken out by the tower. Won't be able to charge there. SK. Continuing to step in. Period of time where DOS was really powerful. It started to fade away. Can still be a massive threat in terms of CC as Comp and Rogue group is for. Niski will get the top lane tower. SK, Does have just TV. give us. Just give us. You get the tower. You don't need the out. dragon. You've already got two. SK, I don't think you commit for this. Bit of a spectator objective here. Zizma just going to try to 50-50, hoping for the third Drake. They're spending a lot of time 
but at least they're ensuring that they can stop Rogue Recalls. They got the TP out from Comp. Ulti in now. The Smolder cannot come from the fight. The knockback is there. The Crescent Guard. Aurel, they need to knock two on the wall. They might have found the angle. Their dragon's already down, but Rogue now starting to fall. Two members picked up. SK patient on the play. The TP from Niski paying off. As soon as Rogue commit Comp to the top side, Niski just TPs down. They were able to find the numbers advantage really well played by SK. They were happy to give the position on the dragon. Because as soon as you're in that position, Rogue are overextend the Ismo with a great ultimate across the back of the pit, and then Niski able to come back. At this stage, I think you had to give up tower or commit to a fight. But Rogue do nothing and get caught with their pants down. And now, you know, you got the Luden's companion coming in from X kick. The poke is gonna start to hurt both mid and bot closer and closer to fully stacked up on that tier. Poke is gonna start to hurt here. There's a glimmer of hope for the side of SK. 1k gold lead in their favor. Two drakes, something to play around now. They don't have to be as scared. Comp, though, still ahead of schedule in terms of stacks. 19 minutes in, he's at 163. So SK have to play flawless if they want to win this game out against a fully stacked Smolder. Can never let themselves get low. Have to make sure every fight is in their favor. And that's why you need to commit multiple members to mid lane here. The thing is, with Comp having push in mid, it gets really difficult for Zoe Elise not to just fly back and forth, matching wherever Isma and Dossa are going to be placed in the map. You need to commit members to mid to get push, to get this mid tower, and try and shove that wave right the way in. As soon as Comp is accepting that wave under the tier two, then you've opened up enough space in the map for Dossa and Isma to start to lean into side lanes, create pressure there. And that's why at the moment, Zoe Elise, happy to just sit here with Comp, make sure that they're not getting bullied out of mid lane, and you can even see Marcoon as well, setting up Vision, gets the Scuttle Crab, getting some of the pink ward in the uh, top side of the river. Relevant, just continuing to hit the tower here. Focused on the objective, about to go Mega. Niski waiting in the darkness. Finn goes for the pullback, Finn goes for the all out. Relevant holding, waiting for the TP to complete. Niski needs to back up though, he's about to get rooted down. He goes into the tower, just desperately wants to finish it. Goes for the full committal here as Finn just backs away from the Gnar. Relevant goes over the wall, he gets one, but now Doss is on the way in and Larson needs to run. That's Hex Tech Ultimatum. Larson caught up, but Rogue are here for the turn again. SK have just overcommitted, and Rogue are there to punish. Double kill for the Smolder. That's exactly what I was talking about. If you don't get control of mid, it's so easy for Rogue to answer for these side lane plays. The push comes through with the three-man stack from, S or from B the mid lane. And as soon as SK try to commit to this, the Amidia run down. So even though you have DOS, you're completely desynced. You can't link both the Kai'Sa and the Melka onto this bot side. And Rogue collapsed beautifully here to turn this one around. And I gotta say, credit to Larson. He's been on the edge of death so many times. He absorbed so much pressure in the early game. And while he hasn't had the flashiest impact on this one, he just keep managing to survive. He built the Banshees. He knows his role. Just live, protect the Smolder. That's all he has to do. A little bit safer now for the plays to come. The Banshees effective against the Pope, but the Acathian Rain will knock it off. Rogue, start to look towards the Baron soon. I think it's going to be more getting vision and trying to get this mid lane tower for the moment. Yes, Com can do a lot of damage, but they do need to wait up. So at least spot Isma, this may be an overextension though. Niski here too. So at least Celestial opposition and aftershock fading away. That should just be a dead Nautilus. Overconfidence and now irrelevant here. This could be big. The punish massive is irrelevant. Has already moved down. Larson not going to be able to get away from this one. There's just too much CC. All of Rogue running, and this is their chance because while Rogue are slow on the Baron, SK will tear through it with the power of that Kaisa. Way, way too far for Zoe Lee's. They didn't have that mid lane turret down. No one could link up with him. And immediately, SK realized a great TP from irrelevant to shut out Larson as well. And that's Baron giving across a massive upset for Zoe Lee's. A step so far, so many days. Overconfidence when he moved into the blue earlier. Pushing Ismo away, forcing the smite. Felt that same confidence stepping into the jungle, but this time it was punished. SK, gold advantage. Poke build starting to come online. The Maokai in terms of relevancy, it feels like it's already more powerful than the Zin in a lot of circumstances. The tools are there for SK now to bring it home, but they have to play clean. Rogue did get the mid lane tower down, though. And with the push the comp has, they can actually push that mid wave into the tier two. You can see X kick stepping back into mid lane to accept the wave. 16 seconds on towards Dragon. Next wave, comp pushes, and immediately Rogue want to try and move in towards River. So SK already setting up here, but they do risk 
a potential as Rogue start to push in towards the tier two. Larson isn't with them though. He was spot on top side. SK, considering going for the all-in there, not having teleport for Larson could have been a bit worrisome there. And honestly, we'll just give Dragon to SK. Interesting position for SK, of course, desperately want to secure soul point, not an ideal use of the Baron. You'd always love to be pushing towers, but know that this is their one guaranteed window of strength. Again, pushing into towers against a Smolder is difficult because you're just giving him free stacks if you do not take the objective. 206 for comp, a couple waves away. Honestly, could just get it in the middle of the fight if SK are able to find one. No real commitment, though. You see, Relevant already moved topside to try and push out that way, but I think you just let it go so you can get this mid lane Terra now. It will fall in the next wave, but SK kind of spreading themselves a little bit thin at the moment, not able to get too much more. A minute on this, uh, the Rebel Baron power play, you'll get two more waves, but you're not really going to get anything apart from this mid lane turret, so not a huge amount gained for SK in the grand scheme of things. But well, you buy more time to get to third items. Pen is starting to come through. Components there and the Blightning Jewel as well as the last whisper on the side of SK Arov and still bowling in on the top side, has the Black Cleaver as well. Has just been running top lane. 2.6k individual gold lead, no doubt the hero of this game. The good moments from SK to bring themselves back, but irrelevant. So consistent in this one, when it matters most. 2-1-3. and three. Set up to succeed with counter pick. SK getting paid for that investment in him. But this is exactly where SK want to be. They want to be able to start to poke. They want to be able to look to siege up. They want to be able to group underneath these towers and look for Isma to zone them off like this. Not a huge amount of poke done, but so at least. Comp has to be careful about stepping this far in. Instantly, the Nard is going to knock him into the wall. The wall already and available. It's just 100 to zero. Might as well be a burst mage. The shield does not matter. They're going to get one back. Irrelevant now going to be in trouble, but they can't burn him down. SK, they smell blood in the water. They need to go. The Mantra Qs from Larson are massive to the Soul Flare. The first one to get connect wants to get another. He's hitting so many targets. He just keeps firing them out, but the wave is here. SK. Objective in their sights is the Baron phase. They will take the tier two. Finn went over the wall and Irrelevant didn't, so Finn essentially just stuck on the opposite side in his own base as Irrelevant manages to step away, but this was great. Group up the siege is perfect, and that ult from Isma locking up comp as well as Irrelevant able to pick him off with Zoe Lee Stein on the top side. And they're not sure if we get to see it here, but Finn, watch the ult here. Finn goes over the wall, but Irrelevant doesn't. And it means that then Irrelevant able to walk away, just a couple more autos could have finished him off. And then SK, back it on up, and are able to walk away. You can see the hope, you can see the optimism, the fear in the faces of the SK staff, they know. The ball is in their court, it has been so many times. The gold lead feeling massive, feels nigh insurmountable, it is still against the Smolder. Comp still three stacks away from that execute. Things get a little easier if they get soul. But this is the thing, the safe space on the map here, for uh, Rogue has gone completely away. All you really get is this position that is really going to be safe. Apart from that, you don't control your jungle anymore unless Us. DOS takes a step too far forward. But it means that you constantly, if you want to try and defend this bot lane terror, have to wrap all these little jump points around, whereas you get these quick movements back and forth across the map for SK. And that becomes very dangerous. And now Finn is going to learn all about it. Finn, Blast Cone's out to safety. I mean, it's so dangerous now. Less than two minutes on soul point for SK. Rogue gonna need to take that one away. A minute and 30 till the Baron. For now, Rogue happy to just absorb the pressure. Comp will hit the break point. 228 now, continuing to farm. The Execute is there. And the fight's to come. It feels like you need a miracle though if you're Rogue. Yes, this motor has hit that critical mass, but the positioning on these fights is not there. The opportunity to push up is not really there either. You need your front line of to actually provide the front line, well, but when SK are just playing for these sides, playing for the siege, you can't get in range to do what you need to do. And earlier in the game, it felt so good. Rogue got away with a, the free laning phase for the Smolder. But now we see, while their composition has a lot of tools, when SK start to build up this big of a gold lead, who can really protect the Smolder? That is a Camille on the opposite side. Guaranteed, reliable, hard CC to ensure that comp cannot go anywhere and more than enough damage in the back pocket of Exekick, Niski, and Irrelevant to 100 to 0 him, even through the shield of a Karma. Well, that's why we're seeing a lot of these protection of items coming through to make sure that you're actually going to be able to keep this motor up and running. Plus, also having those shields coming through from Larson, it's going to be so important to keep this motor alive, even through the dive. Because realistically, Exekick is poke. Doss is the only one that really dives in, maybe with Irrelevant, to try and finish him off. But as long as he can survive that, he's going to be in okay shape. But this is your issue. 
when you're trying to push forward, when you're trying to get these waves off of your base, the poke is so difficult to deal with. Yeah. And these are the items. The reason this poke is starting to hit, the Fenimar doing it relatively okay, is, is the gold you gave away in these last few plays. Actually, it's still deathless despite the difficult start. Niski able to get double shutdowns. But look how dark the map is. I mean, shout out to our observers there. You can see they don't know Irrelevant will pop up every so often, but is Irrelevant coming behind? Because Ism is already in a position, and Irrelevant is going directly towards comp. Hook now coming in, or Alti now coming in. Zoli's trying to make it out safety. Irrelevant off to the side. Larson TPing into the midst of the fight, but there's not a lot to grab. The kill already down. Irrelevant finding one. Doss wants to keep it going. Actually, immediately onto the backside, and they're tearing through Rogue. Larson holding on. Finn holding on. Can they make it happen? Pull back onto the tower. Larson taking out. It is Finn versus the world. Irrelevant says not. Today, an entire season of despair, of throws. It almost fell apart for SK, but in the moment where it mattered most, they go for the throw. They find the end, and SK Gaming are going to playoffs. There's woes, there's throws, but at the end of the day, there's still POs for SK. An incredible comeback for SK in that one. We'll see them making it to playoffs. confidence, the mental to hold on. Despite a difficult start, they kept it close. They kept it within touching distance. They didn't worry about the smolder. Kept the eye on the prize on their own win conditions. Punishing Rogue when they overstepped. Taking that Baron in a moment of confidence and gaining control of the game, bringing it home. Condolences, of course, to Rogue. A, a heroic effort in this final week to get as far as they did to beat SK earlier in the day, but here in the tiebreaker, SK come out on top. Those moments are going to play on the minds of Rogue, though. So close, and you can see it for Larson there. They knew they had it. They had the lead. They had those moments, but one or two missteps at vital moments gave this game back to SK. And now it'll be a long L wall before we get to see Rogue on our screens once more. Certainly will be. Rogue and KC stepping away. They'll rejoin us in the summer split. After MSI, a long time for SK to challenge in front of them. Not a lot of time to prepare. Three days more of scrims. Recenter yourself, come back. You need to be prepared for the best of threes. A new patch, tons of pressure on the teams who have barely scraped their way in the playoffs to try and find this form consistently. But today's SK's day, they found the win. Might have been unlikely, might have been improbable at a lot of stages of that game or across this split, but again, when it mattered, they showed up. And I think you can see the building blocks are at least there for SK, right? Look, that dive went a little bit miserably on the get-go, but at least they understood, hey, we need to try and play aggressive. This is how we want to try and work with it. If that had gone well, maybe it could have been a very different early game. Doss's roams towards mid start to look significantly stronger. So at least for SK, you can still see that they have the correct mindset for going into how they want to operate in these games, but they need to clean it up very quickly. Definitely do. I mean, still some oopsies, still some risks. The yeah. bot lane was difficult, right? We can't pretend like the split was miraculous, sunshine right? And <laughs> it was not sunshine and rainbows. It was for a lot of those games, and then those games turned against them. Then they threw it away. The BDS game, a 7K gold lead. But frankly, you made it. You can wash away the sins. All that matters now is the playoffs, which sit in front of you. For now, though, that's enough from us at the Castro Desk. We're it down to trouble and a victorious Swiffer after that. Very tense game. Thank you, guys. Awesome cast. It's been a very, very long day. Swiffer, thank you for joining me. Congratulations on yeah. making playoffs. Thank you. It's been, yeah. it's been a very, very, very long day for you, too. But before we get to it, backstage referees are performing the draw for playoffs as we speak, and the results will be revealed in PGL in about 10 minutes. So until then, just stick around with us for a few minutes. Swiffer. Yep. A little bit of a sigh of relief. Oh, you've got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was watching the smolder, like, I was watching the smolder get a Were kill. looking at your watch, And I was time. just like, anyway, yeah. Can't, can't swear on stage, so it's a bit like that, isn't it? Thank you, really appreciate That's all right, no that. problem, yeah. Now, you had to play Rogue twice today. Yeah. Was there anything that you guys particularly learned from the first game? Um, yeah, that they were really happy with the, with the bot lane trade in draft. Um, that they came in with like a really solid game plan. I think uh, I think they predicted what we were going to do really, really well, and I think they prepared like the karma pick well in advance. That was something that like caught us a bit off guard. But 
I think we adapted really well. Yeah, the guys were down after the first game, but I think they rallied very, very well, bounced back, obviously, as you could see. 3-0 Smolder didn't phase anyone in the game, just played our game. 225 stacks? Yeah, well, it's a bit scary, isn't it? Well, you do look a little bit uh, spooked from the stacks right there, but yeah. you guys persevered, and I'm glad that you mentioned draft and how it didn't go so well in the first game, but in the second game, you guys pulled out a Camille. Now, I'm an yep. LPL enjoyer, and I've seen, it, I've seen it there paired up with a Jin, and the synergy is great. What was your approach to that one? Um, basically, it was, it was kind of like more in the smolder kind of triggered it more than anything else, or, or Zeri or whatever. Um, it was like, um, obviously really good at lockdown. DOS has been spamming it in solo queue. Perfect time to pull it out, make or break game, right? Full, full faith in him to make it work. So yeah, that was it, that was, that was it. Wow, in this clip you're not losing your mind. No, I've, um, I've taken up meditation in the last week, so we'll see how that works out. Hey, it's good that you have Greg jeans in you because that means you do have a lot of hair on your head, still. Uh, it's, it's waning. <laughs> <laughs> don't have too much left in me. Okay, I don't want to bring any of the spooky stuff back, Swiffer, but I would like you to reflect a little bit on that regular season because it didn't necessarily go as you guys expected. So what is your approach as a coach? moving forward to playoffs. Yeah, I think, I think it's just really important not to lose sight of the, the actual game states that we were in, especially last week. Um, I think that if we were more focused, um, more driven, I'm not uh, like, it's a bit, bit of a loose term, right? But I think we would be feeling a lot more confident if we had managed to convert some of those wins. I think the guys just needed like to remember what it felt like to win the game. Okay, and what do you, what do, you do as a coach when your team actually loses that confidence? Because we, we, we've seen a bunch of clips. There's some coaches that go backstage, slam hands on the table. Is that your approach too? Um, not particularly. I think, I think it's important to try and diagnose like why everything's going wrong. I think we actually did manage to do that quite well. Um, but it's, it's kind of just about like reminding the players like why they do what they do, you know, why they enjoy the game, like why we're all here. Um, and I think, I think like, once they realize that, it's like, oh yeah, it's not as complicated as we thought. And then they're able to play the game again. Well, that's the great approach. They did play the game again. Yeah. It took them two today to make it, but they actually did. Now, so if we're looking into playoffs, what is one team, because you talked about confidence, right? You want to be playing possibly the team that you are more sure that you're going to beat. So yeah. which team would that be looking into the teams that have made it into playoffs? I mean, I think... To be, uh, it's a kind of a kind of a cop-out answer, isn't it? But I, I genuinely think that every team that that's qualified like deserves to be where they are. I think at least they're a lot more consistent than we are. Um, if I give uh, me the non-PR answer. Yeah, I'm really I'm really thinking about that. Aren't I? <laughs> um, <sighs> no, I can't. Like I think I think genuinely I I do believe that if we manage to build this momentum and we just ride this confidence, then I'm. I don't really give a shit who we play. All right. Yep. Thank you very much. Oh, and we're going to throw it over to PGL because maybe Niski and Dos will have an answer on who they would like to play in playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you. Thank you so much, Trouble and Swiffer. Oh, we, we caught that one at the end. But welcome, everybody, to PGL. We have Niski and Dos joining us this time around, as well as uh, GB. How, let's start off with the emotions here. How are you guys? No swearing though. Like you guys already got one, so you yeah. have to keep it polite. Okay. Um, I've been feeling very relieved because we've been struggling a lot, and I feel like when you struggle a lot, you start like doubting, like are we actually good? And then like, can we make it? And then you lose to Rogue, and, and then you're like, wait, what? We just lost to Rogue, you know? When we're like, we thought we were like way better. And then you have to build this momentum that like you might play two games in the end of the day or one game. And then you have to draft, like depending on which team wins, which team loses and stuff. But yeah, I'm just relieved that this last game showed in some areas of the game on like how we can actually play uh, at times um, compared to like all of our other games. But yeah, mostly relieved. It felt like you guys came in with a better idea to this game as well. I really like the outrange composition with an AP Kai's mm -hmm. and the Jace too, specifically into the Smolder, so you can outrange even that champion too. Um, from your point of view, how much time went into as soon as you lost the first road game? All right, immediately into how do we make this work? Or was it like, take a break, just relax, come back in a bit? When did you actually start preparing for this uh, this next game? against Rogue again? Mm, I mean, honestly, we didn't really like go into preparing like straight away. We took like a bit break. Uh, and then I think most of us kind of agree that the game was 
a bit hard to play like draft wise and also uh, I think we are not really feeling too confident today for some reason. Like, I think there was a bit of a choke going on in that game. So I think like talking too much about that game was probably not that useful. So we just said, okay, take a little break. Then we are going to watch the other games because we had to watch, what, three games, four games. And then we talk a bit about draft and we go into next game confident. We change our plan a bit and this is more like a draft that we are like comfortable playing. Confidence here seemed to have built up over time, but it's also a word that both of you mentioned coming into this. You said we didn't have confidence, we had to find it, you did the same thing. So if talking about that first game wasn't necessarily how you built that confidence, what went on behind the scenes then? Um, I mean, I believe most of us has had like a one-on-one -on -one with coaches. Um, and then after like an hour or two, we all like sat together and then we all said what we think of each other of like one positive thing. That's really cute. Um, like gameplay or like outside of the game and whatnot. And I think that helped to like lift the mood up. And I told them like uh, before the game, I was like, guys, there's no way we lose. Like just just go, you know, like we're way better than these guys and they're not going to take our playoff spot. And I feel like it was on and then we just, I don't know, we just kind of rolled over them. Yeah. What did you guys tell each other? <laughs> what did I say actually? I said good leadership to you. Oh yeah. And you said? I think I said good comes around team fights. Yeah, Drake set up, swatting, yeah. that's what you said, yeah. Okay, that's adorable, that's pretty wholesome. But <laughs> also, like, coming from a confidence point of view, and, and maybe, like, it, it feels like you're beating a dead horse, because even SK, before you joined SK as well, it was like, oh yeah, we're, you always had that good winter last year, and then it was into the spring, and then it was into the rest of the year, and you guys never really found a groove again. And, like, now, it kind of feels the same way a little bit again, where it's like winter looks definitely better from the beginning than spring did too. Going into playoffs, and I know it's kind of hard to say, but why well, Why should fans also have good confidence in you guys? It sounds a bit critical, but what I mean is like, how will you take the better steps from the learnings you had in the past into playoffs now that you finally secured it? Like, do you think there's something specifically that needs to be done different? I guess it's for both of you, really. It's a difficult mm, question, I know. I mean, for me, it kind of gives you the vibe of like Mad Lions last year, yeah. where the whole team thought we would make playoffs like easily. And then we were like, ninth place or something and then we had the tiebreaker against heretics and we're like okay guys like it's on the line you know like if we lose we're actually just out um and then like everything went better and from then i feel like people in general have that feeling that like oh this is ca I, that was our last chance and we deserved it so we need to make like the most out of it and i think that pressure for us will be good in my opinion because i thought we were like taking the games very loose like chill we'll make playoffs anyways and I feel like now we got kind of, I won't say humbled, but like a rea reality check, I guess, that like if we lost this game, we're not in playoffs. So we should just work our asses off, if that's fine to say. Yeah, we'll give you another yeah. pass. Okay. No worries. <laughs> like, we, have, we have two already, but that's about it. Uh, something that you guys did yesterday as a team bonding activity was to go go-karting. Uh, we had Adam earlier on on the interview, and he's like, you know, instead of going go-karting, why don't you play some solo queue? You know, Niski, wake up. But Das, from your perspective, especially because you have that have to have the synergy with your AD carry, but also with your jungler, what has that been like in terms of outside of the server, building that relationship and building that confidence in each other? Yeah, I mean, for me, like just for the point with Adam, I think that playing solo queue one more day doesn't change anything at all. Uh, probably it's even better to like do some team activities that just like look each other in the eyes. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, for the synergy part, I think, I mean, obviously with Exa, I've been together with for three years now. So for me and him, it's like a lot like about getting back to what we were used to, or like maybe like talking to each other a lot more than we, uh, like just talking a lot in general because sometimes we drop it a bit and with Isma uh, like Isma is a very funny guy but he's also that like new rookie that wants to play solo queue every second that he has <laughs> so he's like a, a bit hard to reach sometime outside of the game because if you say like oh let's go for dinner or something Isma then he's like oh but I I could play three solo queues instead <laughs> so yeah it's about finding that balance right yeah I mean for me I feel like when Especially when you struggle, I feel like just spending time and not playing league is like the way to go. And that was, I mean, I would mention Mad Lions again, but like that was kind of our thing when we won the split last year. It's like before match day, we would not have scrims and we would just enjoy a day together, go play paddle or whatnot. And then I feel like the next day everyone was happy 
because we didn't have any scrims and everyone was like angry towards each other and whatnot. So I think that's maybe a thing we should look to do more. Uh, but yeah, we'll experiment. So you're saying SK is going to take it all the way to the finals now, like you did We're with the yeah. Damn, Ooh, he said it. Clip it, clip it. I believe oh. in it. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about being humble last time, but yeah. you're talking about making it to finals, right? Yeah. How, what does that path look like? Because you guys had to play a tiebreaker to get here. Like, I, I don't want to like burst your bubble, but you're here. You're in playoffs. Like, congratulations. That's amazing. But it wasn't the <laughs> cleanest and easiest mm -hmm. road. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? But either way, what's that road looking like into playoffs? Mm, I mean, I would say for us right now, um, I believe we're going to take like a day off and then I think it's going to be like full on grind. Um, I believe everyone will be like so much more hungry than what we were. I believe we needed like that fire, as I said, and I think whoever we face next will not matter for me. It's all about like how we play. And mm -hmm. I think if we play good, we could beat any team. But also I feel like at our worst, we can lose to any single team. So like we just have to be consistent. And that starts from scrims because our scrims have not been good again. Um, so I just hope that we have good scrims and then from that confidence will build up and hopefully we'll make it very far, yeah. Well, it's not just about how you play, it's also about who you play. And yeah. I'm hearing that the results from the draw show are in. So you guys want to know who you're going to be going up against? Yes, sure. maybe, sure. Do you actually, do? You, <laughs> I, is there a specific team that you would love to play against? I want to play Vitality or Matt. All right, so we'll see whether or not that's going to happen. Okay. Fingers crossed. But here is how the results were determined, because it starts with the regular season standings, and then a team are divided into four groups of two, based on their rankings at the end of today's games. Pool 1 consisted of the top two teams, which are Fnatic and Vitality. Pool 2 consists of third and fourth place, which are G2 and Team Heretics. Pool 3 consists of fifth and sixth place, BDS and Giant X. And Pool 4 is consists of seventh and eighth place, Mad Lions Koi and you guys. SK. So Fnatic and Vitality, because they are also the top seeds, were divided into upper and lower halves of the winner's bracket. Pool by pool, the draw sent each pool's representatives to join them in the upper or lower halves. Fnatic and Vitality choose their opponents from the three of other teams and drawn to their sides. And this results in our finals bracket, which is ready. Uh, I am not wearing my glasses, oh, 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 but... Oh, there you go, Vitality. <laughs> well, you get SK. Vitality. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. Oh my god. I think they're the the top team that I'm the most confident beating. That's why I said fit. What exactly do you think makes you that confident then? Um, I'm in mid lane matchup, I would say. <laughs> okay, so I, like <laughs> <just, laughs> I think mid jungle and I think That's top, I, would, <laughs> I would say irrelevant is really good and I think he will do very well into Photon and I think bot is like even ish, even though Cars and Ilya have been playing pretty oh. good. That, um, what, what do you want to say? Because I can sure. tell you're not agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, irrelevant dumps the Photon. Yeah, I can win against Vito. Bot lane, like so and so, you know, maybe it's good, maybe it's not. <laughs> sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe not so good. My bad. But Fnatic is going to go up against GX and G2 up against MDK. Besides your own matchup, which of course you're going to be really much looking forward to, is there anything else that's standing out to you? Think, oh, it's also behind you if you want to turn around and have a better oh, yeah. look. I know it's not that easy to see over on the prompter. I think, I mean, G2 mad for me is going to be very interesting because G2 looks very like, I'm not sure what's going on with them. Sloppy? Yeah, and I feel like mad, it's like a flip. Sometimes they're on, sometimes they're off. Uh, so I really want to see that one and accept the other ones. I feel like, I think BDS will just beat Heretics and I believe Nadek will just beat Giants and then SK will just Oh, you're putting predictions down. Doss, do yeah. you, you want to contribute? I mean, for me, I'm actually really boring with this stuff because oh. I, I believe that in official game, everyone plays a lot worse than they do in scrims. And like individual skill, all the stuff, like it's not the same on stage as this uh, in scrims. So I think probably any team is gonna play the same uh, like on any given day, except like maybe G2 Fnatic, but even, even like G2 Fnatic is like playing some, some games yeah. like really poorly, but like in scrims, it's a different beast, you know, like you play these teams in scrims and they're like completely online, you they're contesting you everywhere, it's like, but then you go on stage, you are playing worse, they are playing worse. So it's like a bit more flippy, like who ends up ahead, but yeah. And Rogue wins against G2, so anything is possible, right? Poor Rogue. Yeah, unfortunately for Rogue and KC, they are... Oh yeah, KC yeah. as well, oh. Rip. That, that hurts, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, a little Sad. bit. All right, but with that, we are done for today. We're going to be back next week for the LEC Mega Week. And you might be wondering what that is. That means that we have four days in total in a row. So we're back Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and...
and Tuesday. Get your popcorn ready. Get ready to tune in. In the meantime, take a shower, touch some grass, and maybe don't play as much solo queue. We're going to see you guys again next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye. Bye-bye. We lost the battle. We lost the battle. Yeah, we did. Bro, I, mean, that, yeah. what the the f I told you, bro. We lost the yeah. man for what? Guys, I don't allow this. Can I talk to the head referee? Yeah, but then we might lose second one. <laughs> <laughs> He's very willing to flash forward further as Patrick falls low. Ignar can block these, but he decides against it. And now Ignar's hooked under the tower. There's two for Blackhead. Pick up, man. Flash. No, 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 Humanoid trying to lay down a bit more damage, which is Fresco. He's standing behind him and Mad Lions Koi. Glucetella! 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 I glute, not Supa. Supa, Supa! Da! Glute! Glucetella! I go Supa! Me la Glucetella! Let's go. That's gonna be one dead Diego. There's the first. Broke a has got nowhere to go. No passive. There's gonna be more. Pull this. back the ball. <laughs> it's just a solo. That not big win though for Targamist too. I might have to hold off this. Yeah, with the setup, the follow was there, the knockback from taking the flash out to save the glowing close against it! First blood for BDS. Well played by Nuke and Shale. Well, Shale, Ward hop forward, kick back. They're gonna give the kill to Adam. Taking their time. Nope. Shale on a killing spree. Feels like they've just kind of abandoned bot side. Doss not gonna be able to hit Pop up for the hook shot. Hook. Hook's yeah. in, hook's in. Yeah, yeah, I mean. I mean. Hold, hold, hold. Nice, nice, nice. Let's go! Let's go, guys! I told you, I ain't losing to Rogue, guys. I'm not losing to Rogue. Just to make sure, the band that you lose is the last band of the second phase. Oh, yeah. Sure, okay. okay what, what if we ban something, anyways? I don't think you want to find that out. I have questions. <laughs> okay, just don't forget. Okay.